No, it's not. You're wrong. Wrong. <laughs> indeed. You're very wrong, actually. That's like dramatically wrong. You fool! That's not one off. That's not two off. It's not three off. Exactly. It's like four off. It is. What's funny oh is wrong with you? Someone tunes in. It's like, what the fuck it? are they talking about? You know what? None of your business. <laughs> <laughs> it, you this did, stream is you private, are, damn it. You are the fool card and it's reversed position. Damn it. Is that good? Reverse fool? No, that's bad. Damn it. <laughs> oh, I thought that would reverse the foolish properties. Or yeah. does that make you double a fool? Yeah. No, it if it's in the reverse position, it means recklessness. Damn it. Or in consideration. Oh. He was reckless oh. to label Always it before checking. Fucking happens, he was so cocksure. Man. Hey, you know what today is, Mahler? Um, let me check. This Heck. isn't even a joke. This is just a fact. It is the second of Saturdays. It is the something of a thing. I, uh... But there's been know, way more Saturdays than two. <laughs> apparently, on November 2nd, the Emu War began. My God. In 1932. Mm. Oh. Yeah. I mean, it's that's actually November 3rd over here, but for most of you guys, it's November 2nd. But that's, uh, mm. yeah, that's when the Emu War began in 1932. Uh, it didn't go so well for us. Uh, that, uh, that, that, didn't, that didn't pan out so well for us. The Emus managed to uh, succeed. Well, Fringy, speaking of fun Australian facts, Ooh. I watched a movie yesterday, or at least a big chunk of it, before I had to come home and watch Agatha. Oh, I watched, okay. uh, <laughs> like, the first half of The Rescuers Down Under. Ah. Oh, man. I watched the shit out of that movie when I was a kid. I think the two movies I watched the most of were The Rescuers Down Under and The Great Mouse Detective were, like, two very commonly watched movies, and it was really... Cool to see. It's always funny it's how that's the case, game. right? Like every kid had like a couple of films that they would have watched like excessively. I watched yeah. The Lion King a lot. I watched Monsters yeah. Inc. a lot. And uh, Fighting Age Nemo. Two, uh, uh, Robin Hood film. <laughs> Nightmare Before Christmas. Incredibles, I think, was my like hyper and, Toy and Monsters Inc. I watched a lot of Toy Story 2 specifically. Lots of Toy Story 2. <laughs> I used to watch that now, like every night before going to bed. <laughs> for each one of the kids at our house we had like different preferences so my brother really really watched hercules a lot my sisters as i've mentioned the lion king 2 simba's pride to the point where my dad had to hide the vhs oh, no. because they watched it so much over and over um father you betray uh, me yeah but we had our own little uh our movies that we really liked um oh but actually the news that i was going before we got on this tangent today is a Today, you will really, really like this, Mahler. Today is the 20 year anniversary of the Lord of the Rings, the Third Age. Aye. Yeah, I it released I've... on PlayStation 2 and Xbox on uh, November the 2nd, 2004. And in three days, it will be out for GameCube. You know what's funny? Uh, a full playthrough of that is buried somewhere in the. Oh my god. Oh my god, I, you know, that prompted me to look up if there was any other thing that came out this day. It is 20 years since Ratchet and Clank Up Your Arsenal released. You know, Yo! That's what I was saying didn't matter, it's fine. Sorry, continue. No, go ahead. Up Your Arsenal. Did you want to talk about it? So far, it was, it was suitable. It was, it was I, thematically on point. Clanky. I mean, it is it is my favorite Ratchet and Clank game, so that's uh, which is one of my favorite games just in general. I played that game like 10 times. What? I thought that was good stuff. Good stuff. Oh, I'd sound like you were saying something disparaging about Ratchet and Clank, but I don't know if you've no. even played any of them. Because you nope. did you have a PlayStation Two? I did not have a. PlayStation. That's actually that is crazy to me. That is insane to me well, that I, I could uh, anybody who didn't have a PlayStation Two. Well, everyone had little groups, and some people only had one. And uh, I didn't get a console until I got some GameCube stuff uh, in. But the first console that I owned myself and played semi-reliably and often was an Xbox 360. I think so, the reason why it's fascinating mm -hmm. is just because, like, everybody had a PlayStation 2. Everybody had one. Mm -hmm. Finding somebody had, like, a GameCube or an Xbox was a bit more like, oh, that's kind of fun. I mean, I had a GameCube. Didn't have an original Xbox, but everybody had a PlayStation 2. It just happened that the circle of friends that I would, like, like have sleepovers with and that I'd go to their house and play stuff 
they it was just it all just kind of happened to be mostly xboxes and uh gamecube so that's just, just kind of how it was i mean it is i guess it is a different because i'm pretty sure xbox has always been more popular in america than else uh elsewhere um why is up up your arsenal your favorite uh the big thing that probably like actually leans in that direction is the multiplayer um the multiplayer mode in, in Ratchet and clank 3 is like really 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 fun um, and it does show that there would have been compromises made in the uh, single player, essentially to facilitate the development of the multiplayer. I would agree that uh, Ratchet and Clank One and Two probably have like stronger uh, single player components. Like Ratchet and Clank Two is is like a close second for me, but uh, I still think that Up Your Arsenal has like a really fun single player mode that's got a lot of variety to it, lots of cool weapons, uh, and then you add on the multiplayer on top of that. Which I can't remember how many maps there were, but there there was a decent number, and it was it was just like a really cool idea at its core. Basically, the idea was um each each player had a base, uh, and 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 the objective was to fight your way over to that base, get inside, and and, and destroy the core. That was that was essentially the the idea. But as you went through, you had to go through the map and unlock like different control points. That would give you access to like different vehicles and and NPCs that could could like help you uh, achieve that mission. So it was like a really fun sort of back and forth. It, it was super cool. It was really really fun as an additional mode to have, uh, taking advantage of all sorts of like vehicles and of course all of the weapons. So yeah, I I I do adore that game. Uh, great music, great writing, <laughs> like really funny jokes. I sorry we spent too long on me just talking about. It. <laughs> oh, I thought this was it's deliberate. Scary. You're just desperately trying to avoid the inevitable, which uh, is coming. It's coming. It's already on screen. Look at it. It's coming. No. 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 <sighs> Though, before we get into it, I do just want to say uh, thank you to the old EFAP fans, community, however you want to call it, a fellowship of sorts for... um. Supporting and uh, and funding those 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 Halloween set that we did very very much yeah, appreciated. Yeah, thanks very guys. much. Um, the campaign went really really well. I was super. I was really kind of. I, I was curious to see how the how the hoodies would do. I was hoping they'd sell really well because it's a really cool hoodie and they sold really well. And I think you guys will really enjoy getting those. Um, I've put mine on a couple times because <laughs> it, it's gotten a little bit chilly. Getting nippy here. Uh, just a little bit. It was. It's still fairly it's it's not that cold yet it's still kind of staying warmish but uh um that was just yeah thanks very much for you guys uh you know with the the patronage and the support uh we really really appreciate that a great deal helps us out a lot and it'll be super cool to see all of the all of the plushies out there in the wild with all their friends and stuff so thanks very much once yeah. again um as was said as a result you will indeed be guaranteed to see uh wolf and rags dragged kicking and screaming through a campaign of Lord of Ring Gollum. Uh, the specifics on those, I suppose, will be expressed soon enough in some way, shape, or form. And uh, I wasn't going to speak for old Fringleton here. Do you want to say what the I, result uh, is of sorts? Yeah, I mean, it's close enough. I'll play Gollum. <laughs> <laughs> it was... No. It's, it's, uh, I, I, I mean, you know, Rags has essentially, like, said it, but we are very much appreciative of the support. It's it, And it's a, it's a super fun way to get support as well with all of the plushies and the hoodie. Uh, but yeah, I'll play Gollum. <laughs> so, a beautiful result. <laughs> Everyone's happy. <laughs> happy Halloween, which is indeed over. Sad face. I'm hanging on to this avatar for as long as I can, okay? Uh, beautiful. Anyway. Uh, He's though, really nice, even though it's November. Uh, as is suitable for the Spooktober month, uh, the, 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 the villain didn't die at the end of it. It came back. It's still up. And we got to stake her in the heart to make sure she stays down. And that's what this stream is. <laughs> oh, my God. We did, everybody. <laughs> Season, well, it's only going to have one season. Episodes one through five <laughs> were slain. We have six, yes, seven, are. eight, and nine to go. And uh, you know what? I'm going to do one of my patented famous, this won't take us as long, because my bet I is the first episode will, will be a breeze, because nothing happens. And then the last nope. three will take about as long as three of the, the first three. So, I, you know, I'm betting that we're going to be shorter this time. But we still got uh, some things to talk about. 
Hopefully it's shorter. Uh, <laughs> hopefully, I don't know. Hopefully it's shorter <laughs> than possible, uh, that we've said that like, before. We my view is, I thought the first five episodes were just, like, crap. Uh, but, like, the last four episodes... I like. I, I just think the show is unhinged. <laughs> it is. It is. Yeah. I agree. I, I think. I think it's like an unhinged show. Um, kind of in the same way that One Division was also an unhinged show. Uh, which, which you'd be like, well, wait, what? What do you mean when you say it's unhinged? It's like I don't know, man. It's just like when the morality just starts to go like b- really bizarre. That's that's like what it means when it feels like a show is unhinged. Where it's just like. I, I, oh. I don't even know how to describe it. It's like a broad, almost property of it. Anyway, not um, un, 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 not unique in its unhingery. We've seen stuff like this before. I would even say as uh, recent as as uh, the acolyte for twisted morality. Just some yeah, some wacky behavior mm-hmm. from the writers. Well, yeah, th- this is not the first MCU project that I would describe as being unhinged. Essentially, like I said, I think One Division is unhinged. <laughs> It's just a funny way to describe it. Happen when the writers try to be clever. Yes. Maybe they should stop doing that. <laughs> Pretty much any time that a story deviates from the standard hero story, right, of, of a character with flaws rising above those flaws to uh, embark upon basic, agreeable, heroic action. Any time that it starts to deviate from that, <laughs> what well, I say it. I mean, pretty much. I mean, right? That's like, a good way like, to describe I, it. I, Iron Man in a version of this. Iron Man is a very great movie. Uh, it's it is very archetypal though, in 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 a sense, right? Because it is a flawed character essentially recognizing and rising above his flaws to become a better man. It's like a very. I mean, Thor was the same thing as well, not as well executed. Captain America, I suppose, is a different instance of like a good man. You know, it's 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 the speech, right? It makes good better. Um, that, those sorts of things compared to like when you start to do this weird shit where you're trying to be like subversive but you're not good at writing and you haven't really thought through all of the questions that you're going to be raising uh, and then you just end up writing something that's like really bizarre not aspirational and and off-putting which and is it doesn't what speak to is. anything it no, doesn't speak no. to anything about anything it makes well, you wonder yeah, why what, it even exists what lessons do you learn from Agatha all along <laughs> the power of <laughs> Witchdom. Oh, all right. Power of your boozy aunt, I guess. Ooh. Yes. There are just no motivations for the characters. The plot is confusing and you cannot decide what it wants to do. And character journeys are are all over the place. And yeah, I mean, the show just f's around until it just ends, basically. Mm. But it ends. Very smugly, like as if they've done yeah. something really clever. I really, ending. I mean, we'll get to it, but I really enjoyed the part where they were like, "Oh, see, it, it was this." Even though you literally had no information available to you that could lead you to this conclusion, it's like that's not a, that's not like a twist. Mm-hmm. If, if like I couldn't uh, figure it out beforehand, then it's just fucking whatever. Like, it's like when an infant just like takes a dump and then they look <laughs> at you really proud of themselves. That's this show. Oh, but look, I did it. It's like, y- yeah, you sure, but you it's sure like, did. But it's you like doing it. so oh. and then dancing in like untold money while doing so, you know? that That's part of what makes it almost offensive to me. The idea that mm-hmm. uh, wh- all of the fuckery that goes on in this show that leads nowhere, all I can visualize with it is just the money that went into this project, them just like dancing in its ashes, essentially. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, yeah, where's the burning yeah. come into this? Because that's definitely what well, I Well, it is funny, boasting about it being the cheapest Marvel show, but, like, that still means it's too expensive. <laughs> yeah, too that's... expensive how dog shit it looks as well. Still an insane mm-hmm. amount of money. Um, yeah. Yeah, I, I suppose uh, previously on, I mean, what's, what, what, what could even be said? It's Agatha wants her powers back. She thinks she can find them on the Witch's Road. She had to get a coven in order to activate the Witch's Road, and then... To her shock. It feels weird summarizing these events now knowing all of the reveals, mm-hmm. I guess. But uh, then yeah. her coven go on the witch's road and are gradually, I don't know, learning things about themselves and each other. And the most recent thing was Agatha sucked the powers out of the Alice girl. She's dead. And then Aubrey Plaza disappeared and Agatha and the two others got thrown into the, the mud pool by... Who is now gay a reve- yeah gay kid who is revealed to be Wiccan, really cool name for uh, uh he he that is the son of the Scarlet Witch, 
Whoa, whoa. I'm sure he'll have a long and illustrious and beloved place in the uh, the Hall of Heroes of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. I'm sure people will yes. oh, and will, will be seeing much, much more of Gay Kid. Oh, man. That we had a bit uh... psychic damage to me. <laughs> <laughs> we, we, we... <laughs> We had uh, the introduction of Mr. Shot as well. I should mention that. <laughs> that was a high point. That, <laughs> yeah, is one, that reveal. was one for the books. Really I wrote was. that one down in my spell book. Yes. Of spells. <laughs> where I He's keep still all out there haunting. Magical enchantments and occult artistry. Hey, guess gonna... what? <gasps> uh, oh, wait. No, I already did the third age thing. Fuck. I guess we have to talk about the episodes now. <laughs> <laughs> okay um i wrote down that this was episode five it's actually episode six let me fix that on my notes okay thank goodness boy yeah <laughs> episode six of agatha all along spot brought to you by marvel television episode six is uh called familiar by thy side yeah Okay. okay, so first right. off, wow. I'd like to begin by I'd like to begin by saying, first off, this stream is not Twitch approved. All right. Twitch.tv <laughs> does not does not approve of this stream. So if you work for Twitch, please look away. Close your eyes and plug your ears. I don't think anybody right? from Twitch is gonna know. be here. They probably hate us. With all the remember, probably we hated do. Twitch before everyone did. <laughs> for different reasons. Before it was cool. <laughs> So, as uh, Mollard mentioned, the last thing that we covered most many years ago in episode five was that Gay Kid is actually like a creepy uh, spellcaster man, and he flung all of the ladies into the quicksand mud, and they sunk down into the ground, Daring. probably, uh, almost certainly killing all of them. I'm Daring sure that's is. what will happen. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, I think that his, um, his intention was to probably kill them, because uh, he believed... Uh, that when Sharon went in, she would have died unless they saved her in, like, the second episode, I think. So I think it's safe to say that Gay Kid's intention was to murder all three of these women. Honestly, dude, if, right? if it wasn't, it wouldn't really make sense. I know that sounds weird, but with how everything rolls out, if he wasn't trying to kill them, what was he trying to do? Well, when you see someone go into quicksand and they can't emerge from it, you just assume that they're dead because they need to breathe and stuff. Well, a pretty, a pretty grim demise as well, suffocating yeah. death. Yeah, like choking in mud and bleh, that's a terrible yeah. way to die. And, and he darkness. just flung, yeah, mm -hmm. he flung the three of them in there. Mm -hmm. His intention was to murder, um, to murder, murder two of them and kill Agatha justly to mete out justice mm -hmm. to this evil character. Um, but yeah, that's where we left off. All right. So I want that to sit sit in the back of your mind as just an event that has recently occurred. Um, however, we need to do a flashback because it's episode six. It's flashback time. Uh, gay kid is a Jew, and he has a magic bar mitzvah, and they do the Torah thing, and they say the lachaims and the lachays, and oh, and then they have the Jewish dance party afterwards, as is customary in the Old Testament. They'd always have um a rave and a dance party um after a bar mitzvah you can look it up it's in the book of deuteronomy hmm. um his parents are very proud of him they're like yeah good job gay kid and he's like oh my name is william and they're like oh isn't that cute gay kid um <laughs> and at the party at his at his jewish bar mitzvah bar mitzvah party because he's a man he is he's become he's gone from jewish boy to a jewish man he's a big strong jewish man now um he goes to a palm reading which seems like, it strikes me as a kind of an odd thing to have. Yeah, it's just um, it's just at a, set like up a religious the party. party. But sure, yeah. I, I guess this occult uh, this occult palm reading. I don't know. Maybe some places are more chill about what's, it than others. Dude, what's funny you is know, she's like legit. <laughs> she can see your future in this universe. So, yeah, you know. I get maybe they well, didn't know that. Already the first coincidence. Yeah, you huge. Know, uh, of, of mm -hmm. This particular this is... storyline is that he has encountered one of the witches that is eventually recruited. Yes, this is Lillian. Yes. Yeah. She is the Lovely divination witch. It is it, low, it is astronomically say, low. Very low, yeah. Well, and how convenient will... is that? It's yeah. pretty important. It's going to play it's into a whole important. bunch of events, the fact that he bumped into her. The fa well, I mean, you haven't summarized it just yet, but just, yeah. <laughs> I, I guess think, we'll get yeah, to once, it. 
once we get to the reveal, we'll remind you of how insane and fortunate this coincidence is. Yes. So, uh, yeah, he goes into get it goes to get his palm read, and it's Lillian, the divination witch, right? And she says, "All right, I'm gonna read your palm. Give me your hand. Don't worry, I'm just borrowing it." Ha <laughs> ha! It's just a little joke we like to say Real in the funny. witch square. Um, she says that there is a long journey ahead of you. She's reading all the little creases on his hand. Uh, she says, okay, uh, you have a great journey ahead with great transformation and the lights flicker. And she says, oh no, your lifeline's broken in two. And that could, that, that could, that could be a good thing. Ha <laughs> ha, that, that could totally be a good thing that your <laughs> lifeline's broken in two. <laughs> uh, don't, 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 don't worry about it, kid. It, you should enjoy now because the now is the only thing that's certain. Don't, don't worry about it. Um, now, uh, gay kid, uh, leaves after this really awkward palm reading. And he forgets his jacket. And then Lillian, she, she gets out a little wooden tile and she makes a symbol on it. A symbol that, that y you might remember. Uh, you might remember the symbol. You might, we might have seen this symbol before. Yes. Um, Can so we we'll, just we'll talk about our... what's happening? As in, like, if, yeah. I'm, if I'm correct, you know, just to help me out if I got this wrong, because I did only see it the one time, she sees his future and casts the hex on him, whatever the fuck it is, and then forgets Sigil. that she has done that. Yes, right. and she also seems to, like, put... She takes the tile and she puts it in the jacket before she even, like, realizes that he left his jacket, like she's in a weird trance. Yeah, she's like um, a... She's a plot requirement goofball character with memory that is what it needs to be at whatever time it needs to be. More than maybe any mm. other character I've seen, she has the magic of... She has plot magic. She yeah. has plot yeah. magic. All will be revealed. All will be Because obviously revealed. you'd be like, oh, she cast it? So why didn't anything... And it's like, she didn't remember. And you're like, what are These you... are a good question that you should keep in the why back of your mind what? for later. <laughs> yeah. Um, but okay. yeah, she takes, takes out this wooden tile, makes a little symbol on it. How interesting. I think I've seen that symbol before. We'll elaborate later. Yeah, she puts the sigil on him. Um, and then she's like, oh, this kid left her jacket there. Hey, you, kid, some kid left their jacket here. Could you give it back? You la lady and the lady's like, yeah, sure, okay, whatever. Uh, now everyone's dancing. Ooh. They're dancing. They're having good. They're having a good time. Like, yo, that was a great bar mitzvah. You did really good. Uh, and uh, there, there's there, there's an announcement on the loudspeakers, and the the police are here. Oh my goodness! And a, a guy, the gay kid's dad, um, he's like, oh my gosh, guys, the the anomaly in Westview, the big. The big red wall surrounding Westview, it's doing something weird, and everybody should go home as quickly and safely as you can. The party is officially over. That bar mitzvah party was one for the books, but right now you need to leave. Um, okay, yeah. so everyone everyone leaves. Uh, gay kid acquires his jacket off screen. Uh, that's good. Uh, that's literally the most important thing that will probably ever happen to him, oddly enough. Um, and while they're driving home, um, the the mother gets distracted well wait so actually this is something that, so like what was this like the mitzvah happening like really close to to the 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 hex is a little confusing it's hard to, they are it's in hard to tell somewhere that they're, they're, not to where... they're not in it but they're close to it close yeah and, and i guess they're getting yeah, an they're emergency of it's it's growing in size is that the emergency no but this, he was this shrinking is oh shrinking at this point right because yeah, yeah i mean so i then, guess something would happen but like, the anomaly's shrinking, and they say, "Hey guys, the anomaly's being weird. Everyone evacuate." But so like, they're close why wouldn't enough. Everybody have been evacuated in the well, first place. Why the fuck place? would why you? Yeah, yeah be evacuate anywhere near this thing. Home, I guess. Because exactly. this is where the temple is. Okay. I mean, I guess where is home they, relative to this? I mean, I suppose they would have scheduled it. Sure, but like, I don't know. I feel like you probably shouldn't be having this event so close to something that you don't understand that seems to be very dangerous. Yeah, because the like the emergency message says within visual range of this thing. It just says return home, yeah. which, to be honest with you, doesn't even make sense if it was like what it shouldn't it include what well, you would, should, when, when get away, say, like, basically, right? You should just get away. away. Yeah, what if your home is closer to it, like it, oh, which it may true. very well yeah, be. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Some people might just be like, "Well, it seems then, to stop there." And a bar mitzvah. I guess I'll keep like, why the fuck you? you at least with a home, it's where it is, but you can't move. But like a bar mitzvah, why would you choose to host it there? You fools. It. They've somehow made 
like a one-off flashback here where the geography is actually very important yeah. <laughs> and they haven't communicated said geography. It's kind of crazy. Ugh. It is very tough to get a sense of distance when you see it in the distance because you, you have no idea like how high it is, how the size of it, but it's just getting smaller. They're, they're near nearby enough to where if it does anything, they feel the need to immediately evacuate everybody. So... His plot. Yeah. Mm. But again, please remember, Jewish kid, gay kid, he has obtained his jacket off screen. This is insanely important that he has <laughs> got his jacket back. There was a question okay. of where's Doctor this Strange. Is... We we don't ask those questions. You're not allowed to have him. He's not allowed, so he's away. He's dealing with Wanda now. Technically not, but still he's not allowed to be here. No no Doctor Strange. So, um, yeah, gay kid and his mom and dad, they're driving home, right, evacuating, and they get distracted by the anomaly getting slightly smaller, and then that causes them to get into a car accident. Uh, times and they it have happened in the MCU where like a car accident happens because they do like the one thing that you don't you not you don't do when you drive times, it maybe. Because uh... in She Hulk, they I I mean I know that the ship dropped down, but they weren't looking at the road, right? That happened in that as well. Uh, it's it's like the ride is convenient. Just have them like not look at the road, even though that's like what you're supposed to do when you're driving a car. Well, so <laughs> specifically this one like... is he drifts onto the wrong side, right? Yeah, which yeah. is um. That's pretty. She. That's pretty dire. Oh, yeah, is it him? Driver. Oh, she. Oh, yeah. uh, well. It's a woman yeah. driver. Like you were looking away so long that you actually like went into oncoming traffic. What are you doing? <laughs> like what? Yeah. Is, what are you doing? <laughs> you think you they'd don't... be used to seeing it, right? Because it's I, always I there. What to, what to it's like you don't look. Get someone else to look while you drive. Like, yeah. That's what I, I Your just husband don't and child are in the car, woman. The fantastical nature of what they're seeing like ceases to qualify more and more the longer the MCU goes on as well. The, exactly. All of the shit that's happened in this universe. Yeah. yeah. Do they I, know I that there's a giant man sticking out of the ocean? I hope <laughs> no, no one's driving around about there. Him. I, I don't. I don't think that's happened yet at this point in the timeline. Oh, who knows? But who, this is it's not all the worst a magical a car crash we've had the ocean. in these shows. Remember She-Hulk? Oh, wait. Were they on the right side? And it was the other car that was on the wrong side. Uh, wait, you got Americans drive on the right, right? Yes, so we drive on the right. So, the, so it was just a random driver that was on the wrong side? <laughs> it was yeah, maybe they were also looking. Wait, and they no. drifted onto the wrong side. What? Yeah, wait. I... Wait, hold on, what? <laughs> because they were on the right. <laughs> Mr. Shards. Yeah. No, well, what? oh yeah, the 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 truck was uh, even though oh it, yeah, it's confusing. Even though they were completely fucking distracted and not watching where oh. they were going, what? it just so happens that at that point there was an oncoming truck that was in the wrong lane. Yeah, so it's even more absurd. Wait, that's that's it, yeah, that's worse. Just all so of the worst things that could happen at the same time. The, very likely, those people were looking out the window why and they, they switched. So yeah, yeah, I know what Rags is pointing out. Why did they place so much emphasis on alerting her? That there was something she needed to look out for, if not for her also being distracted. So I like, two people, were, everyone was two distracted. It's crazy. Distracted. Yeah. I will say though, if she was paying attention, she would notice that there was an oncoming vehicle in the wrong lane, and she could have taken evasive maneuvers in That's a controlled right. manner. Have to swerve, so like, a, like totally veer the car. All like, right. Yeah. Left. So. All right. Good. Yeah. It's still a woman's fault. Phew. I was so close. All right. We're good. Okay. Um, so they veer off the road. Oh my goodness! And it hits a tree and it smacks a tree. Oh, brought the crash darn. in just such Ooh. a manner that perfectly <laughs> fucks up gay kid the most. Than no one else. else. Yeah, it. Uh, yeah, it, like swerves and hits and like, oh, who left this tree here? Oh my goodness. Uh, yeah, they get into a little bit of a crash there. Uh, and gay kid is unconscious. Oh no. Um, well, I hope he's okay. He has to be alive for the show because this is a flashback. Um, now, Billy and Tommy. Do you remember Billy and Tommy? I the, sure do. The the, the magically Wanda's conjured children, children yeah. of Wanda's of Wanda's magical imagination and magical nation. I don't know. There's a portmanteau someone can think of. Um, but we we hear Billy and Tommy's voices saying "Good night," floating in the air, and then Gay Kid wakes up and he yells, "Tommy!" Oh my goodness. <laughs> 
And then you're like, wait, what are you doing? They did they did media That's... literacy here, Rags. We hear a heartbeat sound slow to a stop, and then you get that. Yeah. Meaning That's right. Sorry. He Meaning died. He oh he my god. But but, but really, funny. like the, the first thought is, what are you doing? <laughs> like that 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 was the first thought here is why would you do oh. this? Fringy, I'm why, sure that whatever they did, it's going to be really clever, and it's going to make a lot of sense. Why is this the choice that you have made? Intuitive. Okay. <laughs> okay, now, uh, so the dad has gotten out, and he's flagged down a nearby police officer, and the police officer who comes to investigate is Alice Wu. <gasps> oh my goodness. <gasps> we know who. It's Alice Wu. She's the protection witch wow. who got fucking desiccated by Agatha. Agatha <laughs> murdered her what are the odds in the last this episode. What are happening? Uh, I I don't think this one is consequential. It's just like an insane not, coincidence. Still, still it's an insane ridiculous coincidence. Ridiculous coincidence. Well, so, but yeah, it was at this point that it's like, why why are you doing this? I don't gain anything. No, the story doesn't gain anything. I don't gain yeah. anything. What's the point of this? It's like, yeah, but you know her. She's gonna come up later. And you're like, okay, all right, thank you. Now, inside the ambulance, um, gay kids in there. It doesn't seem to know who he is. And back at the hospital, the parents come into the room, and oh my gosh, gay kid can hear their thoughts. That's a strange thing to happen wow. after you get into a car accident. I wish that happened to me when I got in a car accident. Or no, actually, maybe probably I don't. Not, probably I don't not. know. Yeah. Probably not. If no. I can turn it on and off. No, actually, I, I it's immoral because <laughs> people's thoughts are like private, and you shouldn't like listen like knowingly. It's we can get into a discussion later on. Morality of mind reading. I'm sure it'll come up in a super mm. chat or something, and we'll talk all about it. Um, but we have our own moral conundrums to deal with in these episodes that will far overshadow anything related to mind control uh, or mind reading. Uh, so, yeah, he's got amnesia, and the doctors say there's no permanent damage. Uh, they say gay kids, brain's okay, um, but he's got amnesia. And they're hoping that he'll get better over time and that his memories will return. And his parents, uh, they, they take him back home. And Gay Kid doesn't really remember the house. He's looking at photographs and even his own reflection. And the dog barks at him. Because dogs can sense when things aren't quite right. It's the movie rule. It's the rule of movies. No, Rex. They and said this evil. Well, well. And that's what he is. Um, He's evil. Yeah. He's going to get him. Uh, but yeah, the the dog for whatever reason doesn't recognize them or acts like it doesn't recognize them because dogs can sense these things. It's it's true we can, um, and he keeps hearing his parents' thoughts and it kind of freaks him out a bit. Uh, his parents are like, "Oh my goodness, I hope he gets okay. What if he never does get better? Oh, maybe he should go to his room." They, he can he can clearly hear their thoughts. Their thoughts are even in their voices, and it's the things that match their expressions, and it's the things that it, like he can read their thoughts, but it still freaks him out a bit. Um, well, I, in I standard know. generic storytelling, the thoughts aren't incoherent or like you know, they're, they're oh, it's all, it's all back. Well, it's just it's just narration, the, like yeah. clean narration. It's not it's not like broken sentences or even you know. I I'm pretty sure some people don't even think in like sentences. It's some like images, think, like a movie or imagery, or yeah. Im yeah. images. Oh, yeah, like like us, even. Two different yeah. sentences getting locked into each other because you're just switching between what you're thinking about and stuff. But you'll have it as as blatant as the dad. It, it like zooms into the dad and he's like, "Will he be okay?" Like, yeah, I got that. All right, that's what he's thinking about. His it's father like after a, the car crash like is thinking, "Will he be okay?" It's, just not, it's not a huge yeah. complaint. It's just like it's boring. It's it's yeah. not interesting. It's There's a thousand and one interesting ways of expressing this sort of concept, and they're just not remotely interested. Which no. I guess tracks. Nope. Also, yeah. Where are these uh, parents for the rest of the show? I wonder. Uh, just give them I one will, more I, time. Given the think. given these storytelling I mean, objectives the that they have, yeah. the, the, these parents are going to be very inconvenient to them uh, as the story goes on. They will yeah. probably be yeah. forgotten when they can't be. Uh, and because, and yeah, because they seem to be very good will, parents. Well, it's just all of their suffering and all of their feelings will be irrelevant, right? They will be irrelevant in the face of uh, Wanda, basically, once they decide to bring her back. As uh, mm -hmm. yeah, as they have a very tough time. Obviously, they seem to be very good parents. They love him. They yeah. support him. They're okay with him being gay and Jewish. Um, they are fine. I guess they are too. So that would that kind of tracks. 
but they they they're they're very helpful. They're nice. Uh, they're obviously going through a very stressful situation. Their son has basically been factory reset. Um, so they've basically their son has essentially died, and a new person has taken his place. Well, and, and it course, has to be very mind, emotionally like, traumatic. You know, I wonder how much they blame themselves, even though it's Wanda's fault. Because if she only I'd pay attention to the bad. road. If only I was watching you know, what I was it, doing. It feels like that's something that needs to be noted. Like, yeah. <laughs> These guys were really incompetent with their driving, but, like, they wouldn't have even been in that situation if Wanda didn't do what she did. Well, Wanda was or just trying to find it. her kids, man. Can you lay off? Jeez. That's all she was doing. Yeah. No, she, well, uh, wait, but, it, but why didn't she... So, so basically, like, are we to conclude that if, um, if, if him, before he died, hadn't encountered, uh, Lillian, that, like, Wanda would have actually, like, been in a position to discover that he existed in, like, her world, and instead of going to all of... Because remember, this would be before Multiverse of Madness. Yeah. This. What's, what's happening right now is before Multiverse of Madness. So, like, while she was around looking, like, her son's spirit was actually, like, present in her own universe, but she wasn't so, able to figure it out. I was gonna ask if you guys even knew the answer to this, or if it's just up in the air, but, like, what mechanics caused the souls of the sons to do this or whatever they even what are they i don't I think know that this is underneath the the mcu have souls I I well the is, thing is well, are they yeah, souls yeah, or are they, they, they made up so. So, so the thing is you got to remember that there's a lot of competing so because because souls do exist the soul stone but also yep. you have like right. multiple versions of the afterlife also exist so it's like yep. there are you multiple have wakanda versions. afterlife then, egyptian afterlife you have if, whatever happens afterlife wise in this it's if we all consider them souls that means that wanda can just manifest we do new consider souls. the juice have souls yeah yes. pretty much that's pretty like, crazy well, again, and it's it's dealing with a problem that we had right the whole time watching one division and multiverse of madness is like yeah but they're not they're not real they're made up they're like fictional they're not they're not like real they entities. are illusions uh, mm -mm. But, but like it's it's as if the writers were like wait what are you talking about they were real like as if they didn't even realize that that was something that they needed to get past as uh, in terms of explaining it to the audience you know this is like, underneath oh, well, yeah they are real and when the hex disappears the souls just go into the ether and float around until they can find dead bodies that they can yeah. take over. Like, what? What? What is that? Like, what are you doing? MCU writers don't watch their own stuff and shows no, and movies. All. Or each other's. No. Yeah. <laughs> or them, their own, is what you're saying? <laughs> like, it's, they, 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 no, I, not I was... their own. Like, it's... MCU's, I think. It's, I, it's... I mean, I, the, the reality is that the answer is a lot simpler, which is that Marvel wants to have the kids as their, like, superhero identities. They want them mm -hmm. in the MCU. But the problem is that they... It's like, how do you do that, right? Because the only way that you can do that is that Wanda actually has children, but they have to grow up, right? Like, and however long that's going to take mm -hmm. for them to get to the age that they are, like teenagers. Or you can do some crazy like supernatural shit to essentially fast track that well but, but then you start to run into what they've created here which is very bizarre in uh i guess two episodes yeah we'll get uh, another blatant example and we can probably discuss the mechanics at that point further of whether or not they what are they up to basically because i feel like the second one is worse i'm not sure it's hard to say they're both pretty bad the ways that uh you know the the soul whatever they are are transferred so um well yeah i mean i guess it's um because th this episode essentially presents it almost like blurry but essentially they confirm it right at the end like mm. the, the the original guy he's dead he's dead this is this is not like mm -hmm. a sort of amalgamation or like a weird sort of continuation of that person's existence this is billy Yes, mm -hmm. and and they seem to think like, well, yeah, okay, this is chill. Uh, like, all right, yeah, not nothing, nothing crazy to sort of talk about here in terms of like morality and ethics. Is mm. he though? Because he doesn't really behave like the character from Wonder Vision, grown up, you know. Well, well, I mean, it's something to bear in mind. There's a bit of a problem. Is like, well, first of all, like the original versions of the kids, they, they were only alive for like a few days, right? Like they yeah. weren't. <laughs> like they they didn't actually have lives like they were they were made up essentially yeah so it like, was all made up it was not what real. does it even they mean for real. them to be essentially a discernible real like entity when when they aren't like they're not mm -hmm. they're not but 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 the thing is is they make it pretty explicit like agatha basically says that's what's happened like you are billy you are not you are not even like remotely the original person 
Yeah, it's weird because uh, in one division they're basically like plushies, the comfort plushies that Wanda has created for herself to mm. like, you know, play well, house. They can't I guess be real people they can't be no. because they haven't actually led real lives. No, they hadn't. They don't have. Uh, they don't have memories. I guess they don't really have personalities. Nothing distinctive. It, it's weird when you know he gets transformed into this boy's body. It's just. It's not William. It's not really Billy. It's just uh, like an empty yeah, shell of a that's character. Of the, uh, that's because of the spell, right? Isn't that what is essentially said? Is that the uh, the spell that made it to where the identity was concealed was like kind of like responsible for that mm. i'm pretty sure yeah. that was something that was said later on like oh you wouldn't be ready or something to understand what's happening so yeah, like the I reason why it something took that... so long is because of I... That. Mm. I have a question um by oh. the process of whatever it is entering the now dead body of this guy it heals the body question mark i mean i mm. think I, that has to be concluded right? a... because he died. Like, it's yeah, fucking how yeah so, so it's something that. Work, so that just comes across to me, and, and until they tell me otherwise, which they're pretty much not gonna, is you come along and you're like, I'll have that. I can fix it with magic, and then I'll put my thing in there. It's like, oh. I can fix it, but you don't get to keep it. Yeah, you're, it's, it's, mine, it's now. mine now that I fixed it. And it's like, <laughs> mm. because if. If you well, want to claim ownership some... over your house this after. This is a bit of an awkward problem. The MCU has, like, resurrection. Like, that's. The MCU has that in various forms. So oh, yeah. you should you should probably be making an effort to like actually fix this. Well, technically, than essentially going ah well, well you lose. What I'm highlight is they kind of do resurrect him, but they th th I say they because I don't know who the fuck is organizing this. But we have to assume the, the second is, one we get explicit right. who's organizing it, but the first one we don't. It's like is it automatic? Yeah. Does someone do it by accident, or is it just something it does on its own? But um. Mm -hmm. Yeah, finds a body recently deceased, heals it up, and takes control, which is so like, I'm sorry, what the fuck? Yeah, I think I think something because we're jumping ahead. It's essentially, I think the the conclusion of the ride is, is yeah, but he's dead, so it's all good, right? Like that, that's <laughs> well, that's they, essentially. I don't think you need to jump like, ahead yeah, to say that. That's with what we got yeah. so far, right? Oh, it's just because if, they they try to the, they briefly sort of try to address it, but but that seems to be the attitude of the ride is, is yeah. Yeah, well, he's dead, so he's there's out, no so problem here. Even though I, the I, I obvious don't... unethical, or rather ethical, clean way to do it is just you fucking apparate a body, you create one. Yeah, mm -hmm. like, why Why does... So he just completely loses a chance at life, essentially through... It's Wanda's fault, basically, anyway. And, yeah, like, you gotta yeah. make no effort to try and rectify that. And then additionally, it's just like, okay, well, so... <laughs> Why do you think we ask people if they want to donate their organs? Like, why do you, why do you think we just don't go, ah, yeah. oh, they're dead, fuck them. You know, who cares what they wanted? Like, that's just not the attitude that we have in anything in life. Of like, oh, well, they're dead, who cares? Like, who cares what they wanted? Who cares what whatever it was that they wanted to happen uh, after they died? Mm -hmm. It's like, that's just not how it works. Oh. Like, bear in mind the situation for the parents here, right? Their actual son has died. And they are completely unaware that that's happened. There is no grieving for him, nothing along those lines. They are completely clueless as to what happened to their actual son. That's the situation that they're going to persist in forever, basically. Yeah. Isn't um, that fucked? Mm -hmm. like, they might, well, there's, there's a line, actually, that he gives to his boyfriend later that we can... Uh discuss when we get there uh about what well, we just say now he he says that he pr he pretended to get better so that uh it so his, his parents would be uh, to make them feel better so they wouldn't be under such you know stress and everything um mm. but like he's not really him he there's like a secret version of him that he only tells like his boyfriend about um how do you that... even do that by the way how do you pretend, pretend to, get to be someone you have never I don't know. Experienced man. in yeah, any way whatsoever. The yeah, files exactly. are in the brain. You can access them whenever he wants. That's how it works. Okay. Yeah. No, they can't. Uh, no, he can't. I'm pretty sure they were explicit that he can't remember anything yeah. because, yeah. of course, he can't. He got it from person. all the pictures. He picked up all the pictures and then he was like, there you go. That's pretty it. funny because that means whatever, whatever, what's the kid called? Billy did to him, like, altered his brain chemistry such that wherever the memories were stored, <laughs> just got wiped, I guess. The, oh, so the I, way, I guess. Is this not like, um, <laughs> What happens at the end of X Men Three? If, if for those who don't remember, Charles takes the body of a uh, the the old dude who's like brain dead, I think. But the thing mm. is, the body actually is fully functional, I think, in that. But 
the the brain is like dead and gone. Like I think they make that explicit, probably for this reason. They're like, there's no yeah, getting also, back the person who owns his MCU body. This isn't the MCU where that's yeah, exactly. This isn't like in the MCU where they. I mean, it's something that they 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 try to do it of like, oh, the people who got snapped, they weren't like totally gone, gone. Yeah, they were. <laughs> I don't even know why we're saying that that's not, not the case. Exist, they were. Yeah. They got brought back from the dead. That's what happened. Not brought back from a nebulous plate. They were dead. That's it. Uh, like, mm. it's just something that... And, and it's going to be the same with Wanda, right? Whatever whatever justification they get to bring her back or any number of characters that, that it decides to bring back. In the X-Men films, there's just, like, no... There's, like, no pathway that would present, like, that as an option, right? That Charles could save that guy. Yeah, well, that's mm. what they wanted, the to, they wanted concept, to say. Yeah. I mean, the entire concept of, like, uh, taking over a body and then dealing with it and how you know to deal with the parents and how the moral morality of it and ethics in isolation that concept is like pretty interesting and intriguing yeah. right it's very interesting and um with the competent writing but the problem is uh, arises when the show itself and the writers themselves don't understand how effed up it is as a concept and they just expect you to be okay with everything that is going on they're just not self-aware at all well, if the script was self-aware about it and treated it carefully and you know it's just a terrible thing that happened and let's have characters go through this very objectively terrible thing for everyone um subject. and have yeah it's, it's, <laughs> it's kind yeah. of funny in a way right because it's like you know who it's like how, how little understanding do you have to have to, to have made this mistake it's like well patty jenkins made it quite publicly oh yeah <laughs> you're right yeah and she well she had to quote tweet someone saying this is the explanation for how i didn't portray rape trust me it's actually a, a, a meta uh, reference to uh, Oof, <laughs> terrible the the idea of having a magic system where bodies essentially have like a soul socket and if something happens to the body and damages it such that a soul can't inhabit it, that you have the soul leave it. And now you have a body that's not functional, but it's busted and it has to be like fixed again before you can put a soul in. Like that's one thing, but nothing happens between those two things here. He's dead and then a soul comes in, but like, but the body's still broken. It can't harbor a soul exactly. anymore. It's, it's. And so if it's, they fix it, it do something uh, what makes them think, to fix it yeah. first. If they fix it, what makes them think they own that body? How's that work? Yeah. And if, well, why if would the that rules be the case? Are... What what if you could talk to the original guy, do you think that he'd be okay with this? I would wager yeah. that the answer would be no. I imagine that the case for most people would be, nah, bro. Like, no, thank you. <laughs> Don't like that you, one bit. You need to make a system where like, oh, well, once the soul leaves, it can't get back into the body. Like, it once it's out, it can't get back in. Or it leaves the body, it's no longer on this plane, they and don't, it can't get But they it wouldn't again. want to but they don't do a rule like that, no, because that no, would lock don't. off their options in the future. Because yeah. now I'm starting to wonder if this is going to be how it happens with Wanda or something. That she actually died, but then, I don't know, her soul the body into the multiverse. And then another Wanda mm. who died, and then and then they'll be like, yeah, oh good, yeah, now she's yet back. Yet another way back into Oof. the real world. Oh, Pretty much. Well, that's that's, that's the thing, right? All of the conversation about the morality of it, ultimately, all of these were... I, w I wouldn't even say of secondary importance to the writers. What they wanted was a way to fast-track getting this character. That's what they wanted. They wanted to fast-track getting Billy so that he could be Wiccan. That's what they wanted. And this was the mm -hmm. fastest way that they could do it. The fastest, easiest way. And, and then they were like, well, yeah, but it's all good, because he died. So it's all good. Shut up. Don't think about it. There were easy ways to get um, a body, it's, less ethically it's, it's, destructive ways. No, I, I know it's it's weird. It is really weird. Yeah, the, the, there's you you literally are basically for this show. Like I brought this up in our first discussion of the show, you are essentially given carte blanche, free reign, blank check, uh, to make whatever kind of a crazy, kooky, wacky magic system that you want. There are no rules. Go for it. Do whatever. And they don't use that opportunity to explain any of this stuff. Uh, in any coherent way. They had the opportunity. It was definitely not taken. What an absolute and total waste of what you were essentially given, the kind of gift you were given to have all this money, this time, actors, mm -hmm. talent, everything like that, and you just didn't do anything uh, with a magic system. So um, It's unhinged. It is. 
It is oh, unhinged. And this isn't the, even the most unhinged. Unhin the hinges <laughs> have not yet begun to un. No, that's right. They're not, so, not, not relatively yeah. speaking, no. That's we got to <laughs> There's still more. There's still a lot more of the show left. So, um, yeah, let well we can carry on, but that's it's important to discuss because that's essentially very important for this character. That's how this character enters the universe. That's how Gay Kid essentially is now who he is. That's how the soul of Billy or whatever gets inside of him. And that's how he gets to be who he is. Mm -hmm. um, so, three years later. Three years later. We cut to three years later. Wow. Um, he looks just the same, which is uh, odd for a boy his age. Uh, gay he kid. He has eyeliner or eye pencil. <laughs> Yeah, he's extra gay. His gay levels have increased. Oh yeah, this is the gay scene. eyeliner. Yeah, this is uh, the gay oh, scene. Oh boy. Um, gay kid <laughs> is in the car with his gay lover. Boyf. And that guy's name's Boyf. 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 Yeah. That's right, Boyf. He's, he's with Boyf. Gay kid is with Boyf. <laughs> and he he still got that tile with him, that weird tile in his jacket. He just kept it. Yeah. For because he just kept it because. All right. Lucky. Yeah, I guess it was a thing that he kept. And hmm. Anyway, uh, gay kid and boy, if they kiss and they talk about, oh my goodness, aren't we so much in love? Um, and he hears the thoughts of boy saying he, he's, he's kind of reading his thoughts. I think it just kind of happens automatically. Um, but he hears the thoughts of boy saying, oh, I wish I could say that I love him. And gay kid's like, yeah, I love you too. And I want to tell you something. I want to tell you that. Um, there's another guy who died in the accident three years ago, and he's not me. He came back as something different, something else, something more. Uh, I'm not William Kaplan. I'm I'm just a different like person, uh, and I've just pretended to recover so that my parents didn't worry. Uh, and I want you, Boyf, to know the real me. Which and is just Boyf like is a like... oh, well, sure. All right. Anyway, uh, have you like checked in to on. like the psychiatric? Oh. Sort of stuff. Which is not the way to explain the concept of like what all of my memories were erased in the crash. I like like this body got reset as a new person. I have no memory. He even says I have no memory of anything that happened before the crash. His existence essentially begun when he woke up from the crash. Uh, he didn't know his parents, didn't know his room. Uh, the dog didn't recognize him, uh, which means something's wrong with him. Uh, and uh, it's it's a very it's a weird way to sort of explain that as a the concept. dog the dog probably hasn't chilled out since then right is no. the dog no. just being like hey there's something um, wrong with I you don't know. For yeah. three years the dog has been concocting Whoa, different shit. ways to translate to the parents what's happened yeah well I don't Probably know maybe it, and it is little symbols it is, with maybe cereal maybe it's been cool and chill maybe they uh, got an that, understanding um, Rick made for uh for Morty's dog so that he could you know explain himself your son is not this your actually. Son. This reminds me of the, uh, there's this meme someone shared about the parent trap, where mm -hmm. from the <laughs> dog's perspective, it's actually a horror movie. Because one <laughs> day, this, uh, one, one day, your, your beloved owner girl, she goes off to camp, and then some skinwalker <laughs> returns that looks like her and sounds like her, but it's not her. It's something's wrong. It's not her. And it tries to pretend to be her. Where did the real one go? What's going on? Where is she? What's wrong with her? So. Similar concept, maybe. Um, <laughs> the uh, the gay kid brings uh, Boyf back to his room, which now is completely different than what it was three years ago. It's really weird, and it's really gay, and it's got a bunch of whole magic stuff. It's got a whole bunch of, like, like weird posters about... It's got the, the, the Lorna Wu poster, and uh, all the gay stuff, and it's got witch things and figurines. It's it's def a very, very different room. Um, so he mm. says that he has a dossier and that he's been thinking about what happened about the crash. And he said the crash happened when the anomaly was collapsing. And he opens up a laptop and there's a video of Jen Whoa. giving a candle mask tutorial. You're here. <gasps> yeah. It doesn't have anything to do with anything. It just establishes that he lady. knows about Jen, That's which they established world earlier. Actually, I think the world building is bad because I specifically noted that uh, Jen's account does not have a profile picture. It's just a J, like the, the default Google account. And Jen mm -hmm. would absolutely have a profile picture for her business and the things that she's doing. But yeah, Jen does not have a profile picture. Legitimately wow. strange. 
Um, that is that's bizarre. That is that, that is, is actually odd. bizarre. Uh, one of the least believable things in this entire uh, show. He's also retarded. Uh, yeah. He called a video video. Yeah, I mean, well, so the boomers was, knew oh, what that was. Well, it's not YouTube. It's it's like MCU Fake tube. YouTube. It's yeah, video it's tube. The They're what's interesting. They they say specifically Reddit and TikTok in this episode, but they do not say YouTube or use I guess YouTube. They to so. Talk about YouTube, yeah. I guess, but they were allowed to talk about the other ones. So, yep, Reddit mentioned mega cringe. Um, <laughs> uh, so yeah, he says um that uh gay kid says that uh, he's looking at footage of the, the 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 wall around westview and he said that he saw a symbol on the wall of the anomaly and he says that it's a rune and he said that he found a guy on reddit who used to live there in westview and he'll meet him tomorrow this is everyone watching Twilight scene i want everyone to, who's watching this don't meet random strangers you found on reddit don't do it. Yeah. Can you imagine being his boyfriend right now? Like you're thinking of saying, you know, I love you, and then the very next breath, this is what you're being subject to. Um, By the way, I'm actually I'm a, different a different person, person and yeah, I'm a different here's person. my conspiracy theory. Wouldn't mind as well. Uh they're definitely not also, using witchcraft. YouTube because I don't know what the fuck is going on here. If you pay attention, the video is playing. And then it pauses while they talk about what they've seen. And then he says, hey, look at this. And does some zoom in hand shit while not pressing any buttons. But the bar actually moves forward as though the bar represents actions you can take on the video or something. It's the most, it's the weirdest shit because uh, the play pause doesn't change the whole time. I don't know, whoever designed this has no idea what YouTube is. They've just seen pictures. Bizarre, yeah. You'd think that someone who does this kind of work for a living would be familiar with things like YouTube and know how it functions. No, only Twitter. They were like, oh, well, the red bar, it moves whenever things are happening. And so when he's like, pause it in hands, the bar starts moving. <laughs> Which is like, no, 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 that's not how it works. And that you have they to could have just had it on a video player. He just, I downloaded this video from a secret website on the internet, and then he just plays it. Don't you think they have one nerd? Just one nerd who watches YouTube on their team. Looking, yeah. you know? How do you make a show like this without having an army, a legion of nerds, to make sure that all the technical wizardry happens? It always surprises me, but I guess that's the way it should work. It, it will always surprise me how much boomerish shit is in control of, by, or rather the other way around, how much, how much newer kid shit is in control of by boomers. I have no idea what the fuck's going on. Um, yeah, you know, or who write young characters to be really, you know, like not young. Like, here's what the kids would really be saying. I know the kid lingo. I'll write the kid <laughs> words, is what they say. Yeah. And then the Someone result is just an offensive stereotype. Someone. Are there any nerds that uh, don't use YouTube? Mm. Unless we wanted to. Someone wrote it in the comments, and it's it makes so much sense. Why would this guy be using a light mode? Yeah, that's, because he's, that is, that he's gay. It's so bare. Look at gay. it. There's no recommendations. Like it's like a it's like a new video hosting site that Avoid. also no. allows you to it, pause it in hands whatever you want. Right. Without like, pressing it, anything. It, your, it really hurts your eyes. Like for after a long time, I I can't take it. Like. Uh, well, yeah. Mercy. I mean, how long did it take yeah, us? Hey, turn on Discord like, light 10, mode. Ten or fifteen episodes of EFAP, and then we went to dark mode. We couldn't take it anymore. <laughs> Fans couldn't take it. <laughs> Dark mode EFAP looks way better. Yes, he's it does. such an emo. <laughs> yeah. But not on YouTube. No. He's just on YouTube he's just gay and he uses light mode. If you're gay, you use light mode. So there. Let it be so let it be written. So let it be done. Uh so yeah, he, he said, I found this guy on Reddit who used to live in Westview and we'll, we'll meet him tomorrow. And of course, they meet him in this dark, dank, wet, secluded parking garage. There's a lot of really bad life decisions being made uh, here. Uh, but it's but funny, they, Rags. They... Funny. Okay, well, I mean, that excuses everything, really, oh. when you think about it. Yes, it um, but yeah, they, they see this guy in the, in, the, in the parking garage, and he's got like a... He's like, oh, he looks all super sus, and he covers the camera up in tape, and he's looking around, and... Da, 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 da. But they're somehow still able to sneak up, like... On him, even though he's supposed well, to be like, oh my god, why goodness, is he standing in like the open? Wouldn't he be against a wall or a pillar? Why is he like? Because he's just weird and don't think about it. 
Anyway, this is this is Bonerific69. That's his Reddit username. <sighs> God damn. Yeah, what huh? the fuck? Yep, his name is Bonerific69. It's worse than people think. It's not just a shit boner joke. It is a doubling down of an even shittier joke than you can imagine. Yep, because it's B-O-H-N-E-R. Boner Rick. Ralph Boner. Oh, it's, it's, it's Ralph, Ralph yeah. Boner. Uh, remember when you thought it was Quicksilver and then it was fucking not? Here he is again. Yep. Yeah. And uh, he's really, really worried. He's really, really worried about people finding him and get, and going on to him, but he, he calls himself Boner Rick. 69 uh and he gives people his real name on the way it's very he's very inconsistently paranoid he's no dale gribble like, he's not even wearing like sunglasses or something he's right? just not so, like um it's really kind of sad right. he's just not actually allowed to be a character he's only a series of um he has like Which things that have happened to him but they're only to be turned into jokes well, I yes. found it kind of odd as the scene plays out and he talks about himself because he he would he talks about things that are like plainly horrible. Yeah. But then like it would just be a joke every now and then about how he's a loser and it's like, sorry, can we put more attention on the fact that he completely lost autonomy over his like nah, mind funny. and body? Funny, 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 funny. He was he was special. Uh, he suffered and, uh, yeah, exceedingly so... compared to even all of the suffering that the inhabitants of Westview had. He... Like he was particularly. He also suffered us. in the meta. Um, he was not yeah, right. like th this. Is not what the fans were looking for to see this. And and it's funny. Back when people had you know an expectation that the MCU wasn't terrible, they thought, oh wow, that's actually an idea to take an alternate universe Quicksilver mm -hmm. from the Fox universe, played by this actor, and to bring him back in now that you've got the merger and the buying them out or whatever it's like the the there's actually a way to get quicksilver back in because quicksilver yep. died in He's age of ultron so it's like we can get quicksilver back and with the actor everyone likes with the scenes everyone likes but it was like no lol it's yep. a boner joke and you're like okay yeah. thanks that's and, it and then everyone complained thought it was shit bad joke bad taste just bad move in general and now it's like yeah here it is again fuck you it'll be even what you know waste. as like with most jokes, it's funnier the second time. <laughs> like with most jokes, it's funnier the second time. <laughs> See? All right. Um, yeah, Randall, uh, he's, he says, call him Ralph. No, Randall. Randall is super paranoid about them wearing like wires and nearby cars and lights and everything. He's, he's a very inconsistently written paranoid person, um, which I, I don't appreciate. Um, but Randall tells the pair about like Wanda making them live out this weird sitcom plot and he describes that it was like traumatizing and awful they couldn't do anything of their own will it was like watching themselves on tv doing things over and over and over again without having any will um, not being able to do anything on their own um but mostly these are just setups for weird quippy kind of joke things it's just uh it's really kind of like, gross yep. it's like he describes over again just your favorite beloved male characters going through terrible yeah. stuff is funny. Yeah, because it's going to be a real person. Show. It's a joke. Yeah. Um. He. It, it's also strangely quick and brief. He just says, "Yeah." He describes his his suffering in fairly concise detail, and then that's. Kind of it. He does. He, he doesn't really have anything to say, anything to add, any elaborations or theories or anything like that. And now, gay kid hears his thoughts at this point. Uh, conveniently, he hears thoughts. Conveniently, um, and the thoughts that this guy is having is, "Don't ask about Agatha Harkness. Don't ask about Agatha Harkness." Over and over and over in his head. So, gay kid asks him about Agatha Harkness. Um. And Randall says, oh, she's an ancient witch, and she will F your shit up. She'll F you up. She, she's really bad. Uh, Randall said he didn't just suffer like the rest of everyone. Uh, he got a really bad deal because Agatha hijacked his life, uh, and she called him her husband, but he was, a, he was her puppet. And he's the one who, like, who, who did all the bad things, like hold someone hostage and poison a dog. I think that's references to the things he did. Yeah, it's pretty rough. WandaVision. Yeah, he was specifically made to do evil deeds that she needed being done for WandaVision. So in particular, he had a terrible, uh, he had a really bad 
um, role to play in the WandaVision stuff. Um, he said, Wanda and Vision had kids who were twins, Billy and Tommy. Uh, one of them was a speedster and the other could read minds. And he said the twins disappeared. Um, which I don't know why he said it like that. It would just be like, well, yeah, I mean, they, they, they're course. gone because they're made up. Yeah, like all real. of the other elements of the illusion, they disappeared when the when the spell stopped. Um, but he says that Agatha is still in Westview under some kind of a spell, acting like a pretty normal ish resident. And she's weird, like a weird resident, but like a normal weird resident. You know, like oh, there's Agatha. She's kind of weird. But yeah, this is just information he has. This is not information he shared to anyone else. Not the authorities. Not to Sword or Shield or Mace or Morningstar or whatever groups that they have these days. He just hasn't told anyone on the internet this, really. He hasn't made a creepy, kooky forum like they do in the terrible horror movies. I don't know. This stuff seems to be very important to his personal life to the point where he brings out these, like, charms and makes incantations. And he has, like, a weird fetish on his head. Well, like a, like a fetish, like a classical, not like a sexual fetish, but like a like a like a bones he's got sewn into his hat um to keep like magic powers and stuff away from him and he's really paranoid but he doesn't seem to have actually done anything with all this information in all this time he's just ruined he's just like he's yeah he's just he's a ruined gaunt, nobody like, character disheveled and terrified and paranoid and describes all the horrors he had to do and it's all supposed to be played for laughs and then he leaves he even cries yeah, uh -huh, trauma. I just don't he like. Is, I, it's one of those things where you're just like, "Why are you doing this? Why are you so mean spirited? Just like, what the fuck?" Yeah, the guy really suffered. The guy suffered a lot. He was forced against his will to do not just somebody else's sitcom, but like evil deeds that he didn't want to do. Um, and he yeah. was powerless to stop it. Uh, and it's at, and Agatha's at fault for that. Ag it's and the show Agatha's has more sympathy for Agatha, who was yeah, like yes, you said, does. actually responsible yes. for it and much more wrongdoing, much more. Then even even Ralph here could like perpetrate in the in the brief horrible time that he spent under her thrall. This show likes Agatha a whole bunch. This yes, show loves Agatha, and Prince it wants Agatha us to. Agatha is really really cool. Now, after this conversation, um, gay kid returns home, and he does. We have our investigation montage, and I'm not even gonna begin to describe i i guess I, I have to begin to describe it a little bit um he like go he does the movie thing in the show thing where he goes on the internet and he types in this and he types stuff in and then lorna Wu's witch's road song is playing in the background <sighs> what an insanely what an insane coincidence um that that's happening because that's supposed to be like the lyrics of that song are supposed to be like um that's something that spurs him to do stuff. And he like he connects all the dots and he does internet research and he finds out uh, he finds an old photograph of Agatha Harkness on the internet that's been uploaded onto the internet. It's like an old timey photo. And he he discovers that Agatha Harkness is like some some Count Saint Germain kind <laughs> of character who just keeps like reappearing throughout history. Yeah. Um he this sees is her true, photo like oh which is a real but they just they just haven't really come up in all the other films. Like 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 yeah. our Scarlet Witch is well, like, an anomaly. Humanity that they, apparently hasn't discovered this. This is what I'm saying, is like they, they converted Scarlet Witch into a witch because this is all retcon nonsense. Mm-hmm. I'm uh, you would think that the way that witches behave, especially once we get our, our big flashback later, and the witches should just be common knowledge that that's a yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah. Do you remember the um, um it was the it was the traumatic event and the explosion and the experimentation that gave Scarlet Witch and remember this all happened in WandaVision, it was like, nah, it turns out what did they describe it as? That she did she did a do you remember this fringy? It was like they, they they recontextualize an event in that was already in stone. They say she did a time hex or something on a bomb. Remember that? I Hmm. It's the it's the stock bomb the is about to go off. Yeah, that and she, in her house. They she say she cast a time she hex because oh, she's a witch. Oh yeah, 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 It was such yeah, a like, no, shut the it. fuck up, it's stop just stealing like, no, that's shit. That's not what happened. Yeah, th that's not what happened. I yeah, probability hex even worse than time hex. Dude, it's actually like 
Age of Ultron is a bad movie, but like the story that they they tell about you know how they survived and you know we waited for like two days for Tony Stark to kill us, staring then at Tony. Like, yeah, no, it, it's because she cast a spell that made it so that it didn't blow up. By well, accident. you see, there, she didn't even know there was there was a time in the MCU where even the bad ones had really good stuff in them. Yeah, occasionally. We are, yeah, we're even like, we're past that. Yeah. That we don't was do all that anymore. bad. That was all terrible. It's terrible all the RNG way down. RNG X. Uh. <laughs> um so uh yeah uh she, he discovers this what for what i believe is a, a a night of casual internet browsing he discovers the truth of agatha harkness and yep. witches um humanity hasn't discovered this somehow but so, he did quite a lot of people use the internet I think I that's mean, it, worth remarking upon. Of all <laughs> all of the institutions and the crazy groups that we know of, none of them looked into witchcraft. Nope. Really? Especially yeah. after Wanda. Yeah. Really? And <laughs> apparently you can find it out if you just Google Agatha Harkness well, Ancient Witch. And we're gonna find out. You don't need to have a special bloodline training experience or anything at all. You can do analog magic as well. I say that we've already established that in the other episode, sorry. So Yes, yeah. because Jen is using it because so, she's bound. Yeah, yeah, well, just, yeah, it's just magic that's done through having the right ingredients. Bam, boom, boom, you can do whatever which you is, want. So the idea yeah, that... Yeah, which is fine if that's how you want to set it up. It's but just it's, like... The world can't accommodate this. Can... Well, yeah, <laughs> that's the late. thing. If you want to make that as a system for your world, super cool, totally fine with that. You have to account for the world understanding that this is a thing. Mm -hmm. um, so... Yeah, he dis he figures it out. Um, he discovers that yeah, Agatha is actually still in Westview. She's caught under a spell, and he's gonna go free her from the spell. Um, so um, he sneaks into the. So we get our season one, uh, episode one. I don't know why I specified season one. Why? Um, but uh, yeah, we we get our little flashbacky kind of thing, and we revisit the. Um, first episode of the show, but it's going to be from his perspective because she's kind of crazy and she's trapped in a bit of a an illusion, thinking she's a detective when really she's just kind of a crazy person. We get it from his perspective now. Um, he says things to her that we didn't hear him say originally. The way that he runs into Sharon's car door because he has to bump into everybody—that's different. Instead of being taken to the police station, she takes him into her living room and he allows her to tie him up, which is really annoying that they just. <laughs> They skip over the part where that's a thing mm -hmm. that happens. Um, but yeah, it's from her perspective, the whole, oh, show he shows the picture of the dead woman, and he's like, oh, no, it's just flowers, and oh, look at the mirror, actually, it's the painting, blah, blah, blah. it's just from the real world perspective. Um, but yeah, he does the spell with a personal item, which is the brooch with the mother, the maiden, and the crone on it, and he does his Latin chants to try and break her out of the spell, and then he allows her to bind his hands and duct tape and tie him up and put him into the closet. Um, I, it annoys me. There's no way that she should be able to do this, but I guess he just lets it happen because we yeah. need to put the kid in the closet for really cool later. closet joke. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Also, he could just back in the closet. <laughs> He's straight up an offensive stereotype. Obviously, yep. yeah. It is. Yeah. It's all they could know As, how to uh, do. Oh yeah. If I was gay. <laughs> then I would be really, really upset with uh, their depiction of uh, gay characters. Um, stop making us into terrible, awful, uh, morally bankrupt losers who suck. Uh, well, and also just please. expressed I'd in really some appreciate of the most that. obvious and stereotypical way, like, I have a boyfriend. And you're like, Yeah, hey, I have my ears great. pierced, I wear eyeliner, and I drive a Subaru. The scene of, he is with his boyfriend, and they talk about how much they love each other. It's like, are you kidding? Come on. <laughs> like... Mm -hmm. Please. It's so gay. Get a, give them character, so please. He exists he so to be riffed on for gay jokes. How gay he is. A gay, so gay. A gay person isn't just like they're. That's the, the whole thing. Isn't that's a it. Thing that's. Like, it barely comes up. It's like a class really? you pick in a video game. <laughs> like, it's, yeah. I will choose gay. Warrior, <laughs> mage, rogue, gay. <laughs> This you is know, your we have life. that very, <laughs> you get the very gay important weapon. scene in that one episode at the beginning where, you know, Boyf calls. So we yeah. need that scene to it's happen. Really important. It's a very that's big, a great setup, I think, for Boyf. Very important. <laughs> well, that's why I very call him Gay Kid. 
here in the notes. The show wants me to just know that he's gay kid, and that's very, very important to the point where you have to devote random scenes to me knowing that he's gay. So I will be, I will cooperate with the show. Well, so he is gay kid. And that's, that's the thing. I call him. <laughs> it's yeah. actually like damaging to their own like goals of his character because if we had just done away with all the fucking useless scenes we've had up until this very episode, so we're talking up to episode six, we're already near the end of it. If we had just, from the get-go, made him who he actually is, and so that becomes pretty... Like, I don't see why this is worse if he was blatant about who he is with uh, uh, Agatha from the get-go. Uh, you know, reformat the whole show and actually have it be that instead. We don't have to waste time mm -hmm. with nothing lines that are all useless to us as soon as we hit episode 5. And instead, we could have spent time with them talking about all the events of Westview, the way that he is alive or not, and everything they feel about Wanda. You know... Discussing things that matter. The Maybe. way the I had this thought while he was in the car with his boyfriend, I was thinking, wouldn't it be cool if the this guy Tommy or whatever his name is, the the guy that he took over, um, if the guy was you know gay, we don't know if he is or William. not, but yeah, yeah, with William, yeah, whatever, <laughs> the dead guy, if he had a boyfriend before right and then this uh wanda's kid took over him and then he just tries to escape this reality that isn't really his so that's why his boyfriend is calling all the time and you know like he doesn't know what's going on that he has suddenly has a boyfriend that he doesn't understand and like the the show could have played into that of course like we have the time skip that would get in the way but that could have been done. Yeah, like I said, reformat um, all of it to actually do meaningful stories. Yeah, that would be so cool. We ain't doing that. To, like, yeah, show because him. This, well, this should be an yeah. upheaval of his entire life. Yeah. This is like, you. this is a reset. We of skipped it, Rags. It doesn't matter. It's fine. Three years gone. All right. Boom. Well, fair enough. Nobody yeah, cares. Enough. <laughs> There's nothing to gain. Mm -hmm. the, the writers deemed it a boring time, so... Yeah, it would, uh, it would be cool see. to show him dealing with it. It would be. That would be like its own entire show premise. Uh, and we're not going to mm -hmm. give any... I mean, this is the backstory of a character that they clearly think is very cool and are trying to set up, but they're, the show that should be essentially his backstory and, how, and his origins, is it is bizarre that it's just being skipped. Uh, but I think, yeah. I yeah, think that they think they've done the work. What what annoys me, I think, is that we didn't really gain anything. We we got the cliff notes, which I felt like we mostly had anyway. We didn't get any substance. And it's like, okay, well, how much time did it take? It's like, oh, you know, like half an hour. Like, how, how, did, how did we get, like, scenes of meaning in half an hour? Not even that. Well, it's like five minutes, really, in that half an hour. Mostly it's That's just what I'm kind saying. of wandering it's, around. It's, there's nothing, nothing really happening. Like the, the, it's like, oh, we got the full history. It's like, no, we didn't. We, we got... Like the broad notes of what's going to happen. We didn't get all the scenes in between of, of actual dialogue and characters learning and changing and struggling. We got boner jokes. We got the parents saying generic lines like, I hope he's okay. What, like, the, I, I, you know, what I gain from any I of mean, that? I mean, people, it has turned into a meme, but there's something to be said about the fact that a meme has revolved around the idea of, um, like, the opening sequence from Up, the Pixar movie, that tells mm. a whole emotional story, it's like four minutes. Yeah, well, forever. It's good they, they made that mm -hmm. so that we can always reference it whenever someone says, like, well, what are they supposed to do in a whole episode? Remember the... <laughs> that has been said before about Disney Plus shows? It's only been a few episodes. <laughs> it's like, stop oh, saying that. I beg you to stop yeah. saying that. When you look at how yeah. Jam... Like I said, Up had an entire emotional relationship and like these shows entirely and... do not respect your time no. they don't oh, no. they waste God, so much no. time oh goodness no but uh but we do Yay. so yes. let's move on i guess um okay so yeah it replays more scenes from episode one um she gets him out of the closet he tries to say his name um but he does say his name from his perspective uh, he says uh, his own name, William Kaplan, and then he says Billy Maximov, but she can't hear him because of the curse, because the symbol on that tile, that little, wood, little wooden tile that Lillian made, it's a, it's like a sigil that is cast on him. So whenever he tries to give information about like who he is, he can't actually oh, yeah, describe the, it to her. 
the rules of but the, not anyone else the rules of the sigil are the the person who cast it forgets as well question mark was that what they said but he's he would the sigil is like oh you will forget a thing that you don't know yet i can't remember what they say when they talk about the sigil it's something really stupid we covered it obviously last time but it was like and i guess it the, only applies the that casts it will forget she cast it as well as the person will not know they have it or some bullshit it, it sounded contrived as yeah, hell yeah but she but she forgot it because of completely different reasons to right. being a sigil. Or maybe they're, they completely well, yeah, overlap. That's, that's, that's what I was going to say. It's so fucking confusing. But then, of course, it's just so stupid because we said, I think at the time, record a video of yourself going, I'm going to do this uh, sigil thing. I'm going to forget. Mm -hmm. So make sure to write a note that says play me on the video. So you do the sigil and you hit play me and you go, oh. Right. Maybe the magic would know and it would retroactively Oh god, we don't get into that, do know. we? <laughs> but anyway, yeah, so what so for the last three years, whenever Gay Kid has mentioned his name or his identity to anyone else, I guess nothing happened. But it only happens to Agatha when he tries to tell her. Why is it specific to only witches? Can can normal people? Can I guess he can say it to normal people? Because obviously, if every time he told someone his name and his mouth went and it didn't actually oh, like, yeah, he must come be able through. To it. When he told yeah. him Wait, to, so that uh, means the lady that came with them, right? So it... she's not a witch. Right. Agatha is not a witch currently, you're correct. Oh, you know, oh no, he I mean, means the, um, Sharon. Uh, uh, yeah, that's oh, why Sharon. I mean. Yeah, she's not a witch. Yeah, so she would know, she would her. hear. Yeah. Why oh, would it wait, work wait. I think the sigil only works on people who are plot relevant as deemed oh. by the writers. Oh. That's the magic. Oh, that's the magic what? spell. Oh, now that you've said that, oh. yeah, now it makes sense. That I makes can sense. See why <laughs> this show is, I can see why people keep insisting that this show is good. Yeah, that makes sense. Because they're stupid. <laughs> Um, all right. Oh, this, this is actually a good Marvel show. Uh-huh. All right. Okay. It. Explain it There's... to me, then. Tell me why it's good. <laughs> it's the story. About family. Yeah. So I love that there's so much, so much effort put into, or so much emphasis on his name for his terrible writing to reduce him down to gay. us calling him <laughs> gay. this gay, yeah. gay guy. I'm worried. That's what like the show wants me names. to think. The show is very <laughs> insistent that I know that he is very gay. Yeah, because he's terribly they gave him, they gave him the him. mannerisms, the look, the stereotypical <laughs> attitude. Like, he's extremely... He's very gay. They go out of their way to have <laughs> random scenes of, oh, it's just my boyfriend calling. And then that's just the scene. <laughs> Well, and that's they one really of the most memorable me scenes because gay. there's not much for him to do until they reveal who he is. And they do that very late yeah. into this fucking show, so... Like I said, it was all a waste of fucking time. Well, I guess. Do what you want. I want to spend your time. So, yeah. So we cut to the... We, we go to, like, present day on the Witch's Road, Ooh. right? Our prequel... Our first prequel of this EFAP is done. All right? It's over. <laughs> We're back on the witch's road where the real excitement happens. <laughs> Agatha somehow pulls herself out of the quicksand mud. Uh, I, I don't know how. They just have like a vine in it and she pulls herself out and she Simple survives. Simple as that, yeah. Yeah, that, okay, so she's okay after being thrown into quicksand. Um, gay Kid then crushes the tile. This is so fucking weird. So it's a wooden tile that has the sigil on it, the symbol that Lillian made. Gay Kid crushes the tile in his hand. Like he just has it in his hand and he squeezes. It's like a Scrabble tile. He's got a Scrabble tile with the symbol on it. Well, actually, all Scrabble tiles have symbols on it. Except for the blank ones. That could be any letter you want. You're saying hmm. they all do except the ones that don't. Yeah. Yeah, but you know what I mean. It's not as stupid as you made it sound. <laughs> but like all, all Scrabble tiles do have symbols on them. We, those are just letters we recognize as like making sounds, except for the blank Scrabble tiles, which are supposed to be any letter that you want it to be. Those are good ones. Those are really good ones. Um, but he like he he just he has it in his palm and he squeezes it and it breaks into four pieces. Strong. Okay, show if you say He's so. Very strong. Yeah. yeah, I guess so. He's got that strength. Um, he's got Samson's strength from the from the Bible. Because he's got curly hair, so he's like Samson. Mm. Strong. That's a. That's. A, he's not blind a though. No, he's not blind. That's true. 
And he hasn't been betrayed by a woman. Oh, wait, he will be. Oh, my God, he well. is like Samson. It was Delilah, right, who betrayed Samson, cut his hair? Hey there, right? Delilah. It was Delilah. Don't betray me, you'll take my eyes. That's how the song goes, right? If you do, I'll bring this temple down, and all of you will fucking die. Oh, my God. Oh, yes, you will. That's what he That's what he sang as he was chained between those two pillars. As he was doing it? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> that's how it caught on. It was a really good song. Uh, the the few people who survived he killed a lot of innocent people i was uh, there he did sing it i would imagine yeah um <laughs> uh let's see uh what i was it's like i i get oh yeah um agatha uh she she she's covered in mud and everything but she confronts him and she's like oh i figured it out i knew who you really were but i wasn't sure until you killed all of us or at least tried to kill all of us um it's good to see you again billy Oh my gosh, she's figured it out. Agatha's figured it out. <gasps> she says that every witch with a beating heart can hear you now. I don't know what that means. Mm. Okay. Um, <laughs> Agatha says that she's killed a lot of people. Don't worry. Um, I've killed a lot of people, Billy, and it's not holding me back. Uh, I assume he, she is referencing how they believe that he has just killed Lilia and Jen. And again, I have no idea why he would want to kill Lilia and Jen. I there legitimately have no clue. They do not provide us I, I any know. reason why he would want to do that. I have no clue why Gay Kid wants to kill Lilia and Jen, but he tried to murder them, and as far as he knows, he did. In fact, he's surprised to see them later, and we will get into that when we get into that next episode. But yeah, fucking bizarre, no clue. But Agatha basically tells him that... Um, you should not feel guilty about having this magical talent that you've been doing what witches have done for centuries. You've survived. You saw an opportunity with like this empty vessel, the dead kid. And then Billy, you moved right in through a means that we don't quite know because Agatha asks how you got a new body. And he doesn't know because he doesn't actually know. No one knows. The writers might not even know at this point. They might still be scrambling to patch it together. So yeah, they really hate each other on account of him just trying to kill her and her being Agatha, who's evil. Uh, she says they need to finish the road, um, and he says no, and she wants to stop him, but she can't use her magic, and so she asks what he wants at the end of the road, and he says, I want to find Tommy. I want to find my brother Tommy, because he's out there. Tommy's mm -hmm. out there. My brother is out there somewhere. That real brother. I guess I'm real, so he might as well be real, too. I don't know, man. Might as well. I guess that makes sense or something. Uh, sure. So, yeah, they go down the road to find the next trial together. And he says, I'm not nice. And that's the episode. What a revelation. Are there... That's yeah. crazy, yeah. I was... Yeah. Are there any questions? I really I'm don't happy feel to like uh, any questions. I learned much of anything, considering that was 40 plus minutes yeah, that was almost a yeah, that was like a forty something minute episode. That was like forty five minutes. Yeah, impressive only... expedience in squandering, I guess. Yeah, can only fake simulations of kids uh, made by uh, witches uh, take over dead bodies. Cause... But now, yes. Yeah. Well, right. That's that's the only question I had. All right. Thank you. Yeah, there we go. All right. Happy to help. If you have any more questions, <laughs> please direct them to uh, Fringy. Yeah. And he will answer all of your Agatha related He's questions. Kind of our He's an Agatha. Agatha. Uh, uh, the, the the really even Agatha help desk. No, Fringy yeah, no, is an I, agathologist. He knows I, all about no, Agatha. No, not really. Magic. It's no. Fringy, I saw your plushie. You are death, like Rio. Ooh. Spoiler. No, I'm not. No. What? Oh, okay. Why would you even make that comparison? Because, That's so because rude. Because you, you have the sight. It's rude. <laughs> it's rude, Rags. It is rude. That was rude of you. To compare you to her. The cringiest depiction of death since... Oh. Uh, well, we'll get I guess there. We'll get there. now that you've mentioned it, wasn't something that they the, the creators of the show said... Because uh, in the comics, death is, is like closely associated with Thanos. Not anymore. That, like, this... This was another Mephisto situation where they're like, oh, oh, huh. <laughs> like, they didn't realize that, you know? I just they, find that funny. 
the way you, everyone should see the source material is a whole bunch of, like, it's like a buffet of options, and writers just walk into the room, they go out a plate, and they just pick at some stuff, take it, and leave. And then writers and later... And then somebody sitting there is like, well, wait, no, hold on, but that, that one's... That, yeah, you, you some really, writers are like, can I have the, the um, you know, the cake the or whatever? I'm telling you, and it's like you they've used it. that with that. Well, isn't the best <laughs> like, oh. example of this the Mandarin? It was like... Yes, Mandarin's over. Shane he walked off it, with yeah. it, and then someone else was like, I want to use it for something else. And then it's like, okay, there you go. We'll just bring it back into the room. You could have the reheated leftovers of the Mandarin. It's, uh, and the more they go on, the more they'll be like, oh shit, we probably should have planned this out. Uh, something when you said the reheated day. leftovers of the Mandarin, I, I pictured an orange, a mm -hmm. Mandarin orange in the microwave. Oh, that's what I mean. It works so well, right? As a... That's a really... Yeah. You wouldn't <laughs> want to eat an orange hot. Would that would be odd? That's that's how bad Shang Chi is. But to be fair, Shang Chi is probably like like one soggy. of the better ones. Shang Chi is definitely one of the better yeah. Yeah. post, you know, Even Infinity Uncle War Fino. films. <laughs> yeah. Well, the thing is, is that like Shang Chi was like a he was like a hero who went on the standard hero arc. You know, like at least there was that compared to a lot of these other characters that they've introduced. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, well, enough about Shang-Chi. I can't let you, I can't let this podcast degrade into madness. All right, we have to finish. We have to begin. One down. So, yeah, so the episode starts. This is the one oh, yeah, everyone thinks. This, this is, is the, the one fire episode, right? This is the 9.5 yeah. on IMDb. That's Fucking crazy. Which I don't believe. I wish, <laughs> I wish they re review bombed it. I really wish. <laughs> oh. uh, Anyone who oh, says that this it. is good, I want you to ask them to explain this episode <laughs> to you and watch well, them fail miserably. I just, I, I that, so 100% with what Rags just said, but I would also just on the point of the reviews, uh, for some reason, this just never happens as a cultural thing. Like, it never gets pointed out as a bad thing that it would have been... And I, I, I lack the better verbiage for this, but Love Bombed, right? It would have been skyrocketed in ratings by loads of people trying to push it up. And it's like, that's never considered a bad thing. And it's like, okay. Well, <laughs> like, there it goes, I guess. It's, you know, it's 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 uh, on par with, if not better, than the best episodes of Breaking Bad. We, we could say that. Yeah. Put this in a room with Ozymandias. And yeah. every, terrible, every terrible fucking show has that one episode that for some reason everybody, because sorry to bring it up again, season two, episode four of Halo. Oh, it's Reach! Look, it's Reach! Uh, Reach. Never mind. Yeah. Well, a horrible, at least... insane, stupid depiction of the fall of Reach. At least that, I, 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 I uh, well, to be fair, I think I understand both of these, but, like, with Reach, it's like a big old action set piece that usually, there's, that there's a reason, you point. I usually understand, like, it's like, yeah, explosions, sword fights, guns, it's like, yeah, 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 that's, that's enough to rate it highly. This one is, as Rags already put it, it's basically like, I don't believe anybody who enjoyed this understood what the fuck happened in it. Well, I, and yes. also, all of the rave reviews, are any of you guys gonna watch this episode again, ever? Ever. That would be something I would yeah. be very curious about. Are you ever going to rewatch this show in the in the same way that people tend to rewatch good shows? <laughs> and IGN gave it an eight out of ten. You going to watch it again ever? It's not as good I as Dragon like... Age Veilguard, is what you're saying. Ugh. No, I guess not. <laughs> the way this goes is that people, it's confusing enough for stupid t people to go. Oh, I don't understand anything that's going on. Therefore, it must be very, very smart. Oh yeah, it must make sense. Understand. The writers know what they're doing. They're, they they clearly know what they're doing. They're they're so clever and smart. They they must know what yeah. they're doing. There's that angle, but then it's there's also confusing. the angle of a tangled mess of blown up nonsense. And then someone goes, "Yeah, I understand it." And you like explain it. And you go, "Oh well, she's going back and forth in time." Mm-hmm. And you're like, oh. mm, that's really not <laughs> like even close to a uh, <laughs> okay, fine. I'm like, yeah, see, I got okay. it, I got it. Interesting. So, um, Agatha. Uh, oh yeah, Lilia is falling in the black void, and she's wearing a princess outfit. That's how this this story opens. Oh my goodness, what does it mean? I guess mm, we'll find out. Crazy. Agatha and Gay Kid are talking as they walk down the witch's road. He says that Wanda isn't his mom, he has a mom. Which is a nice thing for him to say. 
because she seems like a nice lady, except for that. I guess you would have got to know her over the three years, bro. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah. So, I mean, that, yeah, it's, it's it's good that he said the standard thing that somebody would say. I was no. worried with but Hopefully Marvel word show. spread of how much of a fucking monster Wanda is, and so he doesn't like her. That yeah. woman has been longer, uh, his mother for longer than Wanda ever was, so, you know. Yeah, correct. Even in the current Cheers iteration, that's true. Than. Unless she installed yeah. him with memories of a whole life, like Wanda, you know? You know what I mean? But yeah, fake yeah. Light. <sighs> Whatever, man. <laughs> the issue is that if this is something that is uh, what you'd expect anyone to say but because this is a marvel show uh, it surprises me sometimes that yeah yeah you I get you. so i was like oh okay um so he asks wanda uh he, or sorry he asks agatha if wanda is really dead she says yes no maybe so we're gonna see wanda again everybody well not um, only are we definitely, definitely seeing back. it back because we know about contracts but like in the world at this point there's just nothing is fucking permanent nothing well, no one knows. How do people know about what happened in the Darkhold Castle there's, at the top of the mountain? It's funny there's you that. say that. There's that, but I was obviously just like, I'm referring to if you show a character getting palpatine like Palpatine, I would not expect him to return. Uh, sorry, I would not expect him to not return, like this given character. And Wanda did get palpatine at least once, so you'd think that yeah. I would have some kind of repercussion, but we've got like a thousand different ways characters can come back now, and bring him back... I know they've only said they're doing uh, I, uh, Tony Stark as Doctor Doom, but like they won't be able to resist having him cameo as Iron Man if they've got mm -hmm. him. Yeah. So, you know, it's it's just like, man, whatever, fuck you. I <laughs> just what like a, nobody I'm stays there. Really returned. What a great precedent, Palpatine set. Thanks, Palpatine. Yeah, you did it. Um, how many people uh, can claim they've okay, been vaporized so they... three times? <laughs> <laughs> They come to the next trial. It's a massive spooky castle. Oh my goodness, a big old spooky castle. Um, who knows what adventures await in this large, gigantic, spooky castle? Um, well, it's it's just it's actually just a single room, which is all right. Um, they enter into the castle doors, and Gay Kid is now dressed up as Maleficent from Sleeping Beauty, and Agatha is dressed up as the Wicked Witch of the West. Wow. All right. That's great in for marketing, I guess. Uh, Amazing stuff here. Hey, Sleeping Beauty was fun. Um, oh, who are the names of the three, the three good fairies in it? It was Meriwether was one of them. Who are the other two? Um, I don't remember. There was a blue one, a red a green, one. blue, and red. Um, damn it! I just remember Meriwether. I'm sorry. <laughs> Laura um, Fauna. Uh, that was a f Laura Fauna and Merryweather. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> oh, that's what what fun, fun little movie fun that was. Chat. Maleficent, what an evil bitch. She turns into a dragon at the end, and she even says like all the powers of hell, and then she turns oh spooky throws the sword into her fucking heart, and oh yeah, man, cool. there's green fire. Oh, and all the thorns he has to chop through. Oh, what a what a yeah. fun what a fun movie that was back in the olden days. Yeah, um, I mean. By standards of Agatha, she's a, a true hero of of that movie. It turns out, what a what a great yeah, character. sure, um, great human or a witch. Well, she only terrorized one woman. Yeah, she's <laughs> perfect. Um, what's the? Does anyone have any takes on the thematic value of the witch outfits? Is there anything? No. Not well, Agatha says cast. that the Wicked Witch of the West was based on her. Oh, no. So, because <laughs> obviously I, know, I didn't detect kid, anything, I couldn't pick anything up. Gay kid is trans, like how Maleficent transforms into a dragon. Um, William Kaplan transformed into a young gay child. I don't know. Um, I think they were like, "What are witch characters from other stories?" I think that's it. And, yeah. Um, Mm -hmm. Yeah, that we and have the I rights to, and then it it, it can I don't people know. can share images on social media, and it'll be really cool because it's like look. They didn't even know that Maleficent. I don't think Maleficent is a witch. I don't. She's a think spooky that... sorceress. I mean, if you want to yeah. get technical about it, um, but she can cast magic spells and transform. The thing is, remember she cast a spell on the spinning wheel. Uh, There's no for, like for Sleeping Beauty. Mm -hmm. They didn't do this for anything other than mm -hmm. you remember these from the thing. There you go. Yeah. 
Like, there's, so there's nothing for really costume. analysis doesn't even come into it. <laughs> it's just like yeah, whatever. In a, in a movie, she's a like a evil fairy, um, not a witch. So they couldn't even remember witches from other media. That's crazy. Well, is she not a witch? I mean, she. I don't think technically, she is. Or if they needed a witch, I think they could have come up with something. Better. I mean, what distinguishes her from a witch? She can shapeshift, cast spells, make hexes and curses. She commands minions. Mm, maybe. But I, yeah, whatever. Yeah, that's interesting. I am, if I you am Google team it, it Maleficent does, Witch. It says in the, uh, Melissa is a powerful fairy in Disney's Maleficent film series. In the, in, in the series, she is portrayed as a witch. So it's kind of, it feels like it's undecided because the other three are fairies they're described as fairies the good ones flora fauna and merryweather and they can use magic too and they're nice and lovely yeah. and they make are friends with the animals um and but but maleficent is I suppose the thing is she's spooky can like it, mm -hmm. depending on how you portray your fairy slash witch they could fill the role of whatever you're after you know what i mean like it depends on your own yeah 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 speaking oh, of port yeah. well we can't say that um, but in the center of the room, they're in this little castle room. It's just like a room in a castle. Um, it's just a room. In the middle of the room, there's a table. And it's a, a deck of tarot cards, which are like the oh. cards with all the people on them that you use to tell the future and stuff Ooh, like that. Uh, um, okay. Now, Gay Kid's a fucking moron, as we've established, and he instantly picks up, he instantly starts touching shit. And he picks up the deck of tarot cards and an hourglass clinks and it turns over and the timer begins. They've always known this. Is he how hasn't it works. learned. He has yeah. not learned his fucking lesson. Don't touch shit. It's just it's <laughs> annoying because look around. It's just like they don't get to be characters. Everything's preset. They've got one goal with this episode. They're gonna get to it. Fuck everything else. What is double mm -hmm. annoying about this room and them not taking a moment to look around is that there is an extremely obvious, super duper, mega noticeable element about this room uh, that we will mention in just a second because it's played as it's supposed to be a shock to us. Mm -hmm. So they're like, oh my goodness, it's tarot cards and the timer started. Well, I guess we read tarot to each other. <laughs> okay, because it's just Agatha and Gay Kid now in this room. Okay, so... Uh, they sit down at the table, and he does a card reading for Agatha, and he doesn't really know tarot cards that much. He kind of stammers through it, doesn't really um, know what's going on. Um, uh, he's like, oh, is this a card? It means this, and it, it's kind of, oh, it's actually this. And then he puts the card down, and then all of a sudden, a sword falls from the ceiling and lands right in the floor. <laughs> And they're like, oh my god, oh, what the fuck was that? And then they look up and the ceiling is full of swords. It's a sword ceiling. Whoa. Holy shit. Wow. Crazy. Yeah, that's wow. the kind of thing you notice on a casual uh, glance. Uh, I feel like if all of a sudden uh, rooms that I were in, were in had big sword ceilings, I would recognize that. Well, but yeah. There's no reason for them to look around bizarre, in these yeah. rooms, you know? Yeah, yeah, you wouldn't want to... You, you haven't been... You know, we haven't established any reason to explore the details yeah. of these rooms with the trials where you have to complete a challenge or die. You just, oh, look, not, something, let me grab it. It's not like any of this is dangerous or it puts them in mortal danger at all. No. It's... Yeah. It, yeah. It's there are things I want to talk about that kind of require a reveal that comes way later, but I'm just wondering if it's awkward to yeah, do yeah, all yeah. of the, the questions then as opposed to now. Just about once, the nature of the construction we, of these trials, you know? Yeah, I mean, whenever you feel it's appropriate, because this is, I mean, it, it's up to you. I mean, look, I'm going to... Mahler, oh, so, holy shit! Wait, I just, I just realized, I don't fucking <laughs> care! <laughs> Mahler, you could just say whatever you want, I don't give a shit! You know what? <laughs> Man, go for it! I Mahler, right. I don't care! You don't, you, if, you, if you, you want to do give me it, permission. you can just explain you give me whatever. Permission. No, Mahler, this is I, very messy. I, I don't. This is anyway. Agatha all along. All right, I'm doing it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do, I don't give a shit. I'm gonna do it. You, you give me permission. So, this is something we'll probably try to explain better later, if if it's even possible. But all of the witches road and the trials are constructed by accident by Gay Kid. Correct. Yes. Right. Yeah. Correct. yeah. The, the so, Gay yeah. Kid. 
he can like <laughs> manifest things, make them real. His mind can become essentially real. So, so like, uh, and upon this realization, he has the first thought, which I was actually happy with. He says, oh, God, I'm a murderer. It's like, correct, you are a murderer. You killed a lot of people by doing this, actually, or at least way too many, which is more than zero. <laughs> um, the the nature of these trials... Well, that makes, him, that makes him an indirect killer. Him being a murderer is when he specifically well, chose to murder Lilia and Jen. This is this is part of where my confusion comes in. So this is all subconsciously being decided. All of these things about every one of the uh, challenges. I I think the subconscious magic is constructing the witch's road, but he is still like an agent that is participating in that construction because it's still within his control. It's so uh, like not consciously the right the writers are so case. relying on good faith for this, you know. This is like, yeah. how the fuck does this work? It, especially, so like, this trial is curious to me because it's like, they can't actually complete this trial until the uh, the other girls arrive. So... Yes, because you need one witch of each type. You need like your... So he your earth subconsciously witch, your witch, your protection witch. sent them into the mud with the intention of what? That they get to a cave, they travel through it and end up with them instead of just being with them. Like, what is that? What What's happening there? Well, he even mentioned to Agatha, like, they need more witches to do it. And she's like, nah, we got this. And I guess he, wait, but so he, like, controls. Like, whatever the challenges are that he creates, he also knows what it is that they actually need. Because, like, all of them are meant to be designed in some way around, like, facilitating, I don't know, character so, growth. But I he doesn't think, know these people. Yeah. I think there's an answer for it. What, and I think the answer mind? is that he, his construction of the Witch's Road is based off of the belief of what the like the stories are about the witch's road so that's why each challenge needs a particular witch and why his no, mind but, is constructed but, but I'm, I'm, I'm going beyond that part i'm talking about like the, the it's it like it there's a level to which like the the challenge is meant to confront them on a specific person very personal yeah thing but like he doesn't it's know each, like, most, craft. he doesn't know any of them no not just the craft like their character what the it history. is that they need to learn and grow from or, or remember like the scars and the family over. curse for for alice and stuff yeah um, I was like, how could he know any of these things? Oh, yeah, how could he know that? Well, maybe... Uh, aside from like, mm. oh, well, he can read minds. It's like, yeah. well, sure, but like, what does that how mean? How does he if know he about Lillian? Mind, what if they well, are lying uh, to themselves? And this is where I think People the writers would say, yeah. well, it's it's such a powerful magic, it like absorbed the auras and generated... You know what I mean? And you just be like, oh, oh whatever. Yeah, yeah, they would say yeah. some bullshit like the magic yeah. construct just knows itself yeah. somehow. I don't well, know. Whatever. Like, maybe like, because yeah. he's a mind reader and he and maybe the magic interacts with his mind reading to where well, it can so read the, the minds thing. of the if you were what I just said, yeah. show, <laughs> if you were writing an interesting show you could have challenges that are actually like not correct because people don't always think like your thoughts aren't necessarily accurate like that's you know what you think about yourself isn't necessarily true so could you imagine if it actually created challenges that were based on the oh, internal yeah. blog, a because story that a character like an tells objective themselves. outside observer. Exactly. It's their perceptions yeah. of themselves. Okay, exactly. yeah, that would be interesting. You and know, then they when the they whole, figure like, out at the end how come the... Versus what they need, you know, that sort of thing. That's, yeah, then at the end of like, how come the trials have been so shitty? And it's like, oh, that's why. Because it's just My... like based off a weird but perception of ourselves. Here's the thing. This is why I was talking about the, the intention, subconscious, all that sort of stuff. When Mrs. Hart slash Sharon slash whatever the fuck Mr. Shaw is dying, wouldn't we, wouldn't his subconscious, when he's desperately like tearful trying to prevent her death, would he not prevent that from happening just subconsciously as well? well that, wouldn't that... Say, like, nah, she's yeah, does his subconscious gone. disagree I... with him on that front? It's like, no, she should die. And of course, all of this is all moving beyond the point of, like, how does the magic system work to where, like, he can subconsciously create a fake set of very real trials in a mysterious, like, sort of, you know, else, they, like, different, you know, like, parallel world, basically. That's why the, um, the culpability is complicated to me, because he clearly didn't want anyone to die, but his subconscious decided that they would. That's who he tried to murder. Yeah, exactly, because, and it, it, you know... It, yeah, exactly. Pretty much. Very odd. Like that doesn't match to me. And then uh, I've and, seen and, yeah, speculation it, 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 that it's it, it, like, well, maybe he was like, like, you know what? That's the consequence. It's like, well, at that point, that sounds like a decision. Yeah, exactly. So you don't want to be doing that. And like, Can this I whole realm is made up. It's all magical, right? So does he have an ability to undo 
the events? I guess not. Mm. I guess not. Uh, yeah, it seems it, like he they creates want you a to physical. Believe. He yeah. creates a physical realm where there are physical consequences to things. You, if you die, you're dead. If you get a something happens to you, it's it's permanent. I feel like uh, what the show and the writers were attempting to do here. Um, I think why they thought this would be okay to do, and I think parallel making a parallel between because this is Wanda's son. Uh, yeah. I think they're sort of doing this thing of like what his mother did. He is doing the same thing, basically, uh, whatever that means logistically. Um, yeah, that's why he's capable of doing it and why he's doing it, essentially. I think that's what the writers think they're doing. But logistically, it's just uh, it's just as effed up as one division is. Like I said, though, I think their excuse doesn't last very long. The more you think about the difference between him and his subconscious, if if we're saying that's what built all of this, uh, they seem to be completely at odds with goals and interests. Yeah. Which is, I guess... I think if, that your subconscious can... Depending on how they can, do it, it works. Yeah, it, that can work, yeah, but I don't think this if... does. When you're at your wit's end trying to save someone's life and your subconscious kills them, that it's like, what are you trying to say? I, I guess if you believe that your if you believe the world around you is real and you don't know that your subconscious has anything to do with it, then you will just you will believe the things that the subconscious presents to you as real. You won't think that you, you'll just accept it. Like, oh, like, Sharon's dead. I wish she wasn't. Changes. But she is dead. I accept that she's dead. I believe that she is dead. It's like actively yeah. altering in real time, and you'd think his subconscious would be altering with his. Uh, emotional state and what's happening to it in real time as well. Maybe, unless it all got created at well, the start. I don't think it did, though, right? Because like the, the road changes actively while they're in it. Mm -hmm. um, that be, yeah. That would be um, too much cool of a concept to explore for them. Oh, yeah, this is writer. well beyond what... The, yeah. Oh, yeah, like, <laughs> based off of their mental states and who lives or dies, the challenges mm -hmm. change are, are just... Yeah, there's something about it where... Or he just kind of knows something and he doesn't know how he knows how to solve a challenge and that's really suspicious and weird. How did you know that? Mm -hmm. That's not intuitive, but that's all the challenges. But yeah. like, how did you know this thing? And how how is it that you just happened to discover the the solution to all of them or something like that? I don't oh, know. And, but yeah. at this point, we're just talking about a whole different show. I don't want to unravel it too far because we'll, we could just save it for later. But I was going to say, like, sure. if the Riches Road was never real, it was only a story spun by uh, Agatha... How do the how do how do the witches of the world not know it's absolutely fake? Like oh boy, we'll get to that. Yeah, okay. <laughs> We're gonna have to have a a chat after uh, after that episode uh, section. Um, but, yeah. but let's focus on this one for now because this is the one that's rated super highly that everyone thinks is good and they're wrong. So uh, yeah, the, a sword falls, a sword ceiling. Oh my goodness gracious! Every time. Um, he, he reads another card and he puts it down and the card says that actually she's telling the truth because it's like a card in a reverse position or whatever. And another sword falls behind him. So basically every time you put down a card, one of the swords on the ceiling falls down and it sticks into the floor. Um, so this is this is obviously something that you can rig to your advantage. If a sword falls, you could just stand in that spot and you're covered. You're good. There's not another sword that can fall on you. So you could just stand there or you could um, just constantly be looking up. And if the sword above you is uh, going to fall, you can just step out of the way because you're ready for it and you're prepared. Um, they stupidly are constantly always standing underneath swords uh, in empty places where swords haven't fallen. And they never are uh, yep. looking straight up to make sure they just don't behave like people would actually behave. Nope. It is More very annoying that way, Rags. Oh, well, fair enough then. Um, now, when another sword falls down, she says, actually, no, it's my turn to read your tarot cards. Um, so Agatha picks up all the cards and shuffles them up, and she says that tarot reading, it's all a con. There's no magic or still at all, uh, skill involved at all. She, I guess Agatha doesn't think that tarot card reading is real? I guess not. But it is. Doesn't think but it, it is. Like, yeah. speaks to but anything. Yeah, yeah, in, in the witch world, tarot reading is actually a thing. Very it real. can tell your future or something like that. And we're not going to get into the whole predestination blah, blah, blah thing. 
Um, but it is a thing. Tarot card reading is real. It works. It is something that a witch can use. Um, Agatha apparently doesn't believe in it. Bizarre, you'd think that she'd know all the magic stuff. Uh, everyone else seems to think it's real except for her. I don't know why. It's, uh, if um, witch communities exist, I don't know how she could think it's not real. None of this works. I don't either. It this would be, like an, sorry, it would be like an established and studied science of tarot reading. introduce not only witchcraft, but this many forms of it. We've got shit tons that are passed down through generations that have all different forms of being able to generate and benefit. It's like, this This would be known at this point. It's, you can't. And... Agatha only believes in energy balls. Yeah, that's, that's the most that's the interesting thing, man. form of magic. That's where we started in the MCU was energy balls, but now we've got like a million things. The energy balls thing was already like, excuse me. I think people mm. would have caught on to this. Mm. So if if Agatha is lying about it being um not magical and that it's a con, I have no point about what the lie is. I it, it doesn't. There's nothing to gain from it. Um. She starts slapping down cards haphazardly. Swords start falling everywhere. I have no idea what she's doing. There are swords falling every time you put a card down. One of them could be above you. In fact, one of them actually uh, falls uh, that's above Gay Kid, and he moves just at the last second as the sword drops and lands in the empty chair well, hey. um, that he was just sitting in. What do you think that means when your subconscious well, that... tries to kill you? <laughs> <laughs> I guess, well, I guess your subconscious is like, well, here are the rules. Um, yeah, fuck you. Uh, I guess. Um, so, okay, yeah, she just says that it's a numbers game, and they can keep trying to put down the right cards into the right slots on the table until the ceiling runs out of swords, or they run out of time. Um, now, obviously, mathematically, any adult should know that the possible con there's like one, two, three, four, five. I think there's seven spots, and you got a whole deck of cards. So getting them all in the correct placement, and then considering a card can be like one way or reversed, that's like a mathematically, it's not going to happen. You're not going to get the right combination. That's an insane amount of combinations for all yep. the cards to be in. She should you know that to be unspeakably lucky. Yes, which means that it could <laughs> feasibly happen in the show, I suppose. And yet, they um, continue speaking. True. Uh, they they keep yelling. They keep they're like, oh my god, uh, what are you gonna do? Blah blah blah. And they they start like yelling at each other. Um, and she says, well, we got a lot of time. Look at the hourglass. And the hourglass has actually had significant progress uh, done with it. And then she says, but but don't worry, we got a lot of time. We could just try out a lot of the combinations. And then the ceiling starts to lower. Oh no, it's like that room from Resident Evil 4. Oh my goodness, except I can't shoot the red lights on it. Um, so I, this, oh my goodness gracious. Um, it is at this point that Gay Kid says he wishes Lilia was here. Now, we cut to Lilia and Jen, who are not dead. They are alive. They were not killed when, when Gay Kid attempted to murder the two. Turns out that they just fell through the quicksand mud into a tunnel underground. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, we get weird flashbacks of all the times Lilia had these weird random outbursts um, throughout the show and the episodes. And that is supposed to be essentially her jumping into different versions of herself in the timeline. Yes. This will not, uh, don't worry, this will not make sense ever. Uh, she then jumps centuries back to Italy to her first witch lesson about tea leaves. This is the old lady that she saw in episode three, and the young girl that she saw in episode three was her as a young young Italian lass. And uh, yeah, she's jumping through time. Yep, that's uh, that's the that's why the episode's so amazing. Uh, so reveal bait I mean, is what it is. Yeah, I was gonna say I, uh, I, I, we can get to it probably at the latter portions, I suppose. The what sure, all this means, yeah. yeah. She's Sicilian, not Italian. Oh, okay, fair enough. Whatever. I don't know. I, just, I, don't, I don't know. Fair enough, but yeah. Um, uh, Lilia tells Jen that the flow of time is an illusion. Um, which it isn't. Uh, but. Uh, when she, I guess, magically it is or whatever, or get his to her, or don't think, actually, you know what, don't think about it, actually. Um, she says that when she was a kid, uh, she experienced her life out of sequence. Uh, and it's happening again, and it's getting worse. All right. Uh, yep. Lilia then appears. 
She has another one of these time jumps. She appears in the castle room with Agatha, Gay Kid, and Jen there. I... I will need someone to explain to me how this... Well, yeah, they're... they're okay. Lilia appears in the castle room with Agatha, Gay Kid, and Jen. And Lilia confronts Gay Kid... Because remember that the, like this other episode, it, it ended. Episode five ended with Gay Kid murdering or trying to murder her and Jen by by throwing them into the the quicksand, yeah. right? So she confronts Gay Kid and he reads her thoughts and tell her that he wasn't hiding his power from her. He didn't know he could do those things, and if he did know, he would have saved Alice Wu. So, um, I'm, I'm the writers, right need... like, completely cheaped out here. They said, one, he did it because he was angry, which doesn't even make sense. Like, why would he do that to them because he's angry? That doesn't... There's nothing there that matches anything. And then he what didn't know he was anything? capable of it. Like, that doesn't really help anything about why you did it or why you did it to them. But I guess it explains why he didn't help Alice. Sure. And then just... The, uh, the nature of him being like, oh, I'm sorry. And it's like, so why didn't you do anything to help them? Like, this is what I mean. I, I was just left completely confused by this. I, I guess they this need to separate them. This is a very confusing... That oh, yeah, why. this is an extremely confusing segment. Like, I had to watch this a couple times, and even then, it's like, I... The, the fact that they just like blow he, past him trying to murder the two of them, he tried to kill them. He, he mind controlled them and then try, threw yeah. them into goop that was going to drown them for all we could tell. Why? And then the answer, he was angry. That doesn't make sense. Uh, why would he be angry at them? Well, it's, yeah, it's, like, saying, it's like if he cut a tree down after it too, and then he's like, yep, yeah, because I was angry. It's like, no, that you can do, uh, anger makes you do things, but you still have to have motivations. <laughs> well, that makes more sense. Like he's letting out his, he's venting out physical aggression onto a, onto a tree instead of hurting a person. Like that makes he, more sense. He like cut down a bunch of trees and, ma and made like a shack, you know, like a little. Oh, like he constructed a log cabin. <laughs> yeah, and it's like, yeah, I was angry. Like, I don't, why did it manifest in creating? Why did it manifest? In this yeah, project, right. You can make right? that um, <laughs> argument for tossing people. You could be like, it's get. I'm expressing. It's like, no, no, no. Why that action? You can do any action to express anything, but like, what? Why? And if someone said, like, I'm a fucking woodsman, generally, I, like, fucking chop it down trees, I express myself, or something, it would be unnecessary. Well, people, people will punch in adamant objects and stuff to the Absolutely, yeah. That's one way to do it. That... There are so many ways to express anger, it's rare that you would attack people exactly. who you have no it's issue with people. at all. Yeah, it, it's... I mean, not only does he do it, they let him off the hook. I don't. Which, I don't murderer. get it. Other than yeah, it's surreal. The writers were really they, awful at getting these guys separated. They needed them separated yeah, for a the, little bit. The reality of the situation that the writers desperately want you to not think about is that there are multiple murderers in this show that just get to get away with it, and they do not get really punished in any meaningful way for it. If in fact they get rewarded for it, um, Gay is Kid is gay? one of those characters. Gay Kid is a murderer. He is a he is a moral monster. He tried to kill two innocent people, and they seem to just be well, okay with this. And remember, like he knew, as in he knew their fate and was sorry when he saw them again. But there was no like, oh man, I killed them. You know, there was no, there was no that didn't happen. No remorse or any yeah. attempt to reverse what he had done. No, like, like it that. just doesn't. It's like, right? What are you doing? What are you doing? What's happening? Yeah, I, I would legitimately like to ask them what I'm supposed to think about him trying to murder the two. Uh, the right, uh, this show and One Division share writers, right? Cause yeah, same, same uh, show they, they, they might need to be in investigated a little bit, because this is just... Marvel staff, Disney staff, <laughs> just everybody, this the whole is crew. This up. It is it just is a really strange moral. um pattern with Recurring, a lot of modern stories. Yeah, Not just that they're poorly written for cause and effect. We get a lot of stuff that's like, oh, how lucky for them that this thing happened. But then you get some bizarre stuff where you're just like, oh, that's just evil. <laughs> like, what are you doing? Why are you doing yeah. evil? And the uh, the reverse well, it, happens too, where they have evil characters do good things, and we're like confused. Uh, I, thing with Ralph, just like this is just cruel yeah. for no reason. Yeah, imagine if I, uh, like, the, the, the real-world equivalent of it is, like, me slitting two people's throats 
And then someone going, well, it's okay, she was angry. Well, yeah, you wanted Forget to get your it. fake kids back. Sorry about it. Yeah. Aww. It's fine. So, um, yeah, this is very confusing uh, how Lilia confronts gay kid here and what I'm supposed to take away from this. Um, uh, she says that, oh, hey, I remember you. You're the kid from the bar mitzvah. I was doing a reading for you. Uh, so she asks uh, what went wrong. Uh, and Gay Kid says that she seemed pretty on point about the um, tarot reading from the bar mitzvah. However, uh, explicitly it was stated, and we are led to believe, uh, pretty, I mean explicitly is a good word to use, that uh, Gay Kid does not remember anything that happened before the crash, which would be Lilia and the tarot reading. But he says that she seemed pretty on point with her tarot card reading. Holy so they shit. even fuck that up. That. So, oh well, you think that... I mean, I would say you'd catch that in a rough draft, but I don't even see how that makes it into the rough draft. I mean, he doesn't mm -hmm. know... He doesn't know anything that happened before the accident. But I guess he knows this. Uh, uh, okay. Uh, uh, mm, uh, oh, well. Either the writers are idiots or he's he's also a liar. A very big <laughs> one at that. I think that uh, I think the writers are idiots because he didn't yeah. even remember his own like room, his own photographs, his family, his house, anything like that. So they just didn't yeah. care to check for this sort of thing. Nope. So, yeah, that's a bit of a fuck up, writers. Uh, that kind of defeats one of the whole points of what happened. Um, anyway, um, she, um, Lily, uh, but yeah, Lily is the one who put the sigil on Gay Kid, as we talked about it before. And the reason she said that she did that, she tells him the reason I did that was because, because of the reading, she says um, uh, she knew he, who he was and who he would become and that he would need time. Yeah, so, makes sense. unprompted, she cast a hex on him that would make it impossible for him to tell other people that he was really Billy Maximoff yeah, or, William, uh, or William Kaplan. It's good this random person just decided to alter his life this significantly for a reason she decided yeah. was right. So, He's a good character. I have I've legitimately baffled what a bizarre, weird thing to do mm -hmm. to someone. I don't know. Also, they're cool. They're they're cool, by the way. Remember the murder that he they're tried cool to kill her the other episode? Yep, they're they're cool now. They're all cool. No one minds. No one no no one minds. It like legitimately it has been forgotten. Like it it did didn't ever happen at all. The writers don't want you to know about it or think about it. Um so um, a bunch of swords start falling from the ceiling, so I guess they have to, like, hurry up or something. I don't know. I don't know why the swords bother falling to indicate you no. need to hurry up when the ceiling is already coming down to kill you. Yeah, it's... I don't it's get it very either. Strange. I guess just to create a few more smaller action an reveals. Extra, like, Ooh, yeah, ah. yeah, an extra bit of timer, even though the ceiling falling is already timer, and also you have a literal, uh, like, a literal hourglass that's spinning, I oh. guess. I don't know. Well. What's the point of the hourglass? You'd think that the ceiling coming down would yeah. be pretty strongly implied to be the uh the, the timekeeping. Um yeah, so uh so uh Lily so it, this is really hard to explain. Lily skips around in time more and she appears back in Italy, Sicily, wherever it is, and her teacher asks uh but she appears like as her adult self, her current adult self. And her teacher from centuries ago asks um, if you have a coven, because a witch requires a coven. And uh, um, Lillian says that it's she hasn't had good luck with covens, so it's better for her to be a hermit and a fraud than to have one. And the teacher says that you're not supposed to control your powers, but to see. Okay, hmm. Lilia time skips again back into the tunnel with Jen, where they went through the quicksand. And uh, she randomly stumbles across the magic book that Gay Kid dropped with the spells when they were on the the brooms. It's just here in the tunnel. Yeah, which why is, not? I I don't know why it's in the tunnel if they if they dropped it while they were flying on did their it. 
broomstick. Okay, well, there we go. Moving right along. Um, they reach the end of this underground tunnel, and that leads to the castle room with the swords with everybody else, because it does. All right. Yep. That's all right. There you go. Connected them back together. Mm -hmm. That's convenient. Expertly uh, done. Yes, excellent work. Lilia says <laughs> that they have to do a tarot reading for Gay Kid. Uh, they all start to bicker and squeal and nag at each other. Um, and, and when Gay Kid asks if he, uh, she's like, hey, you need to ask a question. You need to ask a question. And everyone's like, ah, you can't do that. Blah, oh, blah, blah, yeah. blah. Everyone's just nagging and bitching. And I'm like, holy shit, everyone shut the fuck up and let her do the thing. It doesn't so make you don't sense. Die. Like, they know very well at this point that their attempts to just fuck around have not worked. And then they actually have a witch who knows how this bullshit works walk into the room and then they start telling her to just do random shit like no just let her do it are you stupid everyone in the show is stupid the, yeah, answer, the is answer, yes. answer is yes mm -hmm. the answer is yes they're also terrible they're terrible people mm -hmm. yes they're either moral monsters stupid or both often both <laughs> and now Lillian is unfortunately on that list for unprompted casting magical hexes on other people that will uh, determine uh, their path in life, of which they had no clue of. Um, but I guess she, whatever, knew to do it because of time magic. I don't know. Um, so, uh, she says, all right, Gay Kid, you need to ask a question, an important question. And Gay Kid asks if he's Billy or Tommy. And the, the ceiling stops uh, falling down. And Lilia explains tarot board stuff like what all the placements are supposed to mean the subject it's like a journey and a travel and the cards mean shit blah 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 don't give a shit all right don't care um mm -hmm. they play cards in the reading one by one and she explains what the cards are supposed to mean and then she puts them down into the spots and no swords or anything fall as she puts the cards down i guess she's she's doing it correctly i guess so um, um but then they play cards in the reading, and swords do fall. Oh my gosh, wait a second, this is not right. I thought I was doing it correctly, but no. Swords do fall around them as she plays cards. Um, Lilia then skips around in time again to when she arrived in the tunnel with Jen, and they hide from the Salem Seven, who just are kind of in the tunnel. Remember the Salem remember Seven? The Salem Seven. The evil. <laughs> remember the Salem Seven? The spooky, the spooky evil ring wraith they witches are who are like, ah, amusing. we're going to get you. Uh, this was almost like a jump scare, but in the worst way possible of like, oh my God, characters that were in the show. I remember, uh, I think. Yeah. A while. They're just here in the tunnel and they hide behind some barrels and the Salem Seven walk by. Yep, there they go. All right. Goobering along. That's that scene. Um, it's so funny. Yeah. Uh, now that I Lilia... think about it. Yeah. Sorry. The fact that those Salem Seven are like antagonized by the show, even though objectively, I don't think they've done anything either bad or worse that than our they... main protagonists. Oh, you're saying like they well, presented they, the as... reason they exist is because of Agatha. They are like the children of the witch's coven that the, Agatha yeah. like killed. They're trying to They're... avenge their parents. Yes, from the evil Agatha, because Agatha is an evil psycho Yeah, we'll murderer. talk about that when we the get to the end. The worst they did is look a bit insidious. Well, and move yeah. in, in uh, stop motion sometimes, or whatever. Low I frame suppose. rate. Very poor, tragic characters that happen to look dark and evil. <laughs> I don't even I know why yeah. they yeah. look like that. <laughs> I don't know, because we need this... an antagonist for the protagonist, yeah. even though the protagonist is a terrible awful murderous awful human being which we'll get to it, it just screams in this very sort of like lizardy way of like we need more tension of some kind uh i don't know ring wraiths are cool yeah are because the killer trials aren't enough oh yeah um, we need something else someone said in uh billy didn't make the trials he made the road the road made the trials in the same way that if you make a cow and the cow makes milk the the milk comes from the cow the show is still crap uh, i disagree that means he made the trials if he made the road, yeah, he made the he trials. He subconsciously created I mean, the yeah, road. Obviously. If he made a cow yeah. and that squirted out milk, he made the milk. Yeah. Uh, so. Uh, Lilia asks Jen after the Salem Seven walk by. Eh, they just walk by. Um, and that segment's complete. Lilia asks Jen to join her for the tarot reading instead of leaving. Because in the tunnel, there's a random, like, pathway that leads to a subway station. 
that Jen says is just the exit to the road and she could just leave now if she wants to. Which definitely wouldn't be what I would consider to be like a trap or a, or like a, a temptation or anything. But I guess it's supposed to be this random chance for Jen to leave on the road for some I'd, reason. I'd love to know how they came to know how this works. I don't know, mm. man. I'm just going to explain to you what happens for a lot of this episode. Yeah. And, and we'll just... <laughs> But yeah, but Lily and Jen go together through the tunnel to get to the end, to the castle room. Uh, and back at the castle room, Lillian realizes that it's not, uh, the reading isn't for gay kid, it's for her. She has to do her own reading. Okay. All right. Um, she discovers this because of reasons. Uh, the querent <laughs> is the person who's like the subject of a tarot reading. It's actually her. It's not Gay Kid. She puts cards down one by one, and as she does, this time, no swords fall at all. Um, all of the cards that she puts down are supposed to, like, represent each of the other people in the show. Um, Sharon and Jen and Agatha and Gay Kid. Because there was like a sim there was like one scene in a show where like a similar symbol to them was in the background or whatever, and the card is like, yeah, it's them, it's whatever. Um, Lilia goes back into the tunnel, right? She time skips back into the tunnel and she sees Rio. Rio is death. Ooh. Yep, oh, Rio is really? death. Like, right. conceptually, she is, like, the character who's in charge of death in this universe, or at least another one of them. Um, she's very cringe and is probably one of the lamest depictions of death I've ever seen in ev anything ever. Uh, but we'll get to that later. The pop uh, figures it spoiled it. I'm so on. sorry. The cringe, the, the cringe keeps piling up. Uh, but Lillian tells human? them... Uh, it's a good question. I saw the uh, uh, the the question was developing, and I think it's just interesting to quickly talk about it. The nature of so people were saying so. Um, if Tony creates Ultron, then Ultron creates minions. Did Tony create minions? And in that case, Ultron's an AI. He's an intelligence. He's an he's, yeah. He's, he's an agent acting. He yeah. makes his own decisions. In the same way that if a parent makes a child and a child makes a fucking splatter of spaghetti on the floor, the child did that. However, the parent is responsible. Tony is responsible for Ultron. That's what the story is about, of course. But in this case. You'd have to then argue that he made the road, and the road is like its own agent, and he created it, which uh, actually makes me wonder further of what the fuck are the limits of his powers. Exactly. If he's able to create like a alternate reality that can like create these magical trials, and he can do that without even intending and it to, can, do it. Like, like he didn't even know that he fully did function it. autonomously. It doesn't even require him. Yeah, like yeah, holy they're... shit. We can have a discussion about like his like how responsible he is on like any sort of moral or technical level and stuff like that. The show certainly doesn't really give yeah, that yeah. much thought until the very end for like two seconds. But it's just any amount of thought that you really give it is not is probably more than the show does, even though it's kind of the backbone of the entire blueprint that this TV series is. Um, but yeah, Lillian tells them that Rio is death. She is the original Green Witch. Wow. All right. Yep, because Rio's just okay. been gone for a while and no one has really mentioned Why would this be a meaningful oh. reveal? Who cares? Yeah. I, oh, and I don't give, I don't that's give what shit. so much of the episode is. It's just being told things. There was also, even, um, like, just in terms of how the puzzle works. Yeah, just before that, we is. had the, like, the reveal of all of the life events matching the cards imagery, which I thought was, like, that's not interesting or clever because you just reverse engineered it. You just made everything match it yourself. Exactly. Yeah, like said, what, yeah. at this one what, point, we'll what, what is meant to make card. you go, "Oh wow!" Like what? What do they think it actually is? You can play it with dramatic music and yeah. sweeping shots and as much as you want, but like, what is actually happening here? It's just she's summarizing what happened with little cards that you could make that match the events. What's the reveal? There's nothing. It's just. It's just. It's a, ooh, because yeah. This. This. I believe is a praised moment of like of reveal, reveal, is, reveal, reveal, and it's like okay. Yeah, but but what are the reveals? The reveals that hey, there's a card that has the thing that happened. What's the reveal? Yeah. What is the reveal? That's what I'm wondering. I think she says like, oh yeah, that's what I needed. I needed a coven. It's like well, yeah, obviously. Like everybody, what what all of the characters need and want is like obvious. There's no reveal. It's not a reveal for the character to know what's really obvious to everybody watching, uh, being what, you know, what it is that they need. 
But if it's rapidly cut together with like sweeping orchestral music, then it makes people I mean, think stuff that is happening. Fire. Stuff is happening. And oh my god! With the whole idea of like, oh, there's the gimmick. She's going backward and forward, and it's like, yeah, give some thought to how much sense that makes. Why, why the the trials even work in this way when you add on the information that it was all created by Billy anyway? Oh yeah, that makes it even. Like, they, they all get taken in isolation, but like none of the rules or the mechanics or the systems that have to facilitate any of these payoffs are given any thought. It's like it's only what's happening on a moment-to-moment -moment basis is what's being considered when people talk about why they like the story. It's annoying. Um, someone mentioned it's about the interpretation of her own life. It's right there. I don't know how that addresses anything we just said. Um, <laughs> In any yeah, way. What, yeah, what so interpretation? What interpretation? She's summarizing the, the events. Yes, this is the stating of her own life, not the interpretation of it. And to mm -hmm. say it's her life, is re it's really just the people in that room with her. Well, yeah, yeah. I, I, I just don't know what that... What does that change about anything we just said? I don't, I don't know. Exactly. Why um, does that make it a cool, amazing yeah. reveal? Why does that make know. this show a 9.5 out of 10? Or I'm this no episode? Expert, but I would be... Like, it would not be difficult at all to convince me that they're cheating the tarot cards as well. Like, Probably. they're not doing it quote-unquote I don't know properly. anything about tarot, I, I, yeah. but... First off, doesn't, first off they're working in suits, like which is a, weird. Um, it, I don't really like, know if my, that's a thing. I don't know shit about these, like, tarot or whatever or how it works, but, like, something that, in, in terms of the way that it's presented in this, couldn't it just easily be said that, like, you as a person can really, like, stretch to find ways of, of ascertaining meaning yes. from, yes. from these things? Yes. Like, that even, that like, there she might even done be anything. something worthwhile to explore there, that any card, she could be like, okay, so this is like a mm -hmm. horse tap dancing. Um, mm, oh, oh, th there was a movie I watched once, <laughs> and, it made, and I really enjoyed it, where, where somebody was tap dancing, and there was also a horse in the movie. Sweet, put that one down, sweeping well, yeah, she music. Draws a Obviously, fish, I'm exaggerating. Like, fish out of water, I, I, and yeah. then just do something, you're like, mm -hmm. okay, a dinosaur. It represents yeah, exactly. an ancient life snuffed out before it could... You know, like, just shut up. <laughs> that's what, that's reason kind of why... what I'm getting at, is it feels like there's something that you could work with there. The idea that people are so desperate for meaning that they could grasp... Like it, it, it really silly yeah, for the record, kind of event. To I am fine. Ascertain meaning. I'm fine with it as a concept of like something people do, and it could, it could be in stories for sure, hundred percent. I'm talking about why is this impressive as writing? Exactly, mm -hmm. it's nothing. Because why? Why? Like... Why does this make this episode as good as Ozzy Mandis? <laughs> what? <laughs> What they're trying to do here is that, oh, big surprise, because, like, you remember in the first episode when she screamed for no reason? Yeah. That you didn't have context for. Now you have context for that. Yeah, but Isn't how, that how is a viewer crazy? You meant to understand, like, oh, yeah, she can see time in a non-linear way. Why would that be anything that you could reasonably conclude based on what you saw? Like, I don't know. Right, I feel like that's it's the, just... That's the weird explanation, it's, it's, it's I guess. It needs to be something that okay. you can do something with, you know? Like... Mm -hmm. Anyway, <laughs> yeah, it's like saying, "Oh, actually, she had this really weird power all along that just does weird stuff." Mm -hmm. That's it. It's just saying you, we're gonna. It, it's all it says. This is the ending. Here's how we're gonna reverse engineer it. There's no skill mm -hmm. in that. It's just remembering to put the pieces to like different puzzle throw... pieces that don't even come together. Well, and that if you throw the information at people fast enough and dramatically enough, people that looks will like mistake that. That looks like that. For... that looks like that. That looks like yeah. that. I was here and, when and I said this. And that it will be mistaken for really good writing. Yeah. Which, by the way, the reason that tarot cards are like a fun thing in the real world is that they are they are like like as was, was mentioned horoscopes and zodiac signs mm -hmm. and that kind of thing. They're so broad, and because mm -hmm. they like if you if you look up online what the there's like seventy. 80 however many of them they all have each card has two meanings and they're very broad and like everyone's mm -hmm. life is full of different things that every card will apply to it's it's just horoscope stuff and it's like it's just like a fun little goofy ah he, 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 yeah this like, isn't this isn't yeah. criticism of tarot yeah. cards this is criticism of how they've yeah. applied it to storytelling it, the and way we're not even... the reason yeah go ahead no i it, it was just uh, the reason they're fun is because, like, legitimately, you can project onto them, basically. You can... Yeah. Anyone yes. could project onto them. And it's really... In real life, the reason why it's fun is because it tries... It, it actually makes you understand things about yourself, or it makes you think 
it's like a diary really just uh your subconsciousness and stuff like, it's like that a vehicle you know for yeah <laughs> interpretation yeah sure yeah you just it's... you take your time through this activity to understand what your brain is going through and i think that's such a cool like a, a tool for storytelling and it could be used in so many fun ways but this is this is just so contrived and stupid especially when it comes to like witchery and magic but the man the pictures match stuff that happened in life they match look at them Matching. if this if something as simple as this in terms of story construction makes this show incredibly good then i mean like all shows are good pretty much like this is just like a super basic fundamental kind of thing that they didn't even do well but they dazzle they dazzle you with bullshit and it works. the actually good shows must oh, be oh well yeah. we haven't even gotten to the biggest dazzle yet uh, the the part that everybody oh, celebrates this episode for which i am aware of i can't wait it's going to be great to talk about what the fuck is so meaningful about it if anything at all we're almost there now. um all right so lilia tells him Rio's death oh my goodness gracious um and these original green witch and she completes the tarot reading, and then um, a door opens up on the uh, a door opens up on the wall, and they could leave to go to the next trial. And they all start to shuffle out. Lillian tells Agatha that when mm. Rio calls her a coward, she should hit the deck. How would okay. she know that? Because she skips through time. Wait, how does but she know that? She wasn't <laughs> there. <laughs> she wasn't there. She was dead. How does she, she know that? Dead. She wouldn't she, know that. Not she can not only see her own future, she can see other people's futures. Shut up, it makes oh, sense. Oh, shit. Divination. Right. Even though she would Pretty be good. dead, she, but it, shut up. Yeah, shut up, not shut a tarot up, shut up, it's card. fine, it works great. A, look, tarot cards are, by design, not specific, so I have no clue how she would know that. It's You're great. Right. If she, she, the whole, whole thing is that she skips around to herself in different points in time. Remember, she, she could see she the know? future of gay kids, so no, she could see everyone's futures randomly when it's plot related. Oh, okay. That's just something she can also mm. do. Um, all right. Well, awesome. Uh, God. Maybe she was a spooky ghost watching. at that point. She was off screen and she Maybe. Yeah, there maybe you go. it, it was actually maybe she was Bly Manor and <laughs> she was a ghost <laughs> all along and all right, anyway, she gives Gay Kid his magic book back, the one that she found in the tunnel because he dropped it when he was flying mm -hmm. in the air on the broom that she found in the tunnel, of course. Um, and, uh, and then everyone goes through except her, except Lillian. She stays behind. She stays oh behind. Goodness. She closes the door. Uh, and the Salem Seven come to get her. <gasps> I just want to point out. But um, she... I forget her name, but the the last witch to leave. No, that's not her. Could definitely have stopped her from yeah. closing those doors, and she just doesn't. Well, it's the same thing with Gay Kid getting tied up. Yeah, it's, 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 well, what I like about stop. it is she goes, no, and it's like, well, you going to do anything? And it's like, normally, no. <laughs> yeah, normally screaming no carries with it the implication of physical action. Yeah. Right? You know? Anyway. It's a funny thought to be like, oh, I can't do anything. I'm screaming no. That is my action. My turn is now yeah, over. Yeah, that's my turn's up, yeah. Uh, yeah, matter. Lilia stays behind. The Salem Seven come to get her because they really want to kill Lilia for some reason? I don't know. I guess they'll um, settle. However... The Salem Seven got <laughs> fucked here. <laughs> oh, well, yeah, so what happens is she flips the tower card, the tarot card. There's a tower. The yeah. tower. She turns it upside down because each tarot card is like a the proper version and a reverse version, which means like a, an inverse thing to it. So when she flips the tower card over, the whole room like flips upside down. Yeah. And then all of the Salem Seven fall onto the swords that are now the floor. And then Lilia falls just, on the sword. So tells like, you, what was the point of that? Tells <laughs> you everything you need to know about what they want to do um, with tarot here. It's like a tower yeah. and you turn it upside down. And it turns and the, the tower, tower upside down. Like... It's not about like potential like no. imagery and conceptual meanings embodied within a particular card that can or have that each like, tarot two card. They can... You could do things with it, and it has effects or anything they like can... that. It's just mm -hmm. very explicitly transform into creatures that have flight. 
Yeah, yes. turn into birds and fly. <laughs> One of them dumb, specifically yeah, has dumb, to be a raven. Dumb fucking writers. How did you forget the one thing they can do? Transform into animals but also, like, Why were they even in this story? They didn't do How shit. How did they get into this room? How are they here? Why are they here? Why are they even part of this story? They show up in episode two and don't really do anything. They just kind of like punch Show up in episode one. And then they show up in episode don't five they? to just sort of like... Well, I'm just saying in terms of any actions they take. The only action they take is essentially they rush them into the them for a little bit. I mean, is it and safe then to this say, is the end of them. Is it safe to say that they were created specifically to cause Lilia's death? I I guess so. Which is so much. bizarre well, thematically that. because they have nothing to do with each other, Lilia and these people. Yeah, they're, they're, they're also just to be clear for everyone, action. they're done. Yeah, that's it. They're, that's the end. they're no longer and, part of the story. And, they're done here. Baffling, like, they're what was the point? They showed up a couple of times to make them run away, and then this is it. They're done. I think they only exist to, like, have a lower frame rate and look evil to <laughs> distract the audience that our how evil our protagonists actually are. Cause, I guess, maybe, yeah. You know, audience is stupid. If we see someone who looks evil and acts evil, we're not gonna. We're not gonna notice how terrible our main characters are in comparison because we're just stupid like that. Doesn't this feel though like they they remembered while they were writing this episode about the Sailor Seven? They're like, oh shit, what were we doing with them? It's like I I don't remember what were we doing with them. Like, I don't know. I thought you were doing something with them. It's like I don't know. Kill them. It really does feel a lot. To me, like they did just they they put in an antagonistic force because they figured I guess we need one other yeah. than the traps and stuff, and then here they just cashed them out for a moment because mm -hmm. yeah that'd be neat I guess. Mm -hmm. it's, it's the dumbest so, shit. Man. Well, yeah. and, and that's not it. That's not the only problem, of course, because because Lilia dies as well, and so you might be sort of asking yourself, okay. So that was her plan, was to lock the door behind him and to sacrifice herself to take out these guys so that she's protecting her coven. That's the interpretation that the whole world of Agatha fans have. So like three people, obviously, is, is very excited about mm -hmm. this. I think it's a very great sacrificial moment. It's, it's so good. But first, of course, question I had was like, what of Betty? Uh, how did Lilia know that anything like this would work this way? There's, there's so many questions. She yeah. says, like, oh, all the traps, uh, sorry, all the trials, they'll kill you once once you complete them. It's like, oh, so why did you stay? You could have just had them die anyway. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Why, so, like, why, why would you, you need to be again, there? And then, of course, you'd be like, well, because she needs, she knows that she had to flip the card. It's like, so that it doesn't do it automatically. You have to cause it. Even though that's not how it worked in the other places, No, it's right? not. Like, if you didn't do shit, then that was just the end. And also, yeah, it would have been really awkward if they all flew away and then she lost her grip and it was like, so oh, that was, so this was obviously the, the next question is that <laughs> she should know, much like the rest of them, the, the Salem Seven are capable of fucking flight. Yeah, so this so... wouldn't work. Maybe only one of them can turn into a crow? I thought that we saw an owl in a prior episode as well as a crow. Okay, only it like she'd only get five of them. <laughs> There'd be two left. Also, like, maybe there's like a spell that you can even cast that just makes you, like, float. You know, yeah, you'd think. Be, well, there is, right. there is. We they see that later. Well, you'd you think they'd have. Time. They may very well have broomsticks later. Agatha, they... Wait, Agatha. Couldn't Agatha fly? Oh yeah. Did uh, she like? Sorry, fly when she I was talking on. about. I was talking about a different form of flight. Rags was referring yes to the the levitation that we just see casually. For most flying, witches yeah. have. <laughs> Most yeah. it's a very common witch thing. We see There's all witches do this. Level one power. Yeah, level one. So. I, I don't understand, like, like this was just incredibly retarded from Lilia. She's like, I'm gonna get them with gravity. Granted, there's swords, but you understand what I'm saying. <laughs> and what, this has a, this has a 9.5 on IMDb. Well, so this is what I'm getting at. Every mechanical Shit. element of this, as per the writing, so the motivations and the history of the, the enemies and the hero and the locking of the people getting out, everything has something wrong with it. She was not stopped when she easily would have been. She wouldn't have decided to do this. It doesn't make any sense. She would never think this mm -hmm. plan would work. The Salem Seven should not have died from this. And then thematically, it makes no sense to end this story this way. What is the value of this? Also, yeah, how did she bugs? know? How did she know that this would kill them? Did we see her skip? Because what we, I think, what I saw was ju her just falling. Just falling, yeah. She wouldn't know that Salem Seven would be there, and that would cause their death. 
Unless she we, saw it in didn't... the future, she skipped to How it. To... But why didn't we see her mm. like see that? It, that's a very crucial information. Well, so they cheat too because the opening visual is her in like the abyss. Yeah, that's right. But like, but she's clueless the whole time, like before that. So, well, there's that work, you know? there's a weird question here about not only her life but by implication everyone's lives that everything is predetermined. Which we already, I mean, yeah. thanks to Loki, yeah, we know that that's say, the yeah. case. Mm -hmm. yeah. But this is like She's a just separate... a TVA this is, member. Yeah, this is just like a separate layer of predetermination that you're going to skip around in time to all of these things without even a question so, to, can I change it? Um, are these things that can happen or things that are destined to happen? Can I act against well, them? Because she just goes along with everything that happens. Makes yeah, no attempt single, to actually change anything for the better. Every single show or film or whatever that approaches this sort of thing they always if they feel inclined to address it whatsoever they always bitch out at the end and say you know nothing set in stone some fucking yeah, yeah, hell yeah. especially Despite after the everything that they've that said yeah be the case really things appear very much to be set in stone that's why most things are like oh this is a potential future this Instead could happen of, yeah. if events carry on but if you act differently then it will of course Im do different things based um, on what you do. What were all those futures strange so? What were I, they? I have seen um uh the assessment of this scene being one of the greatest in the MCU. Uh mm. what, what's funny is my response will probably be something along the lines of I think this might be the worst moment in the series so far in terms of a collective just fuck up. Like the writers fucked up so hard with all the different elements all at once. Mm -hmm. And you're knocking out a main character, you're knocking out uh, seven antagonists, and you're bending all of the rules for, it, well, breaking all of the rules for everything. So it's, it, it's just funny to me, because I was like, fuck, that was terrible. And then it's like, no, it was the best thing ever. Like, uh... Breaking rules is doing it a kindness by implying they had rules to break. You know what's really annoying is, because uh, when I watched this episode, all I thought is, this will be the one that people say is really good. I like I just mm -hmm. I just knew that that was going to be the case. Yeah. Like a lot of as soon as I there. ended, I'm like, ah, th this will be this will be the episode that will be viewed as being the the really good one in this show. And I think it's starting to annoy me that the reason why that's the case is basically because of like cinematography. I feel like that's all you need. You need to have an episode where you have some shots that are like, oh, that's kind of interesting. Never mind the writing, and like you'll be fine. It's, uh, like, it's the shot, right, of her, like, falling down into the, you know, and it's all, yeah. it's, it's darkness surrounding her. That's what, it's like, ah, yeah, that, that on Twitter, yeah, shit, people, people really like that one. I, I'm getting annoyed by how predictable it is in terms of, like, what will essentially garner a good response, which is bombard people with information. Like, just throw mm -hmm. a bunch of information at them, throw in some shots that look kind of interesting, and you're good. You're done. Like, that's it. Mission accomplished. You have created a really good episode of television. It's well, like, oh, un damn. Un All right. Unfortunately, for the analysis, there's actually one horrifying thing that happens before we cut to the next episode. Um, Do it. This is. All right. So Lilia falls uh, down, and it's implied that she falls onto the swords and dies as well. We then see her sitting down at the table for her very first lesson in Italy once more. Um, she, Lilia will never die. She is stuck in a time loop forever, experiencing the same things over and over and over in her life. She's trapped in her own existence, for lack of a better phrase. She experiences her life out of sequence. Um, the fact that she could die, or at least fall on the swords, and still experience herself as a young girl sitting down with her teacher uh, those centuries ago um, to get her first lesson in witchery means that she is stuck forever in an endless cycle of the same life and the same moments over and over and over, and she cannot change them. Lilia's existence is a living, waking nightmare, uh, an eternal hell from which she cannot escape. There is I no can... end for Lilia. She cannot die. She will simply continue to experience her own life in a myriad of different times and uh, and places. Like that game Death Loop, if the campaign were like three hundred years. I don't. Um, I sounds like something. Was the, the day hmm. repeats over and over and over, right? It's like Groundhog well, the, Day, video game. They they play it as if it's like supposed to be 
lovely and meaningful, like she's sitting down to her first lesson, like it was all leading to this. But by what they have shown us and by what they have told us and by what we've been explained, she's just going to experience everything forever, over and over and over. She'll never die because there's always going to be a version of her in a in some time where she is alive to experience things. So that's fucking terrifying. And it's probably the worst fate of any character in this show. But I'm just going by the rules of what they told us. So uh, it's not a bittersweet ending like they probably wanted us to think. It's a, a living, waking, it's eternal already... nightmare for her. It's already really sad because the people trying to avenge their parents were all killed by someone who they don't even understand or know, and that person killed themselves to kill them, and this is all because of Agatha to being save, an asshole. Agatha. Yeah. And to save her, you know? That's what she did. Like, she having the 7v1 everyone dies in order to save Agatha because she killed their parents. I don't understand why the show wants me to be happy about this. Yeah, like, I... I don't, I don't know. It's a pretty it's, tremendous it's, loss that's for the show. It's 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 really odd. Um, I don't get it. I don't I don't get I don't get the overall objective of this show. I suppose, hence the is... unhinged label for, uh, well, for the, the writing. When we get to the end, we could maybe I can I'll ask y'all if you like what the main theme or message of the show is, and we'll see, I'll see what silly answers y'all give me. <laughs> um. But uh, that yeah, that's episode seven. Who down? The really good one. Uh, and also, all a, right, a, a, it's all uphill from here. A follow up to the here. um, I don't even know what topic this is considered, but the uh, the road nature. He said uh, that wasn't my point. He didn't need to know the other witches for their trials, but he's still responsible. Sorry for the delayed response. Show is still bad. Um. I think that the, we, they want us to think he did construct it based on knowledge of them, right? Like the skin care I, I candle so. stuff. It's just that that's the point we're making is, uh, first of all, I don't believe the road itself was a construction he made and then it acted on its own afterward. Because I agree he would still be responsible, of course, but like what I, well, it's, he would be responsible in a very specific and not typical responsible way. What I'm getting at is, uh, like what Fringy said, that there's, there's knowledge he would have to have that he couldn't possibly have. And if then yeah. that means that the road acts as an, a sort of AI, a magical AI that can draw out of you after he's created it uh, and construct a world and challenge set that are real, at this point, it's like he's fucking incredibly powerful. Um, and I'm not sure that's what the show is going for, but to be honest with you, I don't know what the show is going for because I don't think it makes sense. Down the road. Well, Down the witch's road. That, that was the good one. So now we can move to episode eight. Follow me, my friend, to glory at the end. There will be no glory at the end of this, EFAP. It will be <laughs> sadness and wailing and grinding of teeth. Uh, back at the cabin from the episode of where they were in the cabin. Uh, woo. Remember Wu? Alice Wu? She died sort of trying to protect people and Agatha sucked out her power and killed her. Agatha killed yeah. Alice Wu. Um, and Remember that was... Alice murdered one of them in front of everybody else? And that was something kind of you talk about it? could have said was left vague, but it really wasn't. Uh, they all decided pretty quickly that she killed her. And then she didn't yep. really deny that. So that is... Yeah, you're right. That is that is a kill from Agatha. Um, yes. On a person who was trying to save her. One of her many. Yes. She yep. she took an opportunity to steal the power and therefore kill the person who was trying to save her from possession. True. That's yep, true. Yep, yep. One of her many, many murders. So, uh, Alice Wu awakes when uh, a hand brushes along her face and she gets up and she looks normal and she notices her body, her desiccated body from where Agatha murdered her on the floor. Rio is there because Rio is deaf. Um, Rio says, all right, you're dead. Let's, uh, time to go. And, uh, Wu is pretty, you know, upset, as one might be. She's looking at her body. Uh, she is very upset because she has just broke, remember, at the time, she had just broken a curse that had been on her for her entire life. Mm -hmm. A curse that her mother essentially dedicated an entire song and a, a huge amount of effort to ensuring that there was some way to ward off the curse, um, for her daughter. 
Uh, it is a legitimately tragic thing that right after she breaks the and curse that has been be haunting avenged. her life. Oh, yep, don't worry. She will not be avenged. She will not be avenged. Uh, death, and by death I mean the writers try to tell us how it's actually okay because she died protecting someone. Yep. Which um, I thought was hilarious she, uh, that they tried to pull that. She died protecting someone who killed her. The person who killed her, yep. It felt like they actually had uh, to just is... not mention that part, because it obviously completely undercuts any meaning you could possibly have. This was just tragic and cruel. Yes, it is tragic and cruel. Um, if Wu, as far as a character goes, if you if you remove all the bad general writing stuff that applies to all the characters, Wu's not like a bad... doesn't seem to be like a bad She's person the least or anything. Of them all. Yes. She seems to be a fairly normal-ish kind of person. And this um, is her reward. Meanwhile, the evilest one of all receives the greatest rewards <laughs> throughout yeah, the entire well, uh, thing. Naturally. But yeah, so Wu's dead. She's very upset. Ryo says that you're a protection witch. She died protecting the person who killed you. Uh, she says it's time to go. So they walk through a spooky green door and they go into the netherworld or the beyond or whatever's supposed to happen to you. And if you're... If you're a witch when you die, I guess this is what happens to you. And again, there's many, many competing afterlives. Like if you die in Wakanda, <laughs> you go to a different place. If you're an ancient Egyptian or follow that religion, it's... you go to their heaven. Um, at this if point, you're it's, Scientologist, it's, you it's just, I don't know, who knows. It's just you go a... to the volcano. They'll do the thing they did in um, Thor Love and Thunder, but for the afterlife, where there's like a, a communal sort of just meeting place for all afterlifes and everyone can just join up and have a chat, you know? Be great yeah there's like a hub world like a yeah. runner too and then you just spawn in the middle and you just go to the different ones and you could visit and hang out that yeah. sounds fun there you go i dig that fun, um see all the people um uh so yeah that's 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 woo's closure by the way i was surprised we got that but as as shitty as that is the show acknowledges that and um yeah the tragedy continues she goes off to the netherworld wherever you go when you die when you're a witch Back on the road, Agatha sees Rio. Rio's there on the road. Rio says that Gay Kid is an abomination that is disrupting the sacred balance. A bit rude, isn't it? Whatever. Um, <laughs> well, I guess there's, whatever's more, a good... there's more rule, yeah. or there's more rules about death and life and stuff. And I don't give a shit. Whatever. It's just a new set of rules, and there's other sets of rules. And she's like, I mean, "No, he's supposed." Uh, who fucking what is, who cares? What is Death's opinion about Avengers Endgame, and what happened in that? Is that okay? What's yeah. That? Was that was that a who was wrong? Just, Thanos or the Avengers for disrupting yeah, this? The Infinity power? Stones are more powerful than death. What if you use Infinity Stones yeah. to kill Death? What if you like used them to make her die? Uh, or could you? Or is like I? I don't see why you wouldn't be able to. It's just I guess I'm amused yeah. by how much she's obsessed with this particular instance of this particular thing in the world of the MCU, where insanity is constantly happening to the highest degree you could yeah. imagine. Not this long ago, death. half of the entire cosmos returned to life. Yeah, was that yeah. okay? We cool with that death? So. I know. Um, well, I feel they they just reached into a hat and pulled out like a reason that death would have to be agreed. Like they just, I don't think they thought about it anywhere beyond, not even beyond the show, beyond like the scene or the character. They, they didn't have any like on, foresight going on with this at all. Just to acknowledge, yeah, the the Thanos being in love with death thing isn't in this. They're not doing that. No, what wasn't it that the writers were actually like surprised that that was even like they didn't know it was the same as with Mephisto. Where people speculated on Mephisto and WandaVision, are like, wait, who's that? I think it's the same thing here, wasn't it? That the, the 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 notion that death was associated with Thanos is like, oh, which I just find so funny. Like, come on, you don't have to do that, but like, you certainly shouldn't be surprised, right? When Can't, people ask, I just don't understand. It's just, it's do they a not casual edition? Of they don't even have to read the comics. Like a can they personified character? Can they just do, I'm read sure dicks and read like on, bullet point you summaries? <laughs> Yeah. If you went on Wikipedia would say that. Like this You <laughs> think you think to pretend of death. They even or... pretend like they know their shit that they would just read a summary. They would read what's that what's that horrible thing that we discovered? The one that shortens books. You remember that? Blinkist or something? Uh yeah, that's I think so. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, yeah. why don't they just read the comic equivalent of that? <laughs> At least then they can pretend to be writers, you know? Uh, yeah. 
Um, it's, I mean, well, w one of the things that Theo mentioned earlier was that it's a a, a, ca a question that was legitimately worthy of consideration. The idea: well, How come death is a person? Death is a concept existed far, far before humans ever existed, or ho even hominids. Mm -hmm. um, so it's just, and, I, and if we want to talk about it in terms of like species that have achieved primacy or whatever the fuck, then it's something from space. It's not us. Well, yeah, in the MCU for the, sure. Um, yeah, I it, don't know. Was it, it was it lines to say waste. it presents itself? Uh, uh, in accordance to the, to its subject in any way, shape, or form, does it have that or no? I can't remember. I know that I don't there remember was... anything like that, but I was not paying much attention. So, <laughs> what's well, just so shitty? Like you, we're gonna. It's like the magic thing I was talking about earlier. You have the opportunity to make an entire magic system, and people who are part of this magic secret magical culture, and you have all that witch imagery and stuff to draw upon to do that. They just like casually throw in a character who is death. Like the cosmic concept of the decay of living things, the 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 encroaching, um, like um, entropy of the cosmos or whatever it is, and and the, this is what we get. It's just this cringe chick who's like, "I'm death. I'm gonna kill you." Like mm -hmm. that. What a waste. And it's just so casually thrown in. Like, this is just a character. She's here now. Yeah. At the end, mostly. Yeah. But anyway, whatever. It's just whatever. Um, it's, yeah, it's so... Just... Go ahead. Yeah. I mean, it's it's a little bit far ahead, but whenever we get to the last bit where we're fighting death or, you know, attempting to fight death, it's just like, what happens <laughs> if you defeat death? Would Why death is... not exist anymore? Why is it you could even so will people not... push death, let alone blast death? And you know what I mean? Like what? How could wouldn't death yeah. be like beyond all of like this? If you get like surgery, if you go to a hospital and you get surgery to fix like your heart condition, that's like you blasting death away through the <laughs> through the side of a house. Get away from me, death! Kapu. <laughs> Most like, of the time when people try and do, like, a fight with death, they tend to do it in some sort of allegorical or metaphorical yeah, way. way. Yeah, 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 not blasting mm -hmm. it with energy. Not, I I'm quite <laughs> literally explicitly fighting against death. The animated also... kid show about a, a cat that, that wears boots did a mm -hmm. much better portrayal of death as a concept and how it, in yeah. uh, how it engages with it's not the even protagonist. Close. Also, if you ever de manage to defeat death or even get close to it, that's basically like death committing suicide. I guess, or it's so, just yeah, like it's, angry it's... at you from the sidelines. Just... Like if you, there's no reason why you can't be in this in the universe of the MCU. Well, it's redundant, but in the MCU, there's no reason why you can't be immortal. There seems to be beings that are just immortal, and so yeah. death is just like knows that this is a world such that immortality is possible. And death is just like upset at it, or maybe annoyed, but death can't get you. So that might why be something is, uh, that death just. Why is death a human? That's a good question, Fringy. That's um, what I was saying. Yeah. Damn. Yeah. yeah. His own patented I species. Know. I did a. I did a. Yeah, my bad. No, it's all right. No, it's it's it's. I like it when no it happens rags. because it means independent. No, this is I your do. One I chance. No, this this is a difference, rags. I'm I'm willing to admit it was an error. That was my no. mistake. I Here's, apologize. No, you don't even know what I'm gonna say. I like it when it happens because it means that independently we've arrived at the same conclusion. It's converging to each other. Evolution. Yeah, it's no, like convergence. No, 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 no. It's it's. I I apologize. I was treading on Theo's. Feet there. Wow. <laughs> Theo's observation. It's my bad. Rags, make fun well, of him I'm because we're going to make fun I'm... of you every time it happens. So this is your no, one I'm going to be better than that. I'm going to be it's, better it's than just, that. It's just one more to add to the pile, right, of, of the MCU being entirely revolving around Earth. It just totally revolves yeah, yeah, around yeah. Earth. Earth is yeah, yeah. big and advanced spaces in this universe. Well, it's this... just funny that there yeah. are other planets that are clearly like got more crazy shit going on, but like. Actually, it's all about Earth. Earth is the only place that matters. Uh, everything revolves around Earth. Everybody's a human. Everybody's American, uh, mm -hmm. pretty much. <laughs> even even in the in the scope of ever not or, or rather even everybody is from New York or L A. Like it's not even <laughs> is, is there is there a character from the MCU who comes from like Indianapolis or from like Louisiana? Or, 
or yeah, exactly. Wales. Yeah, that yes, character I, from I, Wales. Well, actually, you shouldn't have said Louisiana, right? Because that's uh, that's um, uh, Gambit. Oh, He's, he would be Gambit. from Louisiana. So oh, there's that. Yeah, that's right. Wow, there's, there's only one. There's only there's one the Canadian, one. right? It's it's just Wolverine. He's the only Canadian. <laughs> Unless there's any other. Well, Canadian, no, Dudley but... Dudley do right. All right. Well, I don't have a tumbleweed um, sound. So, no, it's no. That he's great. Um, well, so maybe that maybe they should have had it to where like like death depicts itself as something that will be familiar to the person because we all know about death and we know it's coming. Or we certainly believe it to be coming. So when death appears to you, it appears as something <laughs> specific to who you are, or yeah, I associate Whatever. death with watching this show. So <laughs> it will just manifest itself as death, when death comes, comes to, you, to you, holding the just full K wondering... Blu-ray box set of, uh, of Agatha. You're like, no. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Leaves me wondering if death has the time for this shit. Surely in the that's universe, what I was saying. there's that's... something more relevant. I guess it going does. On. That's what I there's meant. The fact that death is concerned of death with right, this... right. Well, so yeah, but the implication is that death can't be doing things more than once at one time because it's having that's a why relationship with Agatha. Death is busy with uh, Alice. That's why we don't see her in the um, in the scene. That was their explanation. But that's retarded. Right. Death couldn't possibly be busy with one death. That... Well, they at a say time. in the show right. that. They so say does this mean that Tony that Stark has canonically met her? Tony Stark, when he died, she was standing there like, oh, alright, Tony, off you go. Well, look, I'm just saying, right? That's technically... Look, this is... That would be look, the case, right? To when Tony Stark sacrificed himself to save the universe, <laughs> yeah. Death was standing there Every saying, alright, you did it, let's then, go. And then yeah, behind go, her... Bobby. And then behind her, Loki is there. Making sure that all of this goes exactly according to the way Wait, that it so, should be. So why didn't when Loki? So Loki as well. Yeah, he would have when he got choked out. He would have. What, what would have happened though? Because the ship exploded. Would he spawn in space, like just floating around in space, and then she's there? All right, buddy. Yeah, like Leia. She's like Leia to... in space. So, well, but <laughs> what happens? What happens if the alternate Loki dies? Does he Listen, go to the same this place is and like he different? Meets... Because well, why are we asking these This questions? is different because I'm death talking. falls this in love. Right? Death fell in love with Agatha. That's why this is so different. It would make well, sense. Why, that... I don't even. Why would why would that even be possible? Because well, death is, is, is a cute Aubrey Plaza, and she's fall in love with. Oh, falls in love with Agatha for no reason at all. Oh. Isn't it like in mythologies? There's sort of like a tragic attraction of opposites. Um, where you have like if a care if death as a character falls in love with someone, it's like it falls in love with someone who's associated with growth and life. Like they're two elements of like reality, growth and death and rebirth and yeah, you know, all that sort of thing. You have the person who like you death and life fall in love and they are like they're attracted by the fact that they are opposites. It's not that Rio falls in love with Agatha, who's a psycho murderer who kills and kills and kills for centuries. Like, what does she think about, like, Hitler? I have seen discussions Paul about Pot, how uh, or... she has fallen in love with Agatha, and that's, that's that's exactly what I have to say about it, is, like, why the fuck would she? Does death like people who kills everybody? Is that the angle? What about the reason they kill? Because Agatha kills because she's a selfish, evil person, and some people kill, like, righteously. Um, I mean, uh, I don't, why... I don't know. Would, what is death's personality? Does death have a whatever? We, we, it is a waste of time. Well, I mean, I, I, it, it, again, there's a reason why the character would be associated with Thanos. What, what like, you know what I mean? Like Thanos, uh, like he he destroyed half of the universe. What was yeah, her opinion in this on very that? Like, what unfeeling, do uncaring that? kind of way? Well, it's just <sighs> why did you can't establish that she exists and then not have her show up? And well, all to be these like critical points in the. She was in love with it before the... she did all the killing, anyway. So. Yeah. What about the mm. fat hippo from? Uh... <laughs> What's the show? Oh, the, um, uh, from Moon Knight. Moon Knight. Yeah. Where's she? Well, yeah. Wouldn't that be competing versions of death as well? Right. Like, wouldn't that mean that? Uh... Yeah, there would have to be, wouldn't there? There'd be competing versions of death from different. Um... 
from different because you know Hades no, has to she's, exist, right? She's the all encompassing death, and then they all have does their own mini deaths. Does she go to the meeting at the, uh, at yeah, the place where all the gods have, go to? She's like, like the chairman of Hamlet. death when they go to the death meeting, and all the deaths come from all the different religions. <laughs> Is it wasn't because Hell Osiris the exists death? in the MCU? What, what does Hello think about death? Wait, Rags, Osiris didn't he get killed or trapped in a little statue? He's, he was in a jar. Yeah, oh, but then we other ones, right? Get... Because we saw they, <laughs> they, other, they, right? go, they have meetings. They go to the meetings at um in the the place where uh where uh, Russell yeah, Crowe was. Yeah, so they're not as strong as they meetings? used to be, but they still have an afterlife. Yeah, yeah. Council of Death. She's the chairman. I... It makes sense. I googled. I just googled, and uh, turns out, so approximately on Earth, there are like two approximately two deaths a second. So that's what the show says. Yeah, Agatha specifically Aubrey says Plaza. 120 people die a minute. Mm. So Aubrey Plaza is a busy is b fuck. You busy. You're going to call her a bitch. You were you're going to call her a bitch. Busy be. Busy be. And uh, multiply that by how vast and huge and big this uh universe of MCU is. Mhm. Mm um, if there are yeah. any more, you know, well, that's why she has the Council of Deaths. They all sort out their sides of things. She can't do it all. It makes sense. Yeah. And then you got the multiverse. Sure. I think <laughs> we've got the formation of a pretty vast death bureaucracy here. <laughs> <laughs> There's so many of them, you wouldn't believe. But they, 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 it's a well oiled machine. Imagine someone who's like 750 on some like forgotten backwater planet <laughs> yeah. up in space somewhere. Just because like the why filing's can't I gone die? somewhere. <laughs> We'll they're like, oh soon. god, you didn't get Sheila. Oh shit. And they have to go over there. They're like, it's time. What if like <laughs> death accidental deaths were not a bad luck, just corruption and just, you know, like death console being like effed up and all sorts well, remember, of ways. Uh Final Destination Death works at this place as well. But he's uh he's like they all have their different ways of doing it, right? A lot of them yeah, just opt for the standard, like, to... touch, but Final Destination Death's like the Rube Goldberg machine death, who's always trying to do funny things to kill people. <laughs> just to be entertained, yeah. Uh, we were joking about how an electricity was invented. He was like, ooh, this yeah, opens like, up oh so God. many possibilities. <laughs> so All the cool. gadgets they invent. I was, <laughs> I was having people getting, <laughs> getting attacked by saber-toothed tigers for thousands of years, and that gets boring. <laughs> All right. <sighs> So, um, to remind everyone of where we were, Agatha was talking to Rio on the road, and she said that gay kid <laughs> is an abomination, not because he's gay or Jewish, just to be clear. It's yeah. because he is disrupting the sacred balance by, like, existing. Um, they, they, they argue, blah, 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 it doesn't matter. Um, and then we go back to Jen and gay kid, and they're, on, they're, they're sad, they're on the staircase after they escape from the castle room, and they're like, oh, Lily is dead. Rio, you think? Says, uh, that's it. They just like, oh, isn't it sad that Lilia died? Of course. And, and, and Jen's like, yeah. And then Agatha, uh, they, they're like, uh, I think one of them says, I think Gay Kid says that Agatha's ex is death. Like, yeah, they used to be in a relationship. Okay. Um, okay. Do you think death considers AI an abomination? Oh God! Here we go. <laughs> no, not death. Our death. This death, because this death has a problem with, um, you know, uh, Wanda having created a personality that then took the body of a dead person. And what about Vision? Yeah, you think she? This is what I mean. Like they are open in a fucking the like, hornet's does it nest. Consider, like, like, <laughs> yeah, it is like is a cyborg or something. Is it yeah. like um? I think like death a life that isn't Ultron, a life. And she was it's... like, "You're an abomination." He was like, "That's not very." Well, what yeah, a, you're a life a without death's... a soul. You're a something like that. Yeah. What are death standards for death? Like, <laughs> just being legally dead for some amount of time? If you <laughs> come back from that, are you an abomination? Or Well, I mean, we're going to have to get into it earlier with the, the example that's used, like the drowning kid. But, like, you can die and then undie. That's, like that's a thing. Death is a process, yes. not like a, like a yeah, specific yeah. point in time. So... It, we'll get into that later. Um, <laughs> so we have, just said, like, uh, when Ultron's final drone is dying, it's like, Rio walks up to it. Well. Are you ready to go? <laughs> and he's like, what the fuck? Come on. <laughs> Am I a real boy? <laughs> Am I real? Yeah. <laughs> Why does it hurt? Because it was real. Oh. I love the uh. fact that according to this show, um, 
Tony Stark, probably the last thing he probably saw was Aubrey Plaza's face. Oh, oh, oh my Biden. God. Another Biden all moment. All right. <laughs> it's a, all right. We're going around. It's Biden a carousel, this episode. You know what? That's true. That's something to think about. It is true. Now, um, Rio tells Agatha uh, what the gay kid wants from the road is a violation of some rule and who not even going to get into what the rules are i who made them are they just descriptive of the way reality works blah blah the show doesn't get care and neither do i um she says that his brother isn't out there yet so like she he can't like go get him because he doesn't exist really i guess hmm. um she's the the scarlet witch the son of the scarlet witch stole a second life and she can't allow the brother to do the same thing as gay kid did because once is bad enough but two times it's just not allowed even though like if you can do it you would think that it would be allowed because the the nature of the universe is such that it's a thing that you can do so it's weird that death would be like no even though you can do this in the real world this is something you can do i don't you're like you're not allowed to do it even though you can well, was do it. death why uh, is an, an individual still with the dark hold you know and, and wonder using that to do all that crazy shit Oh, I don't know. That's a... Uh, I don't know. Yeah, but should Have we give up on asking the made, why doesn't made, death care about X question? Because we could go on yeah, forever. Probably, probably. Probably. Like, so, so why didn't Aubrey Plaza show up when Doctor Strange uh, used the, the dead she didn't Doctor love Strange? Him. But remember, he even got attacked <laughs> because he was doing something that was considered well, to be Well, because the like, demons, bad. yeah. Yeah, the they demons attacked him, him. So why didn't and she, then he controlled why didn't them to him? fly That's across right. the mountaintops. I, it would be amusing in, um, in Doctor Strange 1, where he's dying over and over and over and over and over again with the, in the Doc dimension. Oh. But eventually, <laughs> you know, Rio shows up and is like, this is, this is silly, stop it. <laughs> just, She's just like laying down, like taking a nap. I was like, when, whenever you're done, I was yeah. like, for real. Or, no, oh wait, I have to do it every single time. She can't even lay down and... He's like, uh, is, she's that's trapped the, forever. I hate to ask these questions, but like, is she above or below the stones in terms of is she, does she see she's it happening or does she get affected by them? She's got to be below. But like, isn't it a serious problem to have death be below a power any power level, really? Because death like, is such a primordial sort of like element of the universe. Well, it depends on the nature of how you want to personify death. Yeah. Or if you want to keep it like a vague cosmic entity in the background, or but if you make it like a person, just to be that clear, you can throw if through you, a wall. If you time stoned death to freeze, does that mean that no one can die in the world until she's unfrozen? What if Arnold Schwarzenegger as Mister <laughs> Freeze used his freeze ray on on the sun, uh, on death, and then uh, and then he could get his wife back because she could never die. So he would be able to live happily with his frozen wife. Mm. And then Batman, <laughs> his parents wouldn't have died. So he wouldn't have become <laughs> Batman. He would have just lived a happy life with his Dies. parents. Age. And then Joker would have like licked his nose or whatever he did. I can't remember. Is that, um, <laughs> was that a Simpsons joke that death, Everyone is immortal because death dies, or is it family? Yeah, it was. Uh, when well, it was both of them. So in the Simpsons, there was a tree asapara one when I, I I think it was like when Homer killed Death. I think it showed like it, like Fat Tony or something was shooting this guy. They just kept shooting him and it didn't do anything. Yeah. Um, and then uh, I think in Family Guy it was that basically because um Norm Macdonald uh Death who he he was he was the best voice of Death. The guy he after was. wasn't as good. Um, where Norm Macdonald, because he had to get off of his ankle, you know, because it was hurt, Peter just started going around doing crazy oh, bad. Oh, I remember that. Yeah. yeah, so like he then got uh, the, the news reporter to shoot him in the face <laughs> and then wouldn't do anything, and then he faked that it actually did. <laughs> and it was a joke. And then because of that, death got big mad. Mm -hmm. So yeah, both of that them sounds like. Um... That sounds like one of the premises of like a, like an old science fiction story from like the from like the early fifties where they just commit to the whole thing of yeah death as a concept stops here's what happens to the universe and to humanity and they just play it straight and it would be like ooh this is a weird this is quite a story and you could imagine they do the thing where they fire a blank and the guy looks down and he's not hurt and he's like what the hell how did that happen 
And it's like that. That's how they portray it, because it's because it's old. And it'd be in black and white. Um, Funny that like Peter thought he could outrun death. Like, even though he's a fat guy. He's pretty fast for a fat guy. He was yeah, but I mean, you know, he would have been caught. He was except, running for his uh, life. Yeah, but he I mean like Norm McDonald caught up really quickly. Got, Norm McDonald's a, he's a quick guy, you know? <laughs> have you seen his have you seen his stand up? He's a he's a quick guy. Oh yeah. All right. Um what, what are we doing? Oh, we're talking about Agatha all along. <laughs> all right. Okay. So um Anyway, uh, Rio and uh, Agatha are talking. He's an abomination because of something magic and he's sacred balance and blah, blah. Um, Rio cannot kill Gay Kid, though, because then he'll reincarnate again and she'll lose him. Uh, okay. Um, mm -hmm. If you say so. If, if you say yeah, so. Yeah, if you say sure. so. Yeah. Um, so she says he has to surrender. He has to turn himself in to death. Which is like, I'd be like, well, no, I'm, I'm not gonna. If it was me. I'd be like, no, I'm gonna keep reincarnating, living all these different lives. It's gonna be fun. It'll be, it'll be fun. And when I'm done, I'll let you know. But this is, this sounds like fun. Um, Agatha then decides to make a deal with Rio. She makes a deal with death. Oh my God. That she will deliver Billy, a uh, gay kid. And in exchange, Rio will have to stop pursuing her and let her live a very, very, very long life. All right, then. which is very subjective. Not the kind you don't don't make these open ended subjective deals with death. By the way, um, on the off chance that death is just like an asshole and doesn't take like the thing in good faith, then it might be like, oh, t ten years is subjectively very, very, very long, depending on your someone's it's, it's, point of view. You're right. It's very relative. But long to some people is long, like a short. fifteen minute video. Long to some other people is like a nine if, hour video. If you're making deals with death, just say, you know what, I'm immortal, and whenever I'm ready to die, I'll just let you know, and you can come and get me. I'll send that's an what email. I would do. Yeah, that's what I'd do, just to be like, Letter. yep. Yeah, I'll send you an email. But like, how does to... that have any bearing on, like, if she's crossing the road, she don't look both ways and gets hit by a car? Like, why would... You'll be all right. You know what I mean? Like, what? how is she even in a position... Does death have control over the choices that people... Did death make the car crash well, happen? Wanna... That enabled Billy Does to death have what, control mm -hmm. over physics such that death could I adjust think... the manner well, the of thing. her trajectory you don't, and whatnot? You don't want to give death that kind of power. Death is just like, look, things happen, you know? That's why death is often portrayed as this super chill kind of character who's like, I'm not angry at you. It's not personal. People die, and I'm here to take you personal. on to the death next life. It. I love I love you, Agatha, because you because of reasons that are yeah. actually a mystery um so they they make the deal she makes a deal all right so now agatha and rio have a deal meanwhile uh they meet up i guess it's not meanwhile this happens after this agatha jen and gay kid meet up and they go to the final trial the last trial <laughs> of the witch's road <laughs> 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 They walk forward and um, they're going to go to the last trial and they arrive uh, actually uh, right back where they were at the beginning of the road where they took off all their shoes. This just doesn't so they've fucking made a big mean loop. anything. It doesn't matter. Yep, you know? It doesn't mean anything. It's I, such a yeah. whatever sort of like, if you put on it's the like, shoes. Right, it's yeah, like it's, it's almost like delayed because... I was surprised this episode was not only that this episode was this long, but I was like, how are they going to do another one after this? They find yeah. a way. Yep. So that's what happens. And then they start arguing. They start arguing. Oh no, what's going on? We're back at the beginning. It's a big loop. What are we supposed to do? And then gay kid steps in his shoes and then he appears in a body bag in what appears to be a morgue. And then so does Agatha, and then so does Jen, and, and 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 then they get out of their little body bags in this weird morgue that looks like a set from Resident Evil, and yes. then, yeah, it does, it really does. Um, it, this could be the movie set to many movies. Think of all the cool things you could do in this room. Yeah, all sorts of science experiments and goofy traps that you could do. This is oh boy. Oh, it could be Saw Eleven. Set. Oh, this could be Saw Eleven. 
if you if ever in the future if you guys have seen this room before uh let us know in the comments that you've been to this room before you've been here before because that happens sometimes in movies where you see the same set used for different stuff because you know why waste a good set on just one movie you know so yeah um they wake up in body bags and what appears to be some kind of like morgue and there's lights on the ceiling and agatha says it's her basement which is weird. I don't recall this being like her basement or anything. Um, <laughs> but they have their personal effects in the body bags with them. Um, so they chat and Jen says, oh, these look like grow lamps, like lamps you use to grow plants indoors. Hmm. Um, very, very, they, use a, they consume a lot of power in RimWorld, uh, but they can be very useful. Uh, they chat and they talk and uh, kind of beyond any shred of reasonable explanation, you're just going to kind of have to take my word for it. Uh, they somehow discover that Agatha is the one who bound Jen for a century back in the 1920s. So. All right. Yeah. Add it to sort of her list of crimes. Tumbles out. Yep, it just sort of happens awkwardly and randomly, but it in a way that isn't intuitive. There's no connective tissue behind it. It it just sort of like we need to have it to be that we discover this as a thing, so it just happens. Um, and Agatha doesn't deny it, or I don't know. So so Jen like takes some of Agatha hair, Agatha's hair. She like just grabs some hair and yanks it right off, and then she ties up Agatha's hands with it. And Agatha doesn't resist this in any way. It just sort of happens. It's the same sort of like faux struggle that we've done time and time again in this show um and so jen does a chant and she says the words and there's a magic incantation and then her powers return jen has got her powers back and she's really happy that she got her powers back and then oh my um i need to go change the I need to go change the um the the bin the 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 receptacle on my dehumidifier it's just beeped at me I have a humidif dehumidifier back here, and it, it's really good. It's been raining outside, so it's kind of... It was like, I gotta go change my dehumidifier. I'll go do that when y'all are talking about something. You can do it now um, if you want. Yeah. All right, sure, yeah, I'll go be right it. back. Give me, a, give me just a second um, here. This just rolls mm -hmm. out randomly, the uh, you bound me thing. And it's like, it could have happened at any time, and it could have been undone at any time. It's just happening uh now, because this is when it happens. How did she know what to do? And if whatever reason it worked, um, dude, that's such a boring witchery. Back in second. <laughs> okay. Rex was water. saved. Maybe have to pee. Oh, I'm so tempted to kick him. <laughs> but I can't because I have to re-add him, and it'd be annoying. But uh, <laughs> I can mute him like... though. <laughs> Why did he realize that, like, there's a conversation happening right now? I don't understand. Because don't he's, he's the main character. It's, uh, okay. We, we like, all stop talking whenever he talks. It's fine. Um, all right. But, yeah, agreed. It's very lame, very boring, very fast, and it feels like the writers were going to go somewhere with the binding, and then they gave up. They were like, uh, we got to get this yeah, out no, of just, All right, get her out of here. Just, just resolve, we gotta get, get her gone. We don't need her anymore. Hold up, I have to wash mm -hmm. my hands real quick. Why would you? Penis, I don't. I don't. <laughs> Holy shit! Um, I'm just jealous. And yeah, uh, Agatha doesn't seem very phased by any of it, which is just adding to how much of an asshole she is. Um, yeah. yeah. This is lady is about to get her power that was taken away from her for like a hundred years back, and Agatha's like, uh, uh, "Sure, do whatever you want, I guess." Which is um, odd to say the least. Because this mm -hmm. this show desperately wants to portray her as like a good person who's invested in shit and, and cares about maybe the people but, somewhat. Like, is that even? It feels like they can't even like they're, they're not even convinced that that's what they're trying to do. You know, like present Agatha in a, in a positive way when she keeps like bragging about how bad of a person she is. Mm -hmm. Right. It's bizarre, and and yeah, this just the unbinding. It just works, and that's that. She's done so. Yeah, More done so than you'd realize, out. too. This is it for her in the story. She's just out. Yeah, she disappeared. I think this is the same thing as, like, sh I think we said it on She-Hulk. The writers are just objectively terrible people who cannot imagine um, damn. that this could be interpreted as, <laughs> like, terrible ac actions. 
So they're just are, very. I think I think that the simpler explanation is what uh, Theo mentioned earlier, which is that uh, there there are like much more conventional stories you can tell about good people or people becoming heroes, but like there's such an interest and obsession with being subversive and deconstructive, but like not recognizing that when you do that, you start to tread on more perilous ground when it comes to figuring out how to uh, you know, like coherently relay the themes of your story. You just, like, end up in a place where you can start writing stuff, like, where you don't even realize, like, the implications of what you've written. To where, like, if you said it to them, they might even be like, oh, shit. Whoops. <laughs> you know, like, oh, whoops. I mean, that's what happened with Patty Jenkins, right? That was a whoopsie. She didn't realize what she'd written. I, I think if, if you unintentionally or subconsciously end up writing this and giving out the messaging, even if it's unintentional... I think there's just something legitimately wrong with you as a person. Oh, I mean, I I'm happy to say that the show is unhinged. <laughs> like, that's, yeah. I think the show is unhinged. <laughs> I think it's a weird show. We're not even at and the I end don't know yet. What... We're not at the end, but like, We're not again, even at the end. previously, they're still much more unhinged. The hinge is oh, still going to come more loose. We have, we have barely begun to un those hinges. There's so much more. So, um, uh, you have. Uh, Jen's out. She's she's gone, you know. So, everyone's favorite character. She went on a great arc of, I want my powers back, and then I got them. Yeah. There's nothing else really to say I about just... that. Uh, she met that crazy mm -hmm. chef who drowned her. I guess that's gonna come up in something else. Oh, yeah, oh yeah, you're right. In episode three, there was that guy who drowned her. Yeah. Oh yeah. Or was he a chef or a scientist or? <laughs> I thought that was the guy who took her powers. He was an she astronaut. Went to that convention in Boston. I've... Oh, from the 1920s, a 20s <laughs> astronaut, an old timey astronaut with his apron, Wait, his so space apron. It's not that it's going to go somewhere else. It's that that was she thought that guy took her power, but he didn't. It's even worse. I guess because it, it was actually it was Agatha. It was, all she along, she so. put herself in a, men a prison of her own making. You know, in a sense, all she needed to. I, we got to do well, you, stories <laughs> like this as well, right? Where the character just learns, like, wait, I can just will myself into having what I need. It's like I feel like that's become too well, much of a trope. At it's this not point as well. It's, it's always isn't it more worse than that? Because it's the um, the only way to get my power back is to unbind myself from the person who cast the spell, and it was some weird man from wherever. And then at the end of the story, it's the person she's traveling with just goes, <laughs> "It was me," and then she goes, oh, "Okay, unbind by," and then. Yeah. There's, there's nothing that was built, developed, concluded, learned. Nothing. There's just nothing. At least Again, when you say, you must believe in yourself, <laughs> that's, that I guess is like, at least they're believing in the... Uh, I know, don't know. That's the Marvel thing, right? Where the arc is realizing she was awesome all along, which uh, I'm starting to get really tired of that. <laughs> well, I yeah, really am starting that's to That's awful. Tired of that. I'm just saying that right. this a, one, yeah, this one isn't me. even anything. It's not even believing it. It's literally just that's true. unlock my that's powers. True, how yeah. is like the key was right there. Like, oh, cool. Thanks. Okay. See you. Bye. And then yeah. that's actually the end. We see her yeah. one more time. Just fly away. Basically. That's yeah. it. Oh, yeah. The she, story's over. she crawls out of the ground. She floats away with magic. And yeah. I guess she, I guess no one saw her. Um, and she's done. Jen is gone. She, she, yeah, that's it. She completed her arc. Here. Yep. He's back what to eating candles. Character. I like I like how That's everything true. that it's like you said, Mola, everything that leads up to this point is fucking pointless. <laughs> like it actually is pointless. It's a total waste of time for her anyway. What a great character. What a great character. Yeah. <laughs> maybe she uh, can update her YouTube profile picture, maybe. Oh, oh yeah. Go, I'm yeah. in the witch's row and I got my magic back. Couldn't a witch just decide to tell the whole world about magic and then it's all yep. no, never mind. Never mind. Never mind. Yeah. Uh so yeah, she's gone. Get Road gave her what she was missing. Now she's gone. Agatha tells Gay Kid that Rio is afraid that the gay kid will give his brother another chance at life, and that's against the rules. So she says, You know what? You juice me up with your magic power, right? Because she absorbs people's power. Juice me up with a power and we can go find him together. Which is like he's like, No, I don't trust you. But then they do it anyway, so I mean, I, I, okay. Well, I mean, I, we've done this a couple of times, but uh, you know, the, 
it's like you gotta we gotta do the his road which is finding his brother it's like well how do we do that it's like we'll just do it let's do it and then mm -hmm. they do it it's, yeah, it's fascinating they do how this, little like... effort the writers <laughs> put into any of this they were like i don't know it just no, fucking it's magic. happens I know, the, magic it's funny, spell. I think a lot of people would say, like, you guys are really nitpicking how magic works, so, like, this is not how magic is supposed to work when you write it. You're not supposed to just make it do fucking anything at any time that's convenient for the characters. There's no rules or limitations, it's just, uh, it's too convenient uh, in order to facilitate a kind of story that you specifically want it to be. Instead of you clearly creating a magic system first, and then having a story take place within the bounds of those rules, you do the other way, where you tell a story that has magic in it, and you make up the rules as you go along in order to facilitate yeah. the story. It would be like if in the final trial, a huge T-Rex, like, Rawr, I'm going to eat all of you, and then one of them says, don't worry, I have the destroy T-Rex spell, hooga booga, and then it just destroys. And you're like, wow, lucky you have that spell that we've never heard of ever before. Now, oh, if, that's if you're... A if you're a talented writer and you're really good, you can sort of have those things go in tandem if you take notes and it's like, okay, uh, how do I get this through and how can they use magic? Okay, well, they, they can use this kind of a thing, but we need to put some rules around it. We need an explanation why they can't use it all the time and da-da-da, so that they're kind of like working together a story and a magic system and you always, like, you're building and building and you're creating rules that you have to follow based on what you've done before. But they're not doing that. It's just I mean, whatever, man. We've seen it's the, just whatever. Maybe the best example of seeing this thing collapse is with the Force. It is a magic system, essentially. Yes. And the OT kept, as much as it didn't lay out very specific mechanical rules, it showed us a lot of what its biggest capabilities are. And then with each film that comes out, with each thing that comes out, with each new writer who wants to do something shocking, the Force has been fucking annihilated. It could do anything at this point. Mm -hmm. Rip Rex. The Power oh, Rex. He's he's no Whitehurst, but uh he's hmm. so um let's see. Da, 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 da. Yeah, they do the ritual. They sit down and she's like, Tell me the tell me the last memory of your brother. And he tries to remember them like talking and saying goodnight to Wanda or something. Um so they ba the ritual is essentially that he, through his like magic mind flisms, he has to find a dying kid for his brother's soul to enter. Ugh. Yeah, that's about mm. it. Yeah. Um, yeah. Now he he asks if he's killing the boy so his brother can live. Uh, and. And and they there's like this they sense this drowning boy who falls in a pool and some kids hold him down and he ends up drowning from that and so I guess the idea is that his brother's soul from wherever it is because it's definitely real and it's out there it goes into um it goes into the the like the drowning boy and that's gonna be where his brother is when he gets resuscitated or whatever. Um, so which would be awkward if they, he didn't get resuscitated. If they're just like, "Yep, he's totally." <laughs> yeah, they just let him die. They, I and... guess in the like, what, what this takes place in uh, contemporary, right? It's oh wait, it was it's three years post Wandavision, so yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, as if as if I'm quibbling over the particular years would change the fact that everyone in that place would be aware of being able to save someone who's recently, very recently drowned, like. That's that's. I'm not going to say it's common knowledge for the actual construction of it, but you'd have people there who would be aware of it. But well, I guess he's but, gone. But, but there's a weird line as well where it's like, oh, he's got nobody. Like nobody loves him. It's like, are you throwing this line in as though it's like better if then if you like? Isn't it better him when a, a boy dies well, like, alone with no one who loves him? <laughs> Why well, do they? No, it's, it's, it's like it's, they're yeah, trying I, I, to make it less bad when they they force themselves here. Why did they do this? They didn't have to. Yeah, exactly. They they didn't have to do this. They didn't have to write it this way. But they don't they commit. if they really 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 wanted to find some way to get these characters in, I don't know. Just have it be like, oh, the magic just they, they teleported and put them over there. Manifest instead of the it body. being like, oh, I, I, yeah, like they why can teleport people with way? magic. That's how Rio got. You fucking created yeah, the whole like, road oh, no, 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 the, subconsciously. The, the, the person we're gonna we're, we're gonna get Tommy. Ah, oh, he's a loser. Nobody likes him. He's all alone. Nobody will care if he disappears. You know, it's, it's like uh, what? Yeah. What are you doing? I mean, that's. I mean, like, in a meta, in a meta sense, that's. You know. It's it's just like why would you write it this way? Why did you do this? 
it's not even like it's so easy for them to it's so essentially effortless for this to happen this is just a ritual that you could do that agatha knows that they can do as if this is magic that you just know how to do which implies that it should be happening all the time for people to save their loved ones or whatever oh let's find a new body which is not like an, an unheard of thing for witches to do the idea of a witch like transferring themselves into a a newer body or sucking the youth out of someone like it's it it's, it's a witch thing it's it's in the the, the common culture for it but I think, by this the way, is, that it's so it's just done so casually. That line about the no one to love him feeling really feels like one of the best examples in this season of just how shit the writing still is in the MCU. Yeah, oh my, oh my, it reminds me of the Snyder thing of oh my god, they fell in that place that no one is in because it, it's fine that they're fighting there, no one is over there. <laughs> like, well, well, why did you sound so insecure with that line? What the fuck? It's like oh well, because everyone made fun of me when I had them fight in populated places, so now I've got to have everyone announce that it's definitely not populated every time. And, uh, yeah, this feels the same way. It's like, oh my god, it's crazy. Nobody likes this kid. Nobody at all. No family. No people. No friends. No one to love this person. Oh my god, it's so sad. In a way, we're helping. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's yeah, like, I, shut I, up. I this is what, this is what, this show is unhinged. It's unhinged. Like, what, this is, this is bizarre and strange. And I don't know why you would write this. I don't know why you would do this. Like, conceptually, uh, it can be done, as mentioned, and it could be a very interesting story. Um, the execution is it, the, what, it make, what makes it terrible, because this is a very tragic tale of a little kid that dies that has nobody, right? But instead of it being delivered tra in a way that it actually is, which is tragic and just very, very sad, the show expects us to be celebratory about this whole thing. Like, yeah, Tommy. And Tommy's like back, fate, boys. Yeah. It's effed up. Like, everything gets to live. Woohoo. It's very I, effed up. I don't, I don't know why and they I can't... Push... Why do they not understand that, like, they're not, they're not real. And everybody, like, that's... You know what I mean? They, they don't realize. like kind of the whole they point don't. is that they aren't real. But then they decided, oh, actually, they are actually real. They're very they're real. So now, real. Yeah. They're so real. They're so it's real. Like, they have personalities well, remember, getting, and lives um, and souls. They've started filming the Vision show. We're getting that. And it's like Vision is the memories of Vision being put into Vision Bot. Remember this? Like, it's, it's, it's like yeah, bizarre. Yeah, right. It's, it's, it's he's white like vision. He's a like pale white vision. It, yeah. it, it was yeah, the, the it was, yeah, Wanda's memory of vision, one. yeah. putting his memories, presumably everything, I don't even know. What do you do? He touched his little, little gem, didn't he? He touched his head, and then, and then he, he's like, oh shit, oh, that's, that's crazy. But, but again, it's like, it can't be the original one. It has to be Wanda's imagined version of vision, which is going to be different. So annoying that the only person who's stayed dead apparently is going to be the Black Widow. Pretty much because, because and that's only because she she doesn't want to come back to the MCU. Yeah, yeah she don't want to do it anymore. <laughs> the re the true death. Can I just say, by the way, the one person who is not coming back is the one who got her solo movie post her death. <laughs> like, yeah, the solo yeah. movie that dealt retroactive damage to her character as well, which was it's really the... fun. God, that ruined her, that film. It was horrible. It did. It, it was, uh, Endgame was, aside from all of the, you know, the, the issues that affect all the characters, she's yeah, the one who came out stupidity. Okay, yeah. broadly, and then they ruined her. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Yeah, there is an mm -hmm. element of... They can't of write. Just... They can't write. They don't know how to write. <laughs> well, you say that now, but wait till we get to the ending, and then you'll understand why everything is happening. It, this all gets... This is tied all gonna up make sense, really neatly yeah. at the end. Yeah, this is all going to make sense. It just you don't think it's good now because you don't have the full context. But once we get that context, you'll be like, "Oh shit, yeah." Like nine point five wasn't high enough. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> so yeah, they do the ritual. He finds a drowning boy. Uh, the ritual is complete. Billy, I guess his soul goes, or the Tommy's soul goes into that kid. We're led to believe, and there, there's a crack in the floor that appears, and Gay Kid disappears. He is off Bye, the gay road. Kid. Goodbye, gay kid. See you later. Um, so Agatha's all alone in the Resident Evil Silver Morgue room. Uh, it's all, yep, just her. Mm -hmm. uh, she says sometimes, uh, they do this thing where, where uh, uh, Gay Kid asks if he's killing the boy so his brother can live, but Agatha's like, oh, no, well, 
Sometimes boys just die. Okay. Because uh, uh -oh. remember, she had a son. Yay, she guess. had a son who died. So yeah. So, um. You know. You know who else dies? All the people you murdered. They died. A lot uh, of deaths, actually. Uh, yeah. Not a lot of deaths. Uh. She finds a little seed in her brooch. It's a good thing she looked in there. Cause yeah. she, mm -hmm. she's got. Yeah. It's a good thing she looked at her brooch because there's a little bitty seed there. A little dandelion seed, as many of you will be familiar with. Uh, she rubs a tear on it. She puts it in the crack on the floor where, there, where there's dirt, and it grows into a little dandelion. This All is right. this is symbolic that makes so much of sense. Um... the fact that she's a weed. <laughs> <laughs> well, the MCU is a weed. Uh... She might seem she might seem somewhat pretty, but th she's actually a destructive entity to everything around her, and must be pulled up. Quickly, I mean, the, the exiting of the road for any given person is to get what they came for, right? Uh, Agatha wanted powers back. What is how does this work? How does this make sense? Well, you see, um, when the dandelion grows, the trial is over now and it starts to cave in, but she leaves the room through the staircase and then okay, she. She's back at Westview on her lawn in her backyard. She she comes out of the basement, the little the little doors, and she she's out. She's out back in Westview. Hooray! Mm -hmm. We we have left the witch's road. It is behind us. The sky, unfortunately for her, is stormy and it's spooky green. And Rio is laughing on the roof. Mm -hmm. Oh my God! It's death, and death is laughing. Because Agatha didn't get Gay Kid to surrender her, uh, himself, like the deal that they made, it means that Rio doesn't have to honor the deal for you living a long time and me not bugging you. So Rio shoots a bunch of glass at Agatha to cut her up, and Agatha sees that the moon is in the fire phase, and she tries to do a ritual, but Rio blows it away. And then Rio calls her a coward, and then she's like, oh, wait, that's the thing that she Lilia told me. When she calls me a coward, I should duck. And so, and so she ducks, yeah. and then the kitchen sink like flies out of the house and over where she was standing. Yeah, which and, so is Lilia there? This is such a no. like no, the joke being that she flashing back and forth. <laughs> um, the this this to me is so bizarre. Was so if Lilia hadn't said what she said, Death would have just killed Agatha by throwing that at her, and that would have been it. Yeah. Okay. I guess so. Fantastic. I'm I'm so confused by Agatha's motivations for this entire episode cuz so she promises Rio that she's going to deliver her the kid. The very next scene, she does the opposite of that. And now she's she's like basically what is she doing? I was just so confused. Well, like, if she was still in the mode of, I'm gonna give oh, the kid up, uh, and Death is like, hey, he's not with you, so you've, this is, you've cheated or something, well, why wouldn't she just say, like, well, I, he disappeared. He literally fucking disappeared. I'm sure we can find him. Yeah, we can is go she... and look for him. Yeah. He trusts me now, yeah. so... She... She knew that she, if she, like, did that ritual... Just like the other woman did, he would just disappear and, well, into thin air, mm. uh, which is not in her interest at all. She should have instead probably captured him and delivered him to Rio at first opportune moment, but she does well, she the can't. opposite she of that. She has to get him to surrender, and I don't even know what that really means. Does she have to get Gay Kid to say, I submit to you, Death, and you can kill me. Like, why the fuck would he ever <laughs> do that? Why would he ever do that? How do you get I'm someone, especially contract. a young... Well, and then there's also, they do actually need to escape the road because it'll kill you, you know? So it's yeah. like, what does that mean? And they conclude, well, I we've guess. got to... The only way... It's funny, that trial, I didn't know that they should have just figured, oh, well, now we've just got to get everything that everyone wants. That's this trial. It's like, oh, is it? Okay. And then, you know, it's like, you want your magic back, you got it. You want your brother back, you got it. And I want to make a weed, I got it. There I go. Okay, the, you know what I mean? Like, it's also, and then that happened, and then that happened, and then, and you're just like, yeah, sure. And then death is going, going kind of silly mode. Uh, 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 but 
she very much doesn't want to kill Agatha, though. That becomes pretty clear. Remember, we did this in episode one, where Death's motivations were flip-flopping all over the place in a matter of seconds. Yep. I guess we're just doing that again. But like I said, uh, I don't know why Agatha's not just saying, yeah, I mean, he disappeared. We'll have to go get him. It's a really good scene. I mean... Yeah, I mean, I... Well, oh, well, I am so fucking glad you said that because we got more. It's not over. Wait. We got more. We Not only is this not the, not the last scene, this isn't even the last episode. <laughs> we got more, baby! Oh. Hey, oh. guess what? There's, um, like, they, they do this weird, okay, we, I love good costumes. Good costumes are iconic, and they're, they, they just become, like, symbolic of the character, instantly recognizable. I love a good costume. I love, like, the Iron Man suits, um, even, even, like, Gambit's jacket, Wolverine's yellow thing. Um, that he wears, you got the Cyclops' visor, you got Spider-Man's red, blue, and the black webbing. Oh, iconic superhero outfits. Um, how do you guys think about, um, uh, how do you guys think about Gay Kid's costume? Oh, no. I'll get it up for like everybody it? to see. You know those like princess little um, tiaras that they sell at the like gro grocery stores for like you two dollars. Happy Meal toys. Yeah, I guess. Not me, not me. Like, I mean, like like girls get them. I get always get the boy toys, but you know the girls get the those. Yeah, well maybe that's that's how his crown head piece or whatever the frick it's supposed to be looks like to me. He looks and like. Go on. No, I mean, I, he got it in the prior episode, but for some reason just uh, pocketed it, maybe? I don't know what, what happened, but, uh, yeah. He looks, he looks like silly. I would see him 20 years ago on children's TV. Yeah, <laughs> like he's know, a, like a, like a Christian, uh, like, morning program. Yeah. He's like the, he's like a Christian-themed superhero. He's Bible Man's like side actually, chick. Kind of like like the like the sidekick, like the backup sidekick in case the first sidekick like ha hires a gay prostitute or something, and he's got a spare <laughs> that he can yeah you know, he can use. Doesn't even get the good sidekick costume. It's just what do we got? I don't know. I got a red hood sort of. I got a belt that looks weird. Um, here, put on this plastic circlet. Isn't that for girls? Nah, it's that's that's too. No, it's, we're not. We don't talk about that anymore. Oh shit, the pants have a hole in them. I was like, that's fine, that's fine, that's punk. Uh, leave that in. Does Red he know how to fly so... with his powers? Yeah, of course. It's just, you just know how to use your powers the moment you get them. I mean, that's just a given now. The red um, is think... so fucking tacked yeah. on because it doesn't, like, accentuate or contrast anything. It's just sort of there. Mm -hmm. There's no other that's design element the, uh... that it sort of countermands, you know? And the circlet Doesn't is blue the like the outfit, really which I don't like at all. Like, look at the frame. Look at how dark it is. Mm -hmm. Look at how everything blends together. Why is everything so mm -hmm. dark blue? Especially when the costume is dark blue. Seems like a bad mm -hmm. idea, you know? You know, with Marvel trying to do all these, like, kid superheroes now, it's, now that I think about it, it's, it's really tough to put a kid or a teenager or a younger person in a serious suit and not have them look goofy or like they just just like were came from trick or treating you know yeah it's there's really a line to accomplish that i guess i don't see the point of trying to do like young avengers if that's what they want to do because mm. as far as i'm concerned anything that isn't just avengers you instantly, like, diminish the brand, and you're gonna make less money. Like, Young Avengers, that's that's just by default gonna make less money, because people yeah, are like, like, what? Yeah, like Baby like Muppets. Some, some weird offshoot of, like, the actual Avengers, let alone that none of the characters are even remotely interesting or likable. Nope. <laughs> you know, that's a big problem that they have as yeah, well. As a quick reminder, he's a murderer. Gay Kid is a murderer. <laughs> he tried to murder two women, two innocent oh, women. I mean, the thing is, is that even if you move past the actual story of what actually happens, 
just like, oh yeah, Cassie from Ant Man. Oh wow, how exciting! Uh, who else do they have? Who else would they put in this movie? Uh, Ironheart, Kate Bishop. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I guess what? Uh, yeah, Kate Bishop. Right? Yeah. Uh, What's I guess Riri Miss Williams, Marvel? America Chavez. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. So uh, wow, what a riveting team! <laughs> yeah, so I'm sure <laughs> this will make a billion dollars. I just don't see that that's ever going to happen at this point. I would mm. I would be really surprised if they ever yeah. follow through on on that as a as a as Dude, a prospect. You are like like you know pointing out the, the the lighting. I think that was so deliberate that they were they noticed how awful it looked when it was like well lit. So make it darker. Just so that darken it's kind of the harder fuck to, out of it yeah. because it does not look great. <laughs> uh, yeah. He should have just it showed just up in whatever creepy. clothes he was wearing. No, Why does you he gotta, have a costume? No, this is his intro, no, Rags. No, Rags. The formula for every Marvel TV show is to have the character get their iconic costume in the last episode, or I guess in this case, the second to last episode. You can't not do it, because people need to talk about it on Twitter. They need to say, look, it looks like the comic. And then people say that the show is good. Well, and then, and then you realize the comic version oh, always right. looks better. It's just inspired by the comic. Hmm. Dude, when you look closely to the coloring of, like, the contrast between his headpiece and the red, it just does not go well together at all. It's it, it just so look, bad. It doesn't look good. It looks, no. it looks goofy and, and lame. It's very bad. Yeah. Oh, yeah, he, do, he, does, he definitely looks better in the, uh, yeah. the, the, the comics. But you can also see how they ended up with this. Oh, yeah. But, yeah. I can see it because the, I see red. It's red. Red. And so, yeah, it's red. Um, like, uh, also the makeup choices. The, you have, like, uh, Robert Pattinson's Batman, right, with this, like, goofy black sh- eyeshadow that he has going on, I guess, or whatever. But he pulls it off. I think it's, it's a, like, a cool decision, right? Um, but... With this guy, right? It just does not work, whatever they're trying to do well, like, here. It's just goofy. This moment here, he just comes across as so feeble. It's the combination of the costume and just, I don't know, the act is not getting me with the, the build or the presence. He feels very, eh. eh. Oh, yeah, mm-hmm. he is, eh, he is a, he's a, he's a weak, uh, a breathing outward kind of noise. Yeah, an exhale of just apathy. Now, yeah, look at, everyone's the... cosplay is better than this. This is the official oh, yeah. thing, and everyone's cosplays are better. Yeah. And that's like uh, to play into what Fringy said. This uh, sort of child uh, actors uh, or younger people, right? Having them as these superheroes just does not make sense any in any shape or form because e- even in, within the world, they are not. Physically, first of all, they wouldn't ever be capable of pulling most of this stuff off, and they will end up looking goofy. Um, they wouldn't be just fit physically or mentally or intellectually. They're just too young to be dealing with universe-wide just danger that these superheroes are put through. That's just... That wasn't that the angle I was... I was talking all. strictly financial prospects. Yeah. Because I mean, Spider-Man yeah, I know. is a teenage superhero, and he's the most popular yeah. one. So yeah, there's I definitely an angle that saying. you can go for with... Uh, I'm just saying, I think it's a terrible idea financially. Um, if all of the characters were actually, like, well-written and interesting, you could probably make it work. But, like, as it stands right now, you've introduced, like, five or six characters who are pretty lame and honestly very interchangeable. Like, they don't really stand out as being particularly, like, interesting or noteworthy or distinct from one another. Um, And you get them together in in a team and then diminish Avengers as a brand. I just, there's no way. Bad move. There's no prospect for that. If you took if you took the script of their next movie and you removed all the names from the script, you couldn't tell who was who. It, everyone's just like sarcastic loser asshole. Um except yeah, for yeah, yeah. Kamala like, Khan seems like a nice except lady. For Miss Marvel. She's like the you might, only yeah, one you, that feels like you can make something with that character. You could probably pick her out because her dialogue is going to be much more like upbeat, really happy to see everybody hoping to make the best situation, probably fangirling at some things, right? Like that's her that's her vibe. But the yeah. others are all hyper like generic. Vibe. It's the writing that's terrible. Yeah. Yeah. Um, by the way, I was I was browsing really quick. I found a I found a Wiccan costume for fifty seven dollars, uh, and it looks better than what we have in the what? show. 
That's in, that's interesting. That costs that's 57, 57 bucks. That's 57 bucks. Yeah, that's it. But why does it look better than the show? <laughs> well, because they spent uh, $12 on the the show and eight of that was the plastic circlet that they had to 3D print. Um, so, I mean, it's just like the costume is I, I kind of like the costume. I think it's pretty neat. <laughs> just uh, everyone's better. Everyone's <laughs> cosplay is my cut back to the show. It's not a flattering moment for him, but still, it's funny. He's uh, I don't understand why they don't like why this is the guy's costume for the finale of your $40 million show or whatever, and the random people going to comic conventions have better looking. They made this in a cave with scraps, and you can't and you can't make this for your show, man. That oh, is yeah. wild. Hey, I, I got nothing. Um, I guess we can just carry on. I thought I, I don't know. I don't know why you said that. I think it was just happy to make a noise. Just temporarily possessed. Um, yeah, uh, death like cuts her a bunch and wraps her to a post with sharp thorny vines, and then. Gay kid shows up and he's got his costume. I don't know where he got it, but he does have it now. And he flies in and he blasts death into the side of the house. Yeah, I guess that's something you could do to well, death. Like, you would think that death would be like a like an unstoppable thing who maybe will you think? like for for shits and giggles pretend to be affected by it. Like you could cut death's head off. And then she's like, ha ha, that was pretty good how you did that. Uh, remember that other show we watched with a really fucking cool depiction of a woman who's death? Uh, that was really... I don't really, know what you're talking about, you're crazy. Really... Um, the, okay. the fact that death ties up Agatha and then walks toward her slowly is already like, why with would death... Knife? You got the cringe knife. Yeah, like, why would death do any of that? Why, what? what death... Why don't you just blue part attack? Yeah. Or like it's suck out her. Weird Why does death need to defeat you in this way remotely? It's just stupid and crap. Well, it wouldn't and... even be death doing it. It would be like something in the world happens, and that's how you die. That's how death yeah. gets you. It's not an actual physical act of death as a character. Aubrey Plaza with a knife. It's that's just... how death gets you. It's Aubrey like Plaza. as Agatha runs away from death, she gets hit by a car. And you're like, yep, that's how death gets you. You weren't paying attention, and death's coming. You ran out into a street and you didn't look both ways. You gotta remember your preschool training for civilization. What Good. I also yeah. find... It's so funny because uh, the deal that they made, right? From Agatha, it was like, okay, um, I'll deliver the gay guy to you and you will let me live on. Basically what her deal was eternally. Um, so, But it was never a counter deal, like if it, her breaking it didn't automatically mean that Aubrey Plaza would automatically just kill her right yeah. away, it just meant that she wouldn't live on eternally or for, for forever or for a long time. So I don't understand how her breaking the deal means that she would be killed off immediately. It just meant that she wouldn't live for long. Yeah, there's no... Was, was Death always trying to get Agatha the entire time? For some reason, I, I can't. I, 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 not, I guess no more so? than she gets everybody. Anyone else? Yeah, like I don't know. Yeah, but if there's no reason for Agatha to actually die, she seems like a healthy woman. Uh, so I don't think that she's gonna like suffer. Well, yeah, she um, like, that's how she random... stays alive, right? She draws like is that, is that a part of it? She draws youth out of the all the witches she kills and stuff to stay young. I don't, I don't, I don't think. I don't. I think that's how she gets to become very powerful because all the other witches live for a long time and they don't do yeah, that. Yeah. Right, right. So yeah. I think witches there's many just ways live to long anyway. Yeah, either they perform rituals or it's just a natural part of their lifespan or something. Um, I'm not sure actually. I'm not sure. But yeah, but but we have to have a fight because we're almost done with the TV show. But there's still one more episode. Um, but yeah, they, <laughs> do you see what I mean? Though, a... like, we've got um, what is it? 20 or well, 15 minutes left of this episode it's like you got another one after this what? yeah this feels like the finale but it yeah. actually isn't um so yeah the gay kid shows up and he blasts death through the the side of the house and that gives him enough time to i, I to have agatha say or, or no he he juices up agatha he shoots her with his blue beams of magic and he's like don't take it all um because he's really he's here to save agatha 
for some you know, reason. Yeah. She, for some reason, he's here. He, he showed up to fight death to save Agatha. That's yeah. how much he really likes her. Um, so he he's he's gonna blast her with the blue beams, and he says, "Don't take all my power and kill me like you did all those other people, <laughs> especially Wu, who tried to save yeah, you. And you did I, that uh, for her. You the, literally did this like today to another woman who, would, by all accounts, was a good person and trying to was, save you. You didn't just help my brother. You you were motivated to do that because you felt that if you did that, you could then get your power back. You know, like she hasn't done anything selfless for him. And then you just add on top, like not only how she is personally like. She was the one who was trying to kill Wanda. Now, bear in mind, Wanda, Wanda was the actual villain of WandaVision. Mm -hmm. So there's that. Root. But I mean, she did all the evil things there, and then it's just all of the evil things she's done throughout her many, many years. Um, she's killed a lot of people. Oh, I'm and sure they want to elaborate on that, to... Fringy. Oh, yeah, that yeah, would be, be, nice be weird. Yeah, it leave that vague. Yeah. That would it. be completely damning. <laughs> final <laughs> damning indictment to her character. But they wouldn't would do that. They, would, really they wouldn't be stupid. <laughs> they wouldn't be that Yeah, the stupid. Salem Seven. We wouldn't need to see how, the, you know, like what maybe brought them to be, right? That would be bad. That would be a bad This move. is like showing Hitler <laughs> pulling the levers of the gas chambers personally. So we've got um, Agatha juices her up. Or sorry, Agatha is juiced up by Gay Kid. He blasts her with the blue beams. And she's like, ah, ha, 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 I'm getting stronger and stronger, ah. Um, so, yeah. Um, so Agatha gets her powers back, or at least she gets a lot of her power back from Gay Kid. And Gay Kid gets blasted back, and he starts to look a little bit like gray and desiccated like the other people are, but he gets better, he's okay. Agatha didn't take all of his magic away, which I actually don't even know why she didn't. Mm. Um, she likes him. Remember, he reminds her I don't know. of his, his son. Nicholas, yeah. Um, there you go. Makes Agatha sense. says that he's he's not bad, and Gay Kid says neither are you. So yeah, they have that. Um, anyway, they mm -hmm. they Agatha is even if she's powered up, she says we can't fight death, and that she should be the one to go with death so that Gay Kid can live, even though Gay Kid is not in any harm from death. Well, just... But I guess he doesn't know that. Maybe she's tricking him. But also, just because it happens a little bit before, uh, Death uses her green magic to throw a ball of, of stuff at Agatha, and Agatha blocks the ball with, with magic stuff. Oh, yeah, they, they throw back magic balls. Like, I, 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 I don't know. I want to... <laughs> fuck is wrong with you that's people? That's the extent, <laughs> like, why that's do, the extent why do you do of this? the creativity with witchcraft. The, the most uh, the, creative and interesting it thing feels they like a child. Is just they just throw colored balls at each other. And then other. Death uses her death magic to throw a ball of energy, and Agatha blocks the ball of energy with her counter magic. What the fuck are you talking about? A little bad anime. Yeah. Like, <laughs> God. Um, so, when... Agatha says that, no, we can't fight death. I'll be the one to go with her. Gay Kid actually says to death, no, I'll go. And Agatha's like, okay, yeah, take him. Mm. And then she walks off. And I'm like, yeah, I guess this is, this is in character for Agatha. Yeah. But then telepathically, Gay Kid asks Agatha if this is how Nikki died. Oh. <gasps> Okay. Um, Agatha then kisses Rio, and she floats up in the air, and then Agatha floats back down, and she dies. She turns into a skeleton, and she goes into the, the lawn, and then flowers and mushrooms sprout. Agatha is dead. And then dramatic music plays like, I'm supposed to give a shit. I know, right? It's like, okay. Well, it's it's, it's multi-layered. I'm sitting here like, Agatha's not dead. <laughs> like, and of Obviously course, not. the funny thing is, it's like, uh, the writers will be like, uh, actually, she is. And I'm like, shut the fuck up. No, she's not. Yeah, it's, dramatic, sad music plays. Everyone is sad. All of the flowers and mushrooms pop up where she has died and gone back into the earth. This is <laughs> good. Agatha is a terrible... Well, the sun there. comes out, so I assume that's symbolic the that uh, that's evil true. has been yeah. defeated. Evil dies tonight. Oh, it seems like evil they want you to feel sad time. about this. They do. I, I, they I, really I, I want you to feel nice sad and about peaceful, that. Not like for uh, the lady that she sucked all the powers out where she withered away into a skeleton. No, yeah. we don't care about anyone else. Agatha is the main... It's sad that she's. Dead. I she's genuinely gone. don't get. I don't get it. Like, do they not realize they keep writing her, explaining all of her evil deeds? Even but, like, even if you didn't know about her past, only the things that she does in this show means she mm -hmm. deserves to die. She morally deserves death. 
She's a killer. It's she is so a betrayer and a backstabber. On humanity, she constantly murders everybody. She should it's die. So, it's so strange in that they seem to think it's like endearing. Like, ah, yeah, she's she's an anti-hero. Oh, that, guy. No, she's not even bad. fucking close. Yeah, no, <laughs> that's she's just evil. Again. That's, you know, yeah. it's just like, oh, she is she. So there she goes doing evil. Uh, oh, and yeah, I like as, how they... Uh, uh, the question yeah. was asked, and it's fair, but I, 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 I don't like to be too good faith for these fucking writers. But uh, if Billy's the abomination, why would Agatha dying solve it? Um, I guess you could argue there's some kind of retarded death math. It's like he's not supposed to exist, and she was supposed to. So killing her is balanced. Why the would sheet she? Or some bullshit. Should, should she even exist? She didn't she be alive for like three hundred years by just. Also, this just opens up all the questions, and they're not going to try and answer this shit. They're like, "Leave us alone. We don't know how death works. Go away." I mean, you wrote it, so you didn't have <laughs> you to wrote write it. it. Like, <laughs> you wrote it, yeah. You didn't have to make this show. You didn't have to do the story about <laughs> so it Agatha. Said, but Abomination I, yeah. is a different character. You're right. That's right. He is. But he's okay. <laughs> he's chill. Lame. Yeah, wait, the Hulk son? Didn't I call him? No, 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 yeah, Tim Roth. Okay, Im imagine called, having Tim Roth back Hulk and they son. used him for that. It's so unfair. Tim Roth's an actual actor. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 He was Cal Lightman. Uh, so, um, yeah, Agatha's dead. Thank God. There was much rejoicing. Uh, but Gay Kid is sad for some reason. Um, Gay Kid notices the little brooch on the ground with the Mother Maiden Crone thingy on it. It's like her little thing. And he grabs it. Um, and he walks down the street in his <laughs> the, outfit and his costume. All the fucking and everyone's like looking at him. Traumatized like, all the neighbors there residents being like, oh, of Westview. Oh, being like, good uh, God, we did we down. just avoid being apocalypsed again? seriously move. <laughs> But yeah, yes. he 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 he's in his goofy outfit. He walks past him. He gets in his Subaru and he drives away. <laughs> it's, it's, like, it's, it's actually kind of funny. Like, it's got a witch, and then you just get in. A, you get in just an average, boring car. It is a little away. like crappy superhero <laughs> cosplay fail. Like it, it just. <laughs> is he old enough to drive? <laughs> Is he is human he, How old was he? I think so. Does he have a... Yeah, I assume he got a license in the last three years. Yeah. I, but I how I, old was he when he possessed the boy? Oh. Ten? How, he, how, when does a bar mitzvah happen? Because we can use... It's a bar mitzvah. When? How old are you for bar mitzvah? <laughs> so you have a bar mitzvah at 12 or 13. So let's say that you're 13. <laughs> sure. Um, he was definitely 13 at the bar mitzvah, so yeah. now he's 16. Okay. Which I means mean, you maybe can't physically. get a learning permit. You can get a learning permit. I was about to say, because yeah. Yeah. in Australia, you'd have to, you need supervision. You can't just, like, drive on your own. You've got to be supervised for If we're going to be nice to the or show, yeah, which is rare, cool. we'll simply say he may very well be learning, and that was enough for him to use it, and it probably was illegal, but it's fine, he's home. Ah, I see. Okay. Driving the car is the easy part. Learning all the rules so that you don't die or kill other people, that's the complicated part. Yeah. Well, I was more so worried about his, like, mind, because he was pretty young when he possessed the boy, and, um... They don't yeah, even, they don't even want to, to know, yeah. That, no. yeah. They don't yeah. want to address that in a million years. Yeah. Um, Jet makes a good point. He is okay with killing other people when it's not their <laughs> fault, so, yeah. Fuck. Yeah. Uh, so <laughs> oh, you can we goes, can wrap up this episode so quick. You can yeah, we it. can. Yeah, he go he goes home. He goes. He gets in a Subaru and he drives home. Apparently, he was gone for like twenty four hours. They mm -hmm. say that he was gone all day. They were worried about him. Uh, he his parents love him. His parents are the two good characters. They they love their son. They love their gay <laughs> Jewish son. They've nailed who that. Had his mind erased. Um, and he goes into his room. And he notices a lot of weird stuff in his room, like <gasps> the things that were on the road, like Lorna Wu's poster and the yellow leaves and the witch statues and the shoes. And he says, oh, my God, the road was me the whole time. Made I made road. it with wow. my mind. Oh my God. And then and then someone says boo behind him and he gets spooked. And then the episode ends. Thank goodness. The reason why yeah. this is a twist is so annoying is you. why would you? It's like, oh, see, when we present this information to you for the first time. 
Now you understand the twist. When were you ever in a position before this to believe that he could create the road and that it would be based on things that were in his room? Yeah, like, uh, sorry, I, I've, we've spent 12 seconds in his room. How could I have possibly even begun? <laughs> well, that, and that even together? if we had spent it's all the time in there, crazy power. would we truly speculate? Like, oh, he probably subconsciously generated an entire forest filled with all kinds of insane things that could kill you and have to be solved trial things. Yeah, because, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah that, that follows. That makes yeah. sense. That's Seems like a reasonable thing to even, like, speculate on. Absolutely, for sure. Maybe he's just a huge fan of, like, true crime or, like, horror movies and, and... But he's... you can solve a crime. This is madness. This it's is magic. It's madness. random magic bullshit. Uh, yeah. Anyway, that episode is... Over. That episode's done. One we have one more, more. episode. I, I was legit like, how go. the fuck are you going to fill a whole episode? What is it that you have left? These, these are my shortest notes. The the, yeah. the shortest notes that I took are on this episode, especially when I realized that half of it can be summed up in just a couple sentences. Off you but, go. Um, I guess for, <laughs> guess for dramatic effect. Um, yeah, episode nine, Maiden Mother Crone. The year is 1750 wow. AD, because CE is cringe, and so is BCE. Fucking cringe. Um, Agatha is running through the woods and she's pregnant, and she puts a lemon in her mouth and tries to give birth to a baby by a tree. Um, yep. she because sees... that's how labor works. I mean, I'm sure there's a reason for it. I, like, I'm sure, I, I'm legitimately sure oh, there's a reason for it. It's just, it's just kind of silly. talking yeah. about the fact that it seems pretty easy in total. The uh, baby just sort of comes out, yeah. and then she's like, well, there it is. And it's like, oh. They like, uh, don't make it look like it happens for very long either. It's a it's it's um, a it's a dangerous process, uh, labor, especially before medical science was able to take care of you, especially with no people around too. But um, so yeah, it worked out just fine for us. Uh, I, I I looked up if the lemon did mean anything. Apparently, it doesn't. Uh, people are saying that uh, lemons can be no, good for, for pregnancy the because they have like vitamins and stuff, um, because they're they're citrus fruits, um, but it's. It, I don't think it's actually, like, a thing for pregnancy. It's something for her. Yeah, I think it's something just for her to bite on. Um, yeah. Which actually raises questions, because what a weird thing to choose to bite on. A lemon? <laughs> That's going to be, like, it's going to taste like a, like you're biting into a lemon. Mm -hmm. Which maybe that'll, like, distract you. Like, oh, I've got a lemon. And you don't, like, you for a moment, you forget that your your vaginal canal is just like, oh, my baby time. Um, That's what it But says. also, it's it's 1750. I don't know where you got a lemon, but that's probably not something you could just go get. But that's all right. She's a wizard. Um, uh, witch. She oh, it. that's true. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Um, yeah, so she's trying to give birth to this baby. She's not having a great time. Not having a great time. It's a bit stressful. Uh, and she sees Rio, death. And she is uh, walking towards her. And Rio says, it must be. <gasps> oh no, Agatha's like, please let the baby live because you're death. And also we have like a relationship at this point. Yeah, just, um, I just to be clear, because this is an interpretation that I've read that most people have. It's that death was popping up here because it's like, hey, your kid has to die. That's just the way things work. And because death is already in love with Agatha, she agrees to give the baby however many years. That's what we're yeah. supposed to take from this. That's insane. Death not only is in love with you, like the concept of death is in love with you, but the death is willing to give you something that I presume no one on fucking uh, the universe has ever had before, which is just, yeah, I'll give you some extra years for the hell of it, because I love what you. What an insanely special privilege. It's crazy. By the way, yeah. with no downsides whatsoever. You know how it deals with death? Yeah, 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 normal, yeah. Like, yeah. deals with demons and death, depending on the, the, like, the mythology of a story. Like, they could be positive or negative, but often they have, like, you get what you want, but, like, monkey's paw kind of situation. This is just a strict positive. Where do you meet death? Like, death is shop. there an app or a, like, <laughs> a, a club? <laughs> I forest? found myself, I found myself <laughs> sitting there waiting for the, in exchange for, yeah, you know? Yeah, but... 
No, this is why it's <laughs> good to be on good terms with death. This is why it's good to be scissor in death so that your baby can get some <laughs> years. I guess it so. It all makes sense. It all makes sense in the mythology if you read it. It's in the... Min-maxing her RPG yeah, relationships, the... I guess. Oh, yeah, there's a whole chapter in Edith Hamilton. It's really, it's really good. It's really good. Hey, guess what? Death says, sure, you can have more time. You can, Your baby can have time. All right, yeah. Off she goes. Uh, she squirts out the baby, and oh boy, it's a, it's a boy. Your name's Nicholas. And she says that she spoke no spell or incantation. She made this baby from scratch. Um, that's so, an interesting mm -hmm. line that you uh, could have potentially done something with in a different show. Uh, however, well, there's a there's a comment that I saw from Catherine Hahn about that line and Nicholas Scratch. Uh, do you know about this or no? No, Catherine Hahn is who again? Main actress Agatha. Uh, okay, Agatha's actress. Okay. Uh, I'm paraphrasing like crazy, but you can go find it. She says something along the lines of, um, "Made from scratch, no spells or incantations. It's like strictly a woman thing. No men were involved with the creation of this baby either." What? Because Sorry? I had. Um, and, uh, the, oh my god! It's, it's like it's, the acolyte again. Apparently, men can't it's part even of make babies anymore. It was something like, like I saw people speculating like it's part of the show thematically. It's it's a women's show. It's for women. It's by women. It's supposed to mean like the power of women when not like involved with men. And I was just sitting there like, wait, I thought <laughs> like I, I we thought we don't even get credit for the easy part. <laughs> Jesus Christ! I, even, like, <laughs> I was just confused. Damn. I was like, I thought by scratch she meant very much like physical natural human mechanics that it had nothing to do with mystical well, yeah i thought it i one of the things i thought it was interesting was the idea that you have someone who has for so long done these supernatural incredible things and yet she has to rely on a purely natural process in order to create a life that she loves and that's like you could do something with that as a concept this kind of awe that a powerful witch can't well, do this with magic it still requires like this this element of like well both of the sexes coming together to create this life through a natural process and it's this it's this thing that not even the most powerful magic can do i saw a bunch of speculation that it might have been death's baby with her and i was like what the mm, fuck that's not how it works uh, well then that, that i saw the people say like they deliberately didn't mention the father because there is no father and i was like why would well, that was my other it question. <laughs> it, wasn't, it would imply that she loves somebody at some point who was a guy, or she just wanted a baby, so she went out and got pregnant by somebody, or like there's a there's a whole implied story behind how this happened. That and I guess they're just going, nah, don't worry about it. It's just she's just pregnant. Don't even think about the fact that how that happens. It's just that straight men are not allowed into this show, or any. I mean, of you the get shows. that feeling. Well, we got the parents. They had five weird. minutes. Yeah. Oh, sorry, I over-exaggerated. Yeah, they had four that. minutes. <laughs> maybe, maybe I'm, I'm very surprised that the dad was not killed off in some, like, gruesome... <laughs> yeah, or he wasn't, like, an alcoholic <laughs> dead or if, loser dad. Or if when he came out yeah. to them, the dad's like, you know, I'm, I'm pretty gay, too. <laughs> I'm proud of you, son. <laughs> I divorced your mother when I learned she was gay. Boyf is with me now. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, I don't know what the fuck they were doing with that, um... Whatever. I <laughs> I just thought it was an interesting line in isolation that I thought you could. No, do yeah, I think it's better like without all that nonsense. The idea yeah. that she's proud of having created something without using magic. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, oh, well, it would. Yeah. Um. So she takes the baby through the woods, and then she stumbles a bunch uh, across a bunch of witches in the woods, and they let her into their little secret safe circle, and they notice the baby, and she's like, "Oh, I haven't eaten in days," and she tricks them. And then she kills all of them and sucks yep. out her power. Their power. Like the first thing that she did. Yep, we're yep. already going. Yep. She's massacring. She's, She's already getting... murdering. Here she goes. And they, um, even, they even have this, the sounds of them screaming as they're yep. trying to work together to stop this from happening. Yep. So they even, what yeah, they said like, but world. we let you in, but we let you into our circle. Ah, uh, please what? no, don't. What? Like, we helped you. Why? Because Agatha's evil. Yeah, but she's so cool, she is though. She's an we evil like character. We but like yeah, now. this essentially begins a long cycle of her going from place to place, wandering from village to village in the, 17, in the 1700s, where she finds witches, kills them all to suck out their power. And as Nicholas gets older, as he grows, 
she uses Nicholas yeah, to he get participates witches. In it. Yeah, yeah. Right. he participates and recognizes that she's killing witches, and she uses him to murder witches. Yep. So, like, he'll steal something from witches and then run to Agatha, and then Agatha will kill all of them after and they so go chasing Nicholas. It is at this point that many people just be like, "What the hell am I watching? Why? Why am I watching this? Why are we? Why are we watching this? J just murders, murders, and murders, and murders, and murders. That's." Yeah. Why uh, would this uh, ever be the choice? Oh, this and ironically, be, I'm confused. Bear in mind, this is meant to be like the flashback that further humanizes Agatha. That's that's the point of <laughs> But Frankie, it does. She that she sings a song with her kid. Oh. Like like in between the it, murders. Isn't it crazy as well that one one of them opens with one of the ladies being like, Oh, are, are you lost? Like, are you okay? And then the kid steals, and it's like, "Oh, hey, come back here!" And then, and then you just hear them screaming in agony as they're they're having their their life force like extracted from them by Agatha. You know, etymologically speaking, the root of agony is Agatha. Ba I mean, basically, like that's all she does. It's just I don't understand. I don't know why they wrote this. For many years, she goes around the countryside and all of the the colonies and she is just is killing witch murdering witches and stealing their power and it portrays all of the witches in this show as being like really nice and chill and helpful and yeah, she kind. killed all the nice ones only the mean ones were left um if you open that up we'll see um <laughs> it just i don't know what the fuck is wrong with people how does this have it says forty eight thousand likes but five thousand reposts Oh, yes. is that oh this quote oh Curious. I, well shit. in any case just she in just case goes people around murdering random witches who want to help her yeah in case people can't see uh it's a the tweet says all wanda and agatha wanted was to live in peace with their kids and it shows them both crying at their certain parts of their stories in mom and in in agatha and they, um like just for whoever's left likes. who needs to hear this Wanda's children aren't real. They're not. <laughs> They're not she real. made them up and they then she killed real. people and, to and get the them scene, back. Yeah. And the scene in this one was her trying to take them from the real mother. Uh, yeah. That she had mind controlled to go on a rampage and kill all of these people in the, the, the Illuminati. As well as ha after having killed Dude. all of the, the sorcerers at Kamataj as well. Agatha also wanted after a bit of power. And then underneath that is, God forbid women have hobbies. <laughs> I don't it's, even... so it's, it's mean, right? Like, it's yeah, actually, like, like, whatever. This, this, but okay, whatever. It feels pretty like... difficult to meme it when there's, like, nothing redeemable or inspiring about either of these fuckers. They're just evil, like, if, selfish, If we were dealing characters. with a villain that had, like, really interesting motivations or did something really good at the different junctures of their life, like, I don't know, what the fuck is happening here? This whole backstory we're getting for Agatha is just horrendous. It's, well, it's um... just literally the, all, what happens is that uh, Agatha is spared from something really horrible that has happened to people of, of you know, losing a child. Um, she is spared of that misery. And the first yeah. and the first thing that she does, the very first thing that you see her do is find a bunch of ladies who want to help her and then she kills them. It, yeah, uh, and that's like her plan. That is, the, the, she yep. is. The show fails to present to us any reason that could even begin to justify why there is. She's not being hunted. She's not being chased by what it presents. Witches are just like operating out in the open. Um, in this wonderful just multicultural seventeen fifty yeah, six seven... landscape that we have. I'm gonna um, bring that up. Uh, bit, it bit is... awkward in America. A uh, bit awkward, but oh yeah. There was quite the racial harmony back in 1756. Um, yeah, but that is uh, that the the least. Of hey man, she's uh, an equal opportunity kills depiction. everyone. Which okay, doesn't matter who <laughs> or what you are. Boom, boom, boom. And that's, what, that's what makes her so lovable. And... Well, yeah, there's well, a lot of like... women power happening in this ep uh, episode. Oh yeah, I'm this sure. is. You know, I think about, you know, Saving Private Ryan and Band of Brothers and all of the, you know, like the, the stories of men and brotherhood and the bonds and the da da da. And then I think about, well, let's check out this woman show, Agatha All Along. And you're like, Jesus Christ, she's killing so many women. Oh my God. Oh. 
Very leave strange. some alive, please. I'm gonna uh, say the line. Imagine yeah. if it was a man doing this. To women? The thing oh, is, geez. I can't even like envision them making yeah. a show. It's like, what did even look like? Doctor Strange, just his grandfather was killing everybody. Well, great, I, mean, great, I was grandfather. wondering if this was happening. What I was wondering is like, is the idea that she's trying to recruit as much power as possible so that when Death returns, that she can like defeat her or something? That was my first thought, but the the it answer is actually no. No, that I yeah, that's that's what I mean. I was like, that that's terrible. Is that what you're going for, though? You're just like, no, she's just yeah, doing I'm it. I'm killing, just I'm killing everybody else because I don't want to die is not an excuse. But that's what I mean. no, like, they're my, not being... My first, expect, uh, my first thing was like, oh, that's that's still terrible. But then it's like, oh, it's, 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 it's actually for no reason other than to advance her own, to just accrue more power. Mm -hmm. that's, a, yes. that's it. That's the only reason she, she does it. Multiple times in the show, she says, like, this, witches have to kill to survive. But they never say why. Being a witch seems to be a really chill thing. The only people who seem to persecute witches are mostly Agatha. Seems yeah, to be the much, witch yeah. urge. Um, <laughs> yeah, like they don't see people rounding up witches or doing like witch trials or anything like that. It just doesn't exist. It doesn't happen in the show. It's never mentioned or alluded to. I don't know. Like. They never show her being oppressed or people chasing after her or finding out like, oh, how come wherever this woman goes, a, a wake of dead woman is left behind? Like, I, I, this is nothing. This is not at the stage of history where this sort of thing would be difficult to track. <laughs> also, just um, like, the only one that's ever presented as being able, like, uh, it's like she would be known as the witch sucker. Mm -hmm. You know, like, specifically the power. Because, like, do we ever see anyone else sucking anything from anybody? I guess Wanda counter sucks her. But I remember but us covering that, like that, and we literally said, like, she starts sucking her, and then she's sucking her, and, and, and we, I don't know, the film, it just says that she wins. And you're like, oh, okay. My, one of my favorite things about this sequence is that, I mean, it's obvious that the song was, like, made up by her child, right? And that's, like, a myth that she came up with, this witch's road. But in in modern times, this gay guy has a vinyl, an entire recorded official vinyl of that song playing in his room. Oh, yeah. By Lorna, yeah, because it's like a spell that she, because a song is a spell she used to protect her daughter. Yeah. So Who has Agatha, her own demise because of Agatha. Agatha made it really popular enough that like another witch singer picked it up and made it a part of her album, I guess, is what they want us to think happened. Because it's not just like a random song that... Because even while, essentially, the day that Nicholas dies, a witch, a witch approaches her and asks about the song in the road. Hmm. So I have no clue how it spreads because of this one kid singing it. Now all the witches know about it, especially if she kills all the witnesses. Well, remember, it spreads exactly. such that like, basically every witch ever has heard of it, but no characters in the MCU universe ever has ever heard of this. And also the witches just don't know that it's obviously bullshit because no one has ever been able to do it ever. And everyone who pursues it dies. It's a, yeah, what, the song why is Why doesn't Doctor Strange, enough. why doesn't he get rid of her? I guess he just never like just heard of her, or never. The, you you'd know, think the ancient one would want to deal with this shit. He, oh, he wouldn't want to dare to mess with Agatha. She's way too honest. cool. But it's too, it's even, too stupidly unbelievable. Ever... There's this yeah. insane scaling power level thing that's in the world, and just no faction cares about it throughout all of history. Bullshit. Add it to the pile. Yeah. 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 Um. But People yeah, basically. Yeah. Huh. I mean, people know all, all all sorts of things about this song and this road and everything, except of the little fact, a little tidbit of information that everybody dies. I think that one of the mentions... The only, what's the collective information in episode two? They say, like, Richard's road is not even real. Doesn't someone say, like, everyone who goes there dies? I think someone says that casually. It was part of why we said, why the fuck would you ever go there if that was something you knew? So, yeah. yeah, there's a story that Agatha's done it, or does she spread that right, lie? Right, yeah. Because it's a lie. Because that's a lie, yeah. She's um, the only witch to ever have made it through the road, I think, is another... It's it's all garbage. So people know... Like, how does she have a reputation and also 
have the ability to keep luring witches into this to kill all of them. How come? Okay, well, it's like I guess we get to it. Um, the, basically, what happens is, yeah, Nicholas's time runs out, his borrowed time, and he dies one night um, in his sleep. It's very sad. Uh, Nicholas is an accessory to many, many, many murders. He knew what he was doing. Uh, he's old enough. He knew what he was doing. He even yep. asks, like, how come we kill witches? And he even says to her, like, oh, don't worry. We can kill witches tomorrow. We don't have to do it today. Um, yeah, he knows what he's doing. Fuck that kid. Uh, so they show a montage of Agatha building covens, saying she needs a coven to go down the road so that all the witches can get what they can desire. But it's just a trick to lure them all into the woods so that she can murder them all and steal their power. And she does this through, well, through the centuries. For hundreds, hundreds of, years. of years, she does this. And at no point does one of the witches, uh, is, is a witch strapped with a gat while they were walking through Compton and just blasts her with a Glock or stabs her with a knife. Every single time she says, you are all stinky and you suck, and they use their power and attack her, and then she sucks it all up and kills them. Which you'd think that if you do this over centuries, and these are all women... You, you'd think that one of them would just pull out a gun and shoot her instead of use their magic. But I guess every single time, every single witch that she uses attacks her with their, their flute powers and she sucks them up and kills them. And I guess it's like peeing, where you can't just like stop midstream or something. You just have to keep, keep on, I don't know. Anyway, yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, she is really lucky that one of them didn't like tackle her and stab her. Well, yeah, like she's legitimately that, you know. super lucky that yeah, they none show of us the every time. Ever... All of them do the yeah. exact same thing every single that. time. Great. Yeah, great. They never yeah. use any they never use any secular means of self-defense. Hey, no know, pepper right? spray, taser, gun, knife. And, and how many how many families well, what has if she one of them destroyed? How many What if, what if one of them didn't yep. attack? Yeah, what if they said, "Nah, all right, I guess you're you're yeah, not well, they for real." Run off or yeah. they walk. Yeah. yeah. Every every or they time they try again. And they all attack at the same time. They don't wait and see that one attacks and then watch and go like, oh shit, better not do that. Um, but also, like, what, it, what are you supposed to think as a viewer while watching this? Like, yeah, go Agatha. Like, really? <laughs> what? Like, this show is unhinged. <laughs> it is. I don't understand. I don't get it. The hinges are off. Yeah. It was, um, so th I was waiting for us to go over this part before saying it. So I read somewhere... It was one of the discussions on this show. It was like it's so tragic that she's killing people to 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 satisfy death to keep you know the kid alive. But like she continues to kill shit tons of people after his death. More so. Exactly. That's not that's not what's happening. She's just doing it because she wants to. Yeah. It, it's um you you guys remember that scene from The Rise of Skywalker when um Palpatine dies basically and he blasts. Ray with his um mm -hmm. freaking lightning, right? And Ray just uh throws it back at him and yeah. he still keeps going even though it's killing him. Yeah. Um and there's the question of why didn't he freaking stop? That's basically suicide. I have the same question for these witches, basically. Well based on the remark from uh gay kid earlier it seems like they want you to believe that once it has started they can't voluntarily stop it which for some reason it stop it. doesn't seem right yeah. to me but whatever yeah apparently she's the i don't know how the it. fuck that works but whatever you say yeah whatever <laughs> so yeah the uh she does this until essentially present day well, and the implication is that Killing. that was her plan with her group, but, like, her group didn't have any powers, so that doesn't make any sense. Like, the, like the, the way it's presented is it was her plan, essentially, to lure all of the crew that she gets there together to do it, but, like, uh, don't multiple of them? They can't do anything. Right? I'm, I, I'm not mistaken, right? Like, multiple of them don't actually have powers. Yes. Mm-hmm. So why, so why did so why why would it it seems like that was her plan was to lure them in to like steal their powers right that's the heavy implication but how could she have even done it I just also I guess I'm amused by how there's no they're all like different witches but they all still have the basic attack the same basic like a video power, game yeah. of fire laser yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah so like why she recruited a crew that she couldn't even like take advantage of anyway 
So it's not even like a good reveal. Because it doesn't make sense. Because the crew that she got together all had obvious problems that they needed to resolve. So it's not even congruent with what what was being presented here. That like, oh, she was surprised that the road even appeared. You know, because it was something that she made up. It doesn't make sense, is what I'm saying. Oh, no. it, it doesn't actually align with what we know about these characters at this point. Um, the other thing I saw speculated, but I don't see any evidence for it, unless I missed something, was that um, it's a tragic story because Agatha gave up her son as a deal with death for the Darkhold. You remember the visual? Yeah, that's right, but, but like, that's not... There's just that's... N there's no evidence for this <laughs> anywhere, like... Um, and if someone mm. said, like, well, you're supposed to put it together, I'd be like, really? <laughs> uh, you know? Mm -hmm. I, I don't, like, uh, I just I just feel like this is a bit much to interpret. I, I've got nothing to work with at all. And then, of course, like, how does how does death feel about the dark hole being transferred over to Wanda and then, I'm destroyed, and then in destroyed in every... Yeah, you know, it's like... How how does any of that make sense? And I just I'm not sure. You know, if you told me gun to my head, I had to guess if the writers were going for that. I'd be like, I don't think so. It seems like if yeah, that was I'm something that they were thing. trying to work with, they might have made any mention of it whatsoever. Um, yeah, but it, and it doesn't help at all with anything. Yeah, <laughs> like being terrible. Yeah. Why would anyone like her yeah. more if she gave up her son I... for power? Yeah, like that's. <laughs> I, I don't know. Yep. I mean, yeah, people yeah. still defend Wanda, so fuck it. I'm sure there are people out there who are like, no, actually, Agatha with it. I, I don't know. It, it's, it's harder with Agatha because it's so just so, like, obviously evil. Um, uh, I, I, that is there. You go, Agatha's backstory. Yeah. A murderous rampage, claiming what we can only believe to be hundreds upon hundreds, of lives taken she no. should be a scourge to anyone around her at any witch should pull out a pistol whenever they see her and shoot Remember her X, all these witches did not like her knew she killed people knew she power sucked people knew the road was dangerous knew the road didn't exist but they all agreed to go with her yep mm -hmm. they did the whole the show thing. is just annihilated at the core every character sucks <laughs> like it's it's just a complete yeah. fucking mess I think Sharon's like the only one who sort of is off the. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're right. She probably is one of the best uh, characters. She's a in the show. tragic. Yeah, she's not the best. And meanwhile, is. what is her reward I for that? The yeah, nobody knows what happened to her. Meanwhile, nope. Agatha gets to live on for eternity. Yep, Sharon well, is so dead. She's an innocent person. There, but yeah, <laughs> but yeah, uh, it's it's uh, just a tragic, tragic, tragic. One more thing Sharon. I realize about this scene. Is that, I mean, at the beginning of the show, it kind of makes sense of uh, her sort of strategy of like sucking up the power with these people. And you could explain why it didn't work of like pissing them off and having them attack her because she really doesn't have powers, right? So that verbal, uh, I guess, attack is the only thing she has left. But back then, when she still had capacity, wouldn't it? make more sense for her to sort of like bait people and attack them and when they attack back just stop and just suck in their power oh yeah like, of, like you're saying why bother with the entire horrible. system just yeah yeah and it would explain why this time it no just witnesses didn't work. secluded area back well, yeah, but... then it would just they would always defend themselves if she attacked them right you'd think i mean because like what you're getting at is that she always relied on the system of here we go, let's do the song. Oh no, it didn't open the road. You all suck. You're all the worst. You're all bad <laughs> until they shoot at her. As opposed to, wouldn't it be faster, easier, and uh, more effective to, and, and account of what you said, Rags, to like, make that the focus. To just find witches, and then be like, hey, gotta show you something. You know, whatever have you. Uh, come see this. I gotta show you this. This is the, Can I come back with you to do this? We can blah, blah, blah. And then just be like, I'm gonna kill you temporary blast of crappy magic and then the person goes oh my goodness i'm gonna kill you and then boom and then mm -hmm. suck them dry i guess um yeah i mean th this is obviously adjacent to the problems we highlighted of just what happens if people don't attack her what happens if they attack her with yeah. physical conventional means like, uh, they don't show any of that because they're not accounting for any even of it the 
even the show displays different kinds of like witchery and wizardry i guess like what if someone specializes in tarot it just, just flips out some kind of like gravity <laughs> no they like uh stuff. i don't know gambit or bullseye gambit, they throw cards yeah throw cards at you slice you up mm. mm -hmm. uh yeah so there you go there's our flashback um agatha uh it, it cuts to uh, the first episode where the door appears for the first time in the basement of her house as she tries to bait all of the characters of this show to attack her. Um, because uh, it turns out, as we said, gay kid in his room uh, is what was needed to make the road appear. He has the ability to... He's like the magician tarot card that they had mentioned sometime earlier that I don't care about. Um, but he can make, like, reality become, his imagination become reality. Um, Wanda powers, stuff, things. Um, now, Agatha isn't, like, dead dead. She's physically dead, but she appears to him as a witch. Um, she is very much, like, alive in the sense of she's a spirit who can think and communicate with people. Um, she does not cease existing or move on to an afterlife that everybody else has to. Um, and Lord knows at any point there could be a fucking spell that'll give her her body back or yep. give her a new body or make her real. Mm -hmm. You know that yep. it's just, if they continue you know, this, that'll probably body. be something they yep. do. Oh yeah, or someone else's body. Yeah, and you hey, that gives them an excuse to recast and... as well. Wow. Um, but yeah, uh, she tells gay kid that, yep, you're the one who made all the stuff for the road. Uh, unlike Wanda, you did something interesting with the power. Uh, she tells him that the song never meant anything. It's just a ruse that she used over the hundreds of years to lure in gullible witches and then murder them. It wasn't real until he made it real with his powers. Okay. Um, now he says, oh my God, if I made the road, then I killed everybody. And he laments the fact that he's a killer. But he doesn't lament the fact that he specifically tried to murder two of them, uh, he, but he's sad that his subconscious power created a scenario that led to the deaths of people. And Agatha, Agatha said, no, actually, you ended up saving a life because the plan was I was just going to kill all of those witches there in the basement on day one. Such a funny way to make him feel better that he has not thought that through at all. What she just says there, like, it, it's amazing. It's like, yeah, you kind of saved them because I was going to kill them. Oh, yeah, okay. Jen got out. Yeah, Jen escaped and she got her powers back and she floated away. The rest are dead. Is... But they were gonna. I was gonna kill them all anyway. So really, through through a crazy Earthsats bizarre, convoluted Ruth Goldberg magical contraption of a show, you actually saved Jen's life. Stupid. Really stupid. Good stuff. No, it's great. Um. Jen crawls out of the ground outside of Westview. We mentioned this earlier. Jen yeah, is free. She, she survived. Herself. She floats away. Um, Good for her. She'll, so be, she'll probably never come she... back. <laughs> probably, probably not. Probably not. No. You're a side um, character and a side I... character's side story. So best of luck, yeah. lady. Um, so Agatha goes and uh, she tells Gay Kid that, yeah, you might feel bad about all the death and everything, but if you want to be a witch and survive, you need to get used to this feeling, which is something she told Nicholas hundreds of years ago, uh, the accessory to her murders. So Gay Kid goes down to the basement, Agatha's basement, where the door of the road is still there. Mm hmm. OK, it's sealed up behind them in the first episode when they went, but I guess it didn't actually. It's still there. So you can open it up and go in again if you want, which if is, it is strange. If it is fully functional, then the Salem Seven should have had their trials. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. That would have been fun to watch them. Well, that's what I mean. Is like, how is it fair that they not only did get trials, but they come in at the tail end of someone else's trial and get killed by that trial's ending? You know what I mean? It's like, what the fuck? Yeah, it doesn't. While trying to get justice yeah, for Agatha's murders of their parents. Is there, it, it, they didn't mm -hmm. think about it. Fuck, Fucking stupid. <laughs> it's all <laughs> stupid. So, um, yeah, down in the basement, Gay Kid makes a magic ritual circle with candles and chalk over the door of the Witch's Road, and he uses his magic book to cast a spell and the brooch as an item to banish her spirit. Which is like... Yeah, I mean, like, good, because sure, yeah. she's evil. Yeah, she's, she's like an evil, evil ghost now. That That's probably something you should do. And I was like, oh, no, don't do that. It's kind uh, of funny. It's just like, 
I'm just gonna do a, a spell on you that Pima kills you because you're like a spooky ghost. And she's like, wow, that's mean. It's like, you're kind of a horrible monster. Yeah. And then that's, the, it's you like, oh, okay. The, you yeah. deserve worse than this, to be, to be quite fair. Mm -hmm. You deserve way worse than this. Um, but yeah, he tries to banish her and she's like, oh no, please stop. Don't do that. Ah. And she, uh, she says, that uh that you shouldn't do this uh she like tries to touch him but she can't she's a ghost but then as she's panicking and begging him not to do that um she hits the brooch out of his hand and then she can go and pick it up and then she can like put it on her little ghost collar and 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 then she says that um uh she couldn't she can't face nicholas and that's why she's afraid to die she can't face nicholas that's such um, a stupid what, is, line. what does that mean he was killing people with her. What is she? What is she talking yeah. about? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you think Nicholas wouldn't mind? He's Nicholas clearly is, okay with this. If he has grown he never up minded. in heaven or whatever the hell this show would purport they ended up, I guess he'd be in purgatory or whatever. I don't even know. I don't what know what the fuck would happen. Heaven randomly. Um, <laughs> Nicholas, the the seventeen fifty six year old white kid goes to Wakanda <laughs> heaven. Well, I was going to say, if he ages... He's like, oh my god, it's slave heaven. He may very this. well not oh age, god. but I was going to say that if she finally gets up there, he probably would be like, what the hell? And she'd be like, what? You you were having me kill people, and you you made it seem like it was okay, and that was the whole thing, and, and you kept killing people. Like, uh, and then she's like, yeah, well, I mean, you... You you admitted that you knew it was killing people, and you know what I mean. Like I just I, I don't even know what the fuck they would write. The idea that she's like I can't face him. It's like I don't know what you faced him plenty well when you were killing people with him. I don't even know like what I'm supposed to do <laughs> well, with this. It's a good thing that you're pondering what this potential conversation between dead Nicholas and dead Agatha would be, because gay kid says that whatever she did in the past, surely Nicholas would forgive her. I I mean. Um, I don't even know. She says that. Well, she says that when gay kid says things like that, that he reminds her of Nicholas. Okay. I don't know how. Um, Fuck both these of people. How did people? How did people get meaning from this? I like, where, where did they get it from? They're lying. You know, lesbian smoochies. They took so. it from the meeting store. They didn't get it from here. Uh, because it sounds vaguely adjacent to something that would, in fact, have meaning. That's so, um, boy, are we close. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, the two killers, oh, sorry, Gay Kid and Agatha, the two murderers, they decide to team up. She will be his spirit guide, and he will use his, he uses his magic to put the three names of the dead women on the floor that they killed. Sharon Davis, Alice Wu Gulliver, and Lilia Calderu. Incredible they remembered, Aaron. Uh... Yeah, it is. I'm surprised they had the... The, the, the respect to not call her Mrs. Hart. Mr. Shaw. They're going to make any effort to contact their family members to let them know what no. happened? Absolutely no. not. Mm. Because I wonder if we're ever going to one... see uh, the, the, uh, the, the real parents again, either, if they'll ever show up ever again, mm. if, if, uh, if Billy ever shows up in a any A couple other times for projects. comedic relief for a few minutes. Oh, I, don't, I, I, do I think that. that's actually optimistic. I think, I think we will never see them again. And then so they will be left for the rest of their lives to wonder what happened to their son. Like, because great, they don't know again. the truth. Also, I think Fringy mentioned this earlier, but they don't want to acknowledge the difficulty that would arise from uh, Wanda being uh, Billy's mother, like, kind of, I guess, maybe, and also this kid being uh, theirs. You know what I mean? No, no way. They don't even want... Because it's, I mean, you know, Billy lived with them for, you know, several years. Yeah, they Meanwhile, were as mentioned that. previously, he only knew Wanda for what, like five days or something? But no, it'll just be moved past completely. The, because this is kind of the nature of how these shows work, is that the repercussions, like the natural repercussions that would flow from what happened in the story are forgotten as soon as the credits roll. It's like, oh, we're done. We're moving on. Next no, thing. Before now. that, even. The, mm -hmm. you, yeah, I mean, the before that, the only continuity is the character exists. The storyline is basically irrelevant. Or only insofar as it's useful for them, for what they want to continue with. Like, I, I could imagine that there might even be a scene where Wanda meets Agatha, and it'll be chill. Like, it'll be fine. It won't even be something that is a confrontation, which it naturally should be. Like, she might even say, oh, I, I got over the whole, like, mental mind, you know, the mind prison for three years. She might even just say that. Oh, water under the bridge or something, and then they'll just move on. These, th 
these Marvel projects are so badly written. It's it's kind of unbelievable how consistently it's been the case. Yeah, you think you'd fuck up and write something good every once in a while? Yeah, just, maybe. You would think that. Just like mistakenly, you would just randomly put like some coherent <laughs> thoughts together that could be like it, it, thematically it tied together. They have fully <laughs> saturated the bottom of the barrel at this point. Yeah. And that's why Star Wars Outlaws is a 7 out of 10. They have redefined what the bottom of the barrel looks like multiple times over. Loki, Multiverse of Madness, She-Hulk, these shows like redefined what it means to be like a 1 out of 10 for a, for a story. Drilling for fucking oil. Uh, well, yeah, let's, let's wrap up here. Um, uh, so Agatha says, one door closes, and Gay Kid says, and another one opens. And the two, as a dynamic duo, a pair, go off as a team to find Tommy. Yeah, and the implication is Agatha all along season one. The implication is going to be he's going to go on his adventure and she's like his Mimir. She will be just be helping out and commenting where she can. Which is just like, holy fuck, guys. Has, has um, he forgotten that, that Agatha killed his family's dog? Has... Has she, uh, has, I mean, along with all of the other misdeeds she has perpetrated, she's killed well, he's you know, forgotten a lot his own murders. Yeah, yeah, and he's killed They're people too. They're both murderers. They're That's both true. killers. They're both yeah, of them true. performed mm -hmm. actions that they knew would lead lead to the deaths of innocent people. Um. Yeah, Agatha all along. Really? That's what it's happened so in the bad. show that none of you watched. It's so bad. I'll never think about it again. Thankfully. I don't either. It just it'll pop up in my mind every once in a while. It's just like, oh, a bad thing to compare something to. Oh, it probably won't for me. I'll flush it. This one's getting flushed out of my brain. Um, I don't by the way, I feel I feel like the only meaningful thing to do is segue into I don't know that there should be any reason why anybody should be particularly excited for the next few years of Marvel. I don't know that there's any reason to believe that, like, after three years, what, a, like, a dozen TV shows, about a dozen films, it actually has been that many, hasn't it? It's, it's been, like, a ridiculous number of projects, that there is any reason to think that things will improve dramatically. To be as clear as possible, if the Marvel people were like, hey, EFAP, what do you guys want? A show about a guy who builds a suit in a cave with a box of scraps into a weapon that's gonna do this, that, and the other thing. Lesbian witches, or, um, I don't know, a woman who, from grief creates a spell that causes the blah blah blah. Basically WandaVision. We would opt for the Iron Man choice, more than likely. But, uh, the, the reality would be, of course, that we, we've usually said this, we'd be like, even the lesbian witches one is like, yeah, sure, I mean, it could be good if it's written by the right people doing the right thing. That's like a broad assessment of it, blah blah blah. Now, flipping it around, if they say... You've had your fill of fucking lesbian witch shows and nonsense crap for the past few years. We're going to start bringing you cool shit like the Fantastic Four, Daredevil, and fuck me. Oh, you, 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 you we won't believe this. We've got Iron Man's coming back, but he's going to be Doctor Doom. It's like, why would any of that matter? You don't, you guys don't know how to write. <laughs> like, what? Yeah, if anything, it's just going to be really annoying. Like, if Daredevil comes... I'm not optimistic about Daredevil. Um, I get the impression that's going to be not fun. I sure hope, I'm wrong, I sure hope that the show ends up being good, but the precedent of Marvel television shows and films for the last three years has means that the only reasonable conclusion to draw is it's probably going to be badly written, unfortunately. Same goes for any of these films that they got coming out. Yeah, the idea out. that like we're correcting course by starting to make it about things that you care about. One, I mean, they're fucking bleeding money. Of course they would make these decisions eventually. But two... That was never necessarily the issue. Like, I, I, we need you to be able to write again, whether or not you you're making it about Agatha means... or Iron Man. You have to understand what it means to tell a story. Fundamentally, you need to understand what it means to tell a story. That the characters need to be consistent with how they're established and go on journeys that are meaningful, thematically relevant. You need to have plots that are broadly coherent. Like, these are important things that need to be prioritized, and I don't know that there are... I, I feel like you have to conclude that they aren't a priority, because if they were, some of these projects would be good. It's not like if you go into things with the best writing intentions that you're always going to create something amazing. It, you know, it's like even the greatest filmmakers well, occasionally, think... you know, make errors, but you can't get this consistent a result if you're trying, <laughs> you know? Like, you just... If, uh... Uh... 
I, f I feel was very well illustrated by the, all of this is would be um, Star Wars. We've been doing all mm -hmm. kinds of shows that the fans would theoretically just love, but they've been hating. And then the one show that fans are probably not going to be very interested in, bit off of a spit off, essentially, was the only one that was well written. Like yeah. it's it's it's, it's uh, you kind of need both at this point if your if your IP is in the fucking grave, which both of them are. You could have floated yes, all you that need. you wanted post TFA and post phase. Well, the end of phase three, right? Phase four and five. It, phase four primarily. You could have gotten eyes on any project you put out, but those eyes are tired and mm -hmm. septic. <laughs> like there's a lot of problems, uh, to say the least. And so, yeah, Ross, um, people to commit. Agatha all along is just another one, but at least we have gone through it such pile. that now yeah. we will know why certain things happen if they happen in future. Who uh, knows if it leads anywhere, though. And hopefully we entertained you all somewhat. I don't know, <laughs> yeah. The survival of the show might depend on the fact that it has a relatively low budget compared to a lot of other stuff. I think it was just under $40 million for them to make the show, which is like, wow, but $40 million made this? Holy shit. Um, but even but... even if it's successful, I don't see that it like making more of this doesn't mean that your Captain America film is going to make money. You know, I don't even know how much overlap there yeah, actually yeah. exists in the no, audience think... for this show that will show up for Thunderbolts or will show up for Fantastic Four. I'd say Captain Falcon is in trouble. I don't know what the fuck that's going to do. With box how big that budget seems to be, and. Uh... I, well, it's just yeah, it's it's an actual risk, but in the worst way, if you know what I mean. Like, uh, mm -hmm. with with how bad everything is, and then how how unappealing the story seems to be, and then how it's been reshot a whole bunch of times. It's probably gonna be a gobbled, edited to fuck movie, and then everyone's kind of annoyed and confused at the MCU. It's just yeah, this was not, which is why like uh, Doctor Doom is more of a sure thing in an Avengers film played by Robert Downey Jr. There's a lot of ways they can market that, and Avengers as an IP hasn't yet seen the light of day beyond endgame <laughs> so we don't know how that's going to play that's out exactly true. but yeah uh, i don't know man it's just uh it's what we do at this point we track the mcu's uh chapters here and there to see how they they're doing and then they're still doing awful this though you may have seen guys through uh different sites here and there that, that agatha long has been considered one of the greatest things marvel's put out in a long time and i have no idea what the fuck they're talking about it's awful it's like we're we're speaking. It's it's like uh, contacting a different civilization, and you just don't have any like an alien <laughs> civilization. Like, how do you get through to someone that? I no one can tell you anything about this show. No one can tell you anything about this show, and like connect the dots. And everything that they think is good is built off of lies and uh, just nonsense and incoherence. Um, it is a fucking tragedy to art and to human expression that people think that this is a good show and sing its praises, it is an actual tragedy. I, um, I, I mean, my consolation is I think it's meaningless because I don't think it's going to translate in any uh, way, right? People say it's great, but like, th I don't think the show is going to have a legacy. Who's going to be talking about the no, show in a no. year? Probably nobody. So like, A couple weeks a sense, and it'll just float away. In a sense, that's the consolation is like, what's well, hollow? It's the same kind of stuff that people... I mean, people were trying to brute force that the Acolyte was, like, liked and good. That was something that was definitely trying to sort of get, you know, wedged in as, as the perspective. And it's just like, well, yeah, but at the end of the day, if it's good, it's going to endure. People are going to go back to certain scenes and want to talk about it or that character and what that character meant to them or how the story was meaningful thematically. And I just don't see that this show has any longevity in that regard. Now that it's done, I imagine it's just going to disappear very quickly. Who knows, though? You know? Star Wars seems to just have living evidence of this with Andor, again. Mm -hmm. Andor yeah, I was about to bring in that terms up. of yeah. word of mouth and in terms of people's like long-term memories of uh, Star Wars projects, I guess. The only other thing from the TV shows that could even consider boasting something like that is Mando Season 1, which people still have a high opinion of for some reason. It, I think that the opinion's gone down compared to uh, post season one, even just just like weeks mm -hmm. and months and now years, like I think it's gone down. Andor's has only gone up. It's just kept I think going it's up. the vibe of a promise that was unfulfilled. Well, yeah, it's it's uh, arguably quite tainted by future seasons, but it's also just like who's going back? How many mm -hmm. people are honestly going back? I don't know. Uh, I'm not going to say nobody is, of course. And the season one, for the record, is the best of the Mando seasons. Just the it is. It's still bad, but it is the least bad. bad. Yeah. Um, it can enjoy its prize. <laughs>
Um, yeah, you know what? With that, that's the end of the EFAP Agatha coverage. All right. Done and done. Uh, before we wrap up and talk about it for a little bit, what's to come? Uh, Theo, what have you been up to? What are you releasing? What's, what's happening? Um, too early to talk about anything, I guess, in that capacity. I'm just I'm working away writing at a few different things. We'll we'll see where it ends up going. All right. Well, what have you got most recently that people in chat might be interested in, especially Agatha fans? Um, well, Agatha fans might be fond of me doing a short little case study about variants in video games and player responses to that, featuring um, a clip from a Joseph Anderson review of a video game. Ah, that sounds the, like something that has a lot of crossover, I think. The probability hex, yes. Yeah, 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 because of the RNG hex. Nice. Good connection, <laughs> I see. All right, good stuff, yeah. And, and thanks for the layup on that one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, check that out if you want. I, I thought it was pretty cool, and so did the guy himself, apparently, which was pretty neat. Wow. Neat. Um, Nutso, what about you? Have you got you got stuff out and stuff to come? Oh, my God, maybe? Um, I'm, I have uh, gotten out Joker 2 video I don't know how long ago. I have no perception of time. So people can check that out. Like Lillian. Yee! And... <laughs> <laughs> I'm just... <laughs> don't fall on swords. Yeah, yeah avoid that. I was just... I'm just right back from, like, um, my five-year-old self's memories. Um, it's, it's, it's been a, quite a ride, this stream. Um... Yeah, well, I'm working on a few projects, some um, Star Wars related, which people are excited for sometimes. So, yeah, I look forward to that, I guess. And um, yeah, that's all I, all I have to say. <laughs> Beautiful. Links to both channels in description. And thank you both for helping us through the latter half, not so for the full thing. And um, for us, of course, for our strength of character to be able to talk about something so a hollow yet frustrating. Uh, All right. Combination. Yeah. And I pulled it off. <laughs> we did it. It's yeah. done. Um, yeah. Uh, mm. Ferengi Rags, anything in particular you guys would like to say? I suppose not too much. Um, I don't have anything uh, hard scheduled. Uh, Going to be doing a Lord of Ring Golem stream probably sometime this month. And um, hopefully a new video out. Not too long. I've already I've decided what the next video um, subject will be. I think it'll be a fun one. Um, it'll be a, a good variety, I think. Um, so I'm not sure when that'll be out. But yeah, now that October is over, um, I'm, I'm not sure what the pace will be. But hopefully it'll be out soon. But uh, yeah, so some streams and some videos and, of course, our EFAP stuff and Good things, lovely, joyful things, wonderful stuff. I'm just working. <laughs> <laughs> That's all at the moment, just working away. Um, well, all right. Uh, so for us, uh, next week, I think the plan is to pop out a, a, a War Arc movies. Uh, it would be the penultimate one, Ironclad. Um, the following month, you'll get your final, which is Gladiator. And uh, <gasps> much like the recent Halloween arc finishing up, we'll be doing a ranking of all of the, the war movies. Remember that, Rags? Remember we did that? It, it took a while, and it was... I do remember. I do remember it. Absolutely. And I everyone stayed for the whole the thing, 100%. Yes, yes. everyone did. After Definitely. Hmm, the... yes. In... I uh, I recently have like just just finalized it with uh, with Gogur and I uh, it's a very good ending to the arc I think the Gladiator one so hopefully you folks enjoy it for those who don't know as was just implied slash mentioned uh, a Nightmare on Elm Street's complete arc is now available it's all out every film we go through the whole lot and then rank them at the end so um you know if you didn't know that was there you can go grab them if you did know you can go and watch them as many times as you want uh. And yeah, so, like I said, next week, no main EFAP, but you know what is happening on the very day that we would uh, not be there is the release of Arcane Season 2, Episodes 1, 2, and 3. How exciting. And so uh, we'll be watching mm. that, more than likely, and then we'll be talking about it the following week as the next set premiere, and then we'll be talking about those the following week, and then the, the next one's the following week. So you got... A break, 
And then three fabs in a row talking about what is hopefully going to be a fucking excellent season of TV, but you know what? We've got fingers, to be just, crossed. fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. Yes. Yes. There's no I way it could be anything but excellent, surely. Yeah, no way. Yes. Absolutely. <laughs> We're not worried at all. Um, also, I'm probably, <laughs> by popular demand, going to be doing part two of Dragon Age the Veil God tomorrow. All right? Today. Oh, you're going to leave. Wow. Wow. Part two. That's that's uh, as it Part stands, three, the right. absolute most I'm willing. We'll see how it goes. The, I already said right. to chat they're the ones that keep me alive on that one. The children so. yearn for the golem. Like I know, but there is no golem for me. For and golem. I was about to mention. Uh, I don't know what Wolf's plan is, but do you have any plans for? Any, is it within the month or do you know? Uh, yeah, it'll be this month, but I'm also going to be taking advantage of, <laughs> you know, if there's break. Some time off. Oh, yeah, to be absolutely clear, uh, the reason why it's, like, slightly different than usual is I'm not going to be on the next Real BBC or Open Bar or technically EFAP because there won't be one. Uh, I'm, I'm trying not to stream. The irony, of course, is that fucking Veilguard is apparently going to drag me into at least a gaming stream or two, so. Hey. Fun, fun, fun. Um... <laughs> Uh, yeah, I think that's, that's all the updates that could possibly be needed. Um, there's still more releases on the way. Uh, this end of the year, we've got Gladiator 2 is is coming. We've got Squid Game Season 2 is coming. What else yeah. is there? A couple of other things, right? Um, I think so. <laughs> In any case, <laughs> jump out, a funny. lot of EFAB episodes are likely going to be covering and breaking down media. So fun, fun, fun is on the way. But uh, that was a that was a heavy Halloween spooktober. Yes, it was. Yes, it so was. We're looking to yes, have some was. some time to chill out a little bit. Like I said, we've been nonstop mm -hmm. since the anniversary, which we are already more than a fifth of the way toward the next one. <laughs> yes, we 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 have our multiple breaks already essentially stacked up. Yeah, we are <laughs> well ahead. Um, so no complaining, damn it. Yeah, you have been. You have received a lot of content we will, over the last couple of months. Uh, do we'll, we'll be trying to use the time to to do a lot of the recordings for the catch ups to catch up, and um, of course, mm -hmm. as a final thing before we leave, thank you so very much for funding and yes. supporting us with the plus. Thank, thank you, thank you, appreciate very it. very grateful, and we hope you enjoy them when, when they arrive. Time. When they arrive, yeah. yeah, you put them next to all your other friends. Yeah. yeah, put them next to your other EFAP ones if you've got them. Whee! And on that note, we're going to head out. So, thank you all so much mm -hmm. for joining us. We appreciate it. And, yeah! Uh, have yourselves a bye, good Bye, everybody. Bye, everybody. Bye, everyone. Bye. See, you See you later. Bye. 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 Bye.